Hello, guys. What's up? What's up? <laughs> we predict one hour again to customize new evoker or just randomize today. <laughs> hey, I had to check out the uh, customization options, right? It's good feedback to give too. All right, we're we are good alpha tester. We we are testing everything that needs to be tested. Well, except the boring stuff. <laughs> I did not unpack the new computer. I have a lot of things to do. Okay. Man, I wanted to do a whole guide today, a whole YouTube guide, and I only managed to write half of the text. But it is what it is. I'm sure I'll get it done eventually. Maybe. <laughs>
I mean, I'm gonna have to make a druid eventually anyway, so I might as well. Let's see. Man, I wish I could be a panda druid. But you can be a Kulturin. Oh, that's a dwarf, right? Ah, shit, I thought it's the... What's a Kulturin again? Is it supposed to be a human? You can be a Kulturin druid? But is that normal? Is that, like, that a life service already? I guess it is. Or is it? Okay, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just confused. Okay, I'm gonna play a uh, Night Elf. Cool. Should we randomize? Okay, she's pretty enough. We have to change the hair, though. The hair is too important. Oh, they have new hair? I think this is new. It's cute. Wait, where's... Oh, this one. Yeah. This is the only real Night Elf hair. It's the only, it's the only possible... Does she have a scar on her nose? Oh, no! Why? What happened? No. She's not gonna have scars. What? Poor, poor druid. Don't want her to be hurt. <laughs> Alright. Oh my god. Nagura is not taken? Damn! Amazing. You always skip the first option in the character creator? First option? What is the first option? Alright, let's see him. Yeah. Aw, oh, Hironic! Thank you so much for 10 sub gifts. Thank you so, so much. That is far too Hello, kind. Welcome, Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Ethan, no, Patrick, Bahoom. Cavigan, JQ, get a sub too. Welcome to Diorage, Entrex, Kilario, Nath, and Nekin. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you're doing well, Heronic. I hope you missed me. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I'm good, Welcome Purple to the gang. One of us. Any of us. idea about the next season meta? No, we don't know. We don't know anything about the meta. Because we don't know what they're yeah, going to change, class balance-wise. I think Warlock's still going to be good, yes. One right, of us! One of us! What are all these items I got? Oh, it's just random stats. It's literally the same stats. <laughs> the hell? Okay. Okay, um... Okay, let me just quickly set up my bars and stuff. You cannot copy add-ons, right? Surely that's not possible. So let's just quickly... Um, how did I do this the last time? I forgot. Oh, okay, wait. Action bar settings. Mm 
Action bars. Action bar two, action bar three. Oh, they're all at the bottom. Hmm. Sure, I guess. Combat trader, do not flash on, lots of control, sure, out of self class, sure. Um, tutorials, no. Cool. Which bar changes? The first bar. Okay. Okay, right, let's just move all of my buttons inside and then we'll see them. Oh, why is it so tiny? Oh? Huh? What the hell? Is this supposed to be how it is? Wait, can you actually copy your settings and stuff? I mean, do, you, do the add-ons work at all? I thought the add-ons would just not work. Oh, some work and some doesn't? Ah, fuck it. We're just gonna play without add-ons for now. Who needs add-ons? Need to make sure I bind everything for now. Mm -hmm. Who wants this wrap? And fire probably need that spell. This spell. Cat form. Bear form. And then sprint. Okay, cool. Then star search. Oh, you only have star search baseline. Okay. Then we need to do talents. I'm just gonna do some random stuff. I don't really care that much right now, I guess. So we need this. Go with this, I guess. <laughs> Frenzied Regen. Sunfire. Proof Sunfire. Well Charge. Just into the bar. Then Cyclone we don't need. Habernate we don't need. Go with this. Go with Typhoon. Sooth. Uh, what are the affixes? <laughs> Oh wait, there's no M plus, right? I don't think we need Steve. But we need some peating roar. Oh, this is just such a bad position. Like this this is so bad. Like some peating roar is so good, but Sooth is so specific. Like it's such a niche utility. But you have to take it to get to some peating roar? Like that's uh, That's pretty bad. Then <clears throat> Let's go with improved. Yeah, let's go with this. Let's go with vortex as well. Innovative, we don't need. Whatever, let's go with wild growth, I guess. Renewal. Oh, we should probably go with heart of the wild. Eh. Let's go with improved. Yeah, let's go with this. Okay. I need more bars. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, wait. You can have more buttons, right? Oh, no, you cannot. Twelve is max. So we need more bars. And then we also want this to be a... Well, actually... I, ooh. I'll do that later. Wait a... <laughs> okay, wait a second. Mm -hmm. 
Cool, then we go with this shit. We're gonna do dungeons, right? So I'm gonna go with, like, AoE stuff. <laughs> I wish Munkin had AoE stuff. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Let's go with this. Nature's balance. Force of nature, I guess. Let's move this into the bar. Starfall. Move into the bar. Seal alignment. SL version. No initial damage. Okay. Surly Beam. Power of Golden we don't need, but I'm gonna go with this. Need to sell the forest. Hmm. An Incarn? Circle of life and death. Oh, I just never know what to spec. I, like, all of this just kind of shit, right? I don't even know. All of this is bad. Me. Should we just go circle and twin moons, right? So I have to skip. Oh, wait, they made it too? Wait, did they change this already? Thank you so much for Raid Queen, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody. I think they adjusted this already, right? It was three and that's two. Sick. All right, well, that's something at least. I still think the position is bad, but whatever. Improvements. <laughs> hey, Vintage Lock, thank you so much for 30 months. What's up, what's up? <laughs> Okay, cool. So now we still need one point. Guess we just go with shooting stars. Twin moons. Still of the forest. I really want to try this. I mean, Pulsar will be nice. Syzygy, I kind of want to test Syzygy. Man, I just wish this middle part wouldn't be the way it is. It's just so weird. Like, why is Syzygy over there? Mm. Well, that's just very unfortunate positioning. I kind of want to get this, but I can't. I have to go down here. How many points do I need? I need two, three, four, five, six points. I don't know how to get six points. I can get rid of this. And I'm missing that. Ah, shit. <laughs> Can I get rid of one more thing? Can't get rid of Silver Forest. Hmm. So, how does this even work? Wait. Does this ability not work? G. does it not work? I think this might not work. Oh, it's not implemented. Okay, okay. That makes sense, I guess. I was confused. Okay, so... I could still go with Pulsar, though. I really want to test Blessing of a Loon. But maybe it's not that important if I have Pulsar. I 
I don't know. Let's just keep it like this for now. Thank you so much, eight months. Kiss you. Okay, we need to bind my spells. Quick keybind mode. Control E for R. E Q shift. Uh, wait, where did I bind all of this? Shift. Dude, I have way too many bindings now. Shift T, Shift 4, 1, Shift Q, G. Huh. <laughs> I need a binding for renewal. And I need a binding for. Oh, this could just be Shift G. Renewal. What do you bind that? I'm just gonna buy it on two for now, but that would usually be my health pot. I forgot to buy moon conform. Yeah, let's see. Moon conform. Why does this not work? Did I not learn it? No, I did. Oh no, I didn't! Oh, never mind. It looked like I did, but I didn't. Okay, never mind. I'm stupid. Okay, we're fine. Okay, good. Okay, good. I guess there's a little bit of a bug here. Because you see how it looks like I have Heart of the Wild, and it looks like I have Wild Growth? But I don't. Oh, it's because I can skill it. Ah, okay, so it's grayed out if I don't have a path towards the talent. But if I have a path towards the talent, it's not grayed out. But there's no yellow thing around it. Ah, okay, I get it. So the talents you have are yellow bordered, and the talents that you could take with the next point or whatever is um, colored but not bordered. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Hey, Queen Lana, what's up? Oh, I don't have Sunfire bound. <laughs> okay, where's my Sunfire? And Dispel as well. So I need Dispel. Soothe, I guess. Sunfire. Rejuve. Swiftment. Alright. I guess the spell... Soup is cute. No, this... This is tea. This I don't have a binding for. This is like mouse bindings. I can't bind mouse bindings, right?
Or did I have a blacklist now? They didn't add a blacklist at them. Oh, they don't. Hmm. I wish they would do that. Well, anyway, we can still use some bindings. We do this. Oh, wait, so we have to mouse over it first. So this is that. Click on a spell. Oh, I have to shift left again. <clears throat> And then I right click, which is swiftment, but I, like that won't work. And then this is. Dude, I forgot all my bindings. This, that. And then control thing is wild growth. Oh, I don't have wild growth. I can just make this one that uh, control left control right yeah whatever thanks for one year Ahmed. what's up thank you thank you okay cool okay, let's try hitting this again What's all of this? Oh, Star Lord. Why does it say Starfall? What's this about? Why does it show? Why does it show me Starfall in Frenzied Region? Eh. I'm confused. Why does it show me those icons? Hmm. Well, anyway. Let's check out the new zone. Okay, so first of all, where is Dragon Flight Zone? Shadowlands, oh, that's rough. Uh, where is it? Maelstrom. <laughs> Northeast of Northrend. But... It's not on the map. Oh, I see it. Okay, that explains a lot, I guess. <laughs> It's the leveling center for Drakfear, so you can't actually go there as a druid? So, again, where is it? Mm. Empathy and Stormwind. I've been expecting you. <laughs> all right, all right. What would you ask of death? Oh my god, they look so different. Oh no. Oh, it has a quality now. Oh no, that's complicated. Huh? Light and agitate in the sad, intense emotion. I'm sorry, what? What the hell is that? Testing. I 
I am very confused. <laughs> what just happened? The light is in. <laughs> okay, I guess. Light to celebrate the incense shirt to everyone's moods. What the hell are these potions? Place down a pleasant in the soothes the mind of everyone. Increase inspiration? Beware what the hell is inspiration? I am forsaken. Toxic. Damage taken is in this decreased by 6% while over 50% health, but increased by 6% while under 50% health. Hmm. Interesting. After taking an action besides healing for 5 seconds, your next heal is increased by 10,000. Hmm. Interesting. Your intellect is increased by 175, attacking you. What's that good for? Huh. Cauldron? Oh my god. <coughs> I'm sorry. That looks, um... I honestly hate fancy potions. I wish potions would just give me intellect. <laughs> or a stat or something. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of profession stuff here, I guess. Okay, but where do you get to the new zone? I don't understand. Yeah, but so someone said I could go to the zone as a non drag fear, so was that a lie? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not asking to look at the zone from last week. I'm looking for, for the zone that this that got implemented today. So... <clears throat> so you can only see it as drag, drag there or what? All right, guess we're taking a look then. I haven't set up any of my keybinds for this class. I also didn't spec anything. But we only wanna take a look around anyway, right? We're just gonna skill some random stuff without looking. Sure, it's gonna be great. What the hell? Do you skill everything with this class? Jesus. Okay. We need this.
Okay, I don't know. Where's my thing again? Huh? Where's my... Uh... It's not my bars. Oh, it's here. Wait, can you also- is there also NPCs in, uh, or- in, uh, Orgrimmar? Oh yeah, he's right here. Sorry, I just need to fly around for a little bit. Gimme go! Woo! <laughs> Look at me go! I'm flying. <laughs> Wheel. <laughs> All right. How's that flying? <laughs> My, this guy doesn't teleport me either. I've been working on some new. Okay, how the fuck do you get this new zone? Okay, you have to create a new one. There we go. But if I create this one, it's still gonna be 60, right? So I have to do a new one, right? <laughs> Wait, I should leave my draft fear? Oh, it was so pretty though. Look how cute he was. She was, sorry. Fine. Fine. Oh shit, that one was a bit cute. Okay, this is nowhere near as cute as the other one was. Okay, fine, I'll go with this one. <clears throat> okay. Awaken Drek there. I have to awake the other Drek there, okay. So I just woke up in his room. Oh shit, there's like spider wraps and stuff. Okay, I see him. Oh. Wait, I'm like hurling a beam at them to awake them? It's a bit toxic. Oh, it, sh it shows you how gliding works? Okay. So now we have to... Shoot a frozen beam at all the director, I guess. Wait, did I? Am I supposed to walk here? No, I need to find this guy. 
Oops. Good morning. Sorry, I missed a guy. Oh no! Aww. We lost one. Sad. He was a friend, they said. Feels bad. How long were we held in stasis? Well, good question. I don't know. Oh, this dragon looks fancy. Okay, wait. We need more action bars. Action bars. Interface. Come. Disintegrate. Where would we put that? Three. Yeah, three is good. Then this is Wing Buffet. We put that on... Uh, Shift 5. That's Typhoon. And Tail Swipe is just... Shift G, whatever. Living Flame is E. Master Strike is R. And then Glides... Wait, what is Glide again? Oh, why is this an ability? If you can just press it with shape with the space bar. Hmm. Anyway, what do I have to do? Oh, there's a box! Ooh! Hey! Oh, it wasn't actually a box. I thought there were sinks inside. I just have to clean up the place, apparently. Uh, what am I? You're a cleaning lady? Do you have to kill them? Guardians of... Oh, we do have to kill them. Ah, oh, shit. I have only two abilities. How am I supposed to... Oh, I guess this integration beam is a good ability to cast? I mean, not really. Oh. Huh? Hey, that stone fell on my head. This guy's a caster, and I don't have an interrupt. I could knock him, I guess. Just leaving him to heal yourself. Oh, I even get tips like that. That's amazing. But you don't tell me what to do. I heal myself whenever I want to heal myself, okay? Shut up. <laughs> this guy, tell me what to do. Ooh, it actually is Typhoon. Okay, nice. Okay, fine. We're healing ourselves. Fine. Oh, it heals very little. Oh, shit. I just triggered this guy. I'm dead. <laughs> okay. The question is, can you fly when you're dead? You can, you can glide when you're dead. 
I guess she cannot fly. Where's... Oh, I don't have the ability yet, right? The... What is it called? The... She, I keep forgetting the name. What is it called? The, the flying thing. Soar. I don't have it yet, so I can't test it. What is this? Car? I guess. Oh, I don't have uh, auto loot enabled. Yeah, so it looks like this class has like one ability. It's definitely very, very weird. <laughs> So you only have like one ability to cast. I don't even know if Living Flame is worth it to press even over Azure Strike. Because this this thing is just instant and does damage. We'll figure it out though. Let's see. So Azure Strike does 400 damage. Okay, so it is worth it to cast this, I guess. Well, unless there's two targets, then it's not worth it. Because it does it has a cleave. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of well. So the thing with this living flame spell is that it's like an offensive spell or a heal, depending what you target. And I wonder if you can use this properly uh, I guess you can just make a macro that and then you bind it twice because I personally don't like it that much that I have to target a friendly player because usually when I heal myself I don't actually target myself I just press the heal while having an enemy target but I guess you can just make a macro then you just make two bindings one binding is for like the Offensive spell and the other binding is for the healing spell and then you just make a macro out of it. I guess like that should work I mean, the class definitely seems rested in Sleeper so far, just because you... Like, you start with level 58, which for other classes is already, like, a high level, and you have a lot of abilities already with other classes, but obviously this class is basically level 1 at this point. So you have very few abilities, which is weird. A different dragon? Oh no. Oh, it's Maligos. Oh no. I thought Maligos is friendly. Is he not? Have to heal these guys. I do. This is like indicated pretty nicely that you have to heal them. I like it. Depends on the day. <laughs> Honestly, 
honestly, uh, I'm just so weak. Aren't I? I mean, I feel like I'm a bit too weak for the mobs here. Like, this is a starting zone, right? Like, I mean, maybe it's fine, but it feels a bit awkward that I have to cast like a million spells to kill one person. But maybe it's fine. Maybe people are supposed to learn this stuff from the get-go, you know? Maybe that's fine. I mean, the item level doesn't matter because this is the item level that you're gonna have when you create a character, right? Like, you're not gonna m magically have more item level. This is... Like, you literally... Like, this is how you create your character. Right? At least I assume so. I don't think there's another way. But yeah, look how how much I'm dropping. But I'm just I'm just fighting a single mob, and this mob's like basically almost killing me. I I think the heal is also just a bit weak. I mean, maybe it just has to do with yeah. Maybe they should give them more item level at the start or something. Yeah, maybe it's fine to be a little bit weaker, honestly, just to make sure that people are not playing this uh, class if they're new. Because if, if a, a completely new player starts playing this and they just die to a single mob, maybe they're they're gonna think twice. <laughs> maybe that's why they're doing it, who knows. I mean, like the thing is, like I understand that sometimes you're not like one-shotting things. It, it's not necessarily about the fact that the mobs, like it's not necessarily about me being weak. I think it has more to do with me being weak plus me not having any spells. Like it's just incredibly boring to me if I press one single button and the mobs aren't dying and I am dying, you know. But, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense that you can't give a new class a million abilities, right? At the start. Hey, why am I... What the hell? <laughs> Thanks for six months, Master Nix. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. But, I mean, you're obviously just supposed to learn a class and stuff, right? Like, it's a tutorial thing. I get it, you know, I get it. Uh, cast and empowered three fire breath. Okay, so where's fire breath? Here. So where do we bind this? Uh... Fire breath. Hmm. Let me think. Maybe one. Do I have to cast it on two mobs or? How did it not hit the other guy? I was aiming it right at him. I guess it has to do with elevation?
Alright, alright. Wait, how does this work again? Oh, I have to... Ah, I see him. So this was level one now. Yeah. Oh my god, how am I supposed to kill all of these mobs? I'm sorry, I have no abilities! <sighs> Fuck me! <laughs> I'm just dead! <laughs> Wait, didn't they just reset? And then they attacked me again? <laughs> they just flew back, right? And then they turned around and they were like, Fuck you after all. <laughs> yeah, I stopped moving because I was like, Oh, they're gone. They reset. And then they were like, no. <laughs> Never mind, fuck you. So that's the fire breath. Does it also count if I just don't use it on anything? Oh yeah, it does. I don't actually have to use it on the mobs. Yeah. <laughs> that explains a thing or two. It kind of sounded, or it kind of seemed like you have to cast it on the mobs, right? For the quest to work. Because they were also like, the nameplates were showing up and stuff. But then you don't actually have to cast it against the mob, you can just uh, cast it like that. <laughs> okay. I do think though that this fire breath thing, like the the, the NPC, uh, the neutral mobs here should have less HP so you can actually kill them with your fire breath, right? Or what do you think? Like, I think it's a bit awkward that they want you to test an AoE ability, but then you pull the mobs with it and you just die to them because the breath doesn't kill them and then you have nothing else to kill them. <laughs> I think they should probably just give them less HP, right? I don't think you're supposed to one-shot it. But I don't have any other AoE ability. So I do think you're supposed to one-shot them, though. Because it, this quest was just to test the ability, right? Like, they want you to test this fire breath thing. So why shouldn't you just one-shot the mobs? Because they're just neutrals. Like, they're just there for you to test the ability. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I think they should just nerf the adds to have less HP. So it, you don't randomly pull them and then die. <laughs> yeah, as a strike leave does nothing. <laughs> I'm actually gonna write this. <laughs> Try with a weapon equip. Yeah, I don't think that'll make the difference. I mean, I'm not sure if the mobs are still here now, because I did the quest. I think the, the neutrals just uh, disappeared. Right? There's some of them. There were, there were definitely more before, right? When I was doing the quest. Yeah, because there's like one or two now. Hmm, I can't actually try this anymore, I don't think. I think the mobs are gone. But yeah, I don't think the weapon would have made me one-shot them. Like, the weapon doesn't increase my damage by... 300% or something. Uh...
Oh my god. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense, honestly. Um. Cool. Okay, what now? Ooh, now you can you do sore already. That's nice. So you learned that pretty early, okay. Um I wonder if you can move these abilities away. I guess you can't. Hmm, I think that's, what do you think about that? Like when you're soaring, your flight abilities are like the first two buttons in your action bars. And I kind of wish you could maybe move them. Because I personally don't use <laughs> the first two abilities of my action bars at all. So... Like, maybe if you would have the option to put them somewhere else? I guess it's gener generally a problem with the vehicle bar. Yeah, I guess that's just how it is. I don't know. It's a bit annoying, though. Because I personally don't use those two buttons because of Druid. Because in a, as a Druid, your bars change. And then I don't like that, so I use m most other abilities that are not the first action bar. And I know you could change it with an addon or whatever, but... Sorry. Okay, wait. I need to bind him right now, though, to make sure I can actually test this properly. Um, let's just use E and R. And then I just move these abilities there. Okay, you learn. I mean, uh, I like it. Yeah, you started level fifty eight. So I guess we fly. Oh, there was a rare or something. Does your sword have no cooldown when you're in the, the zone in general? Or is it just because I'm questing right now? And they're teaching me how this ability works. Guess we'll figure it out soon. Man, this is actually so cool. 
the the flying and stuff. It's pretty nice. I'm choking. Help. Hello friend, I'm choking. Wait, how do you I'm just gonna die. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm so Wait, sorry, I was supposed was I supposed to read the quest text or something? <laughs> was I supposed to do something special? Wait, where am I? Wait, I thought I failed this quest. Did I not fail the quest? Now I'm confused. Oh no, my sword does have a cooldown now. Yeah, so... <laughs> so it does indeed have a cooldown. It was just part of the quest that you didn't have to use it. Toxin glands collected. Sifted slain. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that quest was about. Was I supposed to... Uh, do something to, special to, like... Cleanse toxins or something? Uh, I'm gonna do dungeons after I checked out the zone. So talents are still unavailable now. Yeah. I guess we can somewhat kill them with the spell. Wait, can you actually do new dungeons as in plus versions? No, right? Like the new dungeons are only available as um, as normal dungeons, right? Yeah, that would have been weird. Because <laughs> someone is saying they're looking for someone for Olderman Tyrannical. <laughs> what the hell? I'm not gonna test the dungeons right now. I'm testing new zone. I'll do the dungeons afterwards. There's a quest somewhere. Now let me finish this one first. I need to kill some more of these mobs. Do you have a mount? Oh, I guess I only have this because... Oh no, I can't use it, okay. No mount. The 
this not just fear this animal the hell Yeah, I don't know how transmog looks in general on these dragons, because I don't think they can transmog everything, everything? I mean, I guess they can? I don't know. Interesting, though. I'm not gonna do any side quests. Only main quests. Also, this island seems to be pretty small, right? I mean, I guess it's only the starting zone. But yeah, there's like, because there's a lot of mountains and stuff, so it's only like this part. Let's see what it looks like. I didn't really look around properly yet. It definitely seems a bit... Oh, there's dragons flying around? Or something? It seems a bit like dark and like mysterious, I guess, and like foggy or whatever. But it's cool. Well, I like it. What do you think of the zone? Like the way it looks. Hello, new friend. Welcome. Ah, hello, Brian. Thank you so much for five sub gifts. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to the Nagura show. Welcome to the cutest boy, Mac. Partisan Gaming, Akbar, and Short Spells. Thank you so much. How are you doing, Brian? You already done working today? I have no shoulders. So thanks for a very important business company the other day. <laughs> No worries, Brian, no worries. I'm in a subway, I had to go to do something. All right, all right, I see. Thank you so much, Brian. Have a nice rest of your day, Brian. You're the best. Oh, and now we have the, the healing thing. I see, wait. Where do we move that? I want it to be in five, I think. Or maybe not five is like an important, actually, it's not that important. Okay, this is a long cooldown. We're just gonna single target heal these guys. Like, this is taking forever otherwise. It's also kind of interesting that you learn. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> Why do you say rip Nagany? Warlock is still just gonna be good, you know? Warlock is still gonna be good. Don't you worry about that. Nagani is going to be just fine. I mean, it's true, I'm telling you. It's true. Ooh, did I get shoulders now? Oh no, gloves. Consume to reduce toxicity by a large amount. Wait, is this an ability I needed before? Ah, you were supposed to die. You were supposed to not make it through. 
Ah, I get it now. Okay. They wanted me to choke. Hey, I pressed the thing, but nothing happened. Am I supposed to channel it? Or do I have to press the extra action button? Hmm. Can you press it as many times as you want? Oh, five second cooldown, I see. I guess there's just... Oh, okay, so it doesn't remove everything, I okay. uh -huh. Okay, I understand. What am I supposed to do with this? Ah, I see. I have to put this in there. Oh no, he died! Oh. Okay, now what? To go back out. The minimap is a bit bad here, I guess. I don't know where to leave, I don't know where I came from. Where did we come from? From this side? Sorry, I'm a bit lost. Oh, I have a tail swap. Wait. Oh, wow, the tail swap is pretty weak. <laughs> that didn't knock them very far. The frontal knock is much better. We could have her. Nice. <sighs> what did I put that ability? Uh, maybe I put that on this? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, we're flying back. I'm not sure if I make it all the way. Maybe if I move, fly down first, get some momentum. Shit, this is this is not that easy to fly up upwards. Okay, we we almost made it. 
Well, we actually, yeah, close enough, close enough. Hey, we have we have. Hey, Mariko, what's up? What's up? Ooh, Titan Forge. Amazing. Man, I wish I could soar again. What the hell? This is uh, this ability's cooldown is uh, outrageous. There should be no cooldown at all. Actually, yeah, I do think they shouldn't have a cooldown on this spell when in their starting zone, like whenever they're here. May, well. But then there maybe people maybe are confused then. It's like why does it have a cooldown now when it didn't have a cooldown before, I guess. I don't know. But it would be really nice if you could just like fly around all the time in this zone here at least. Hey Warrior, what's up? Welcome to the Nagura show. Thanks for promise that broke out. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, true. It could be a buff that extends it or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think that would make sense. Hey, Fistle Blast. Thanks for 18 months. What's up? Welcome back, welcome back. Alright. Yeah, to kill some mobs. And what is this? Deep breath. Oops. Oh yeah, this is a big thing. I am dead. I'm actually dead. Just kidding. Why would I die? I mean, come on. <laughs> Why the hell would I die? Like, come on, please. That wasn't even close. <laughs> so, you, can you cast this and disintegrate while hovering? Oh, yeah, you can! Oh, that's actually so nice. This whole area reminds me a bit of, uh, like, MOP, uh, what the? Dude, watch out where you're fire-breathing. Jesus Christ. What the hell? Okay, how much can we pull with this fire-breath thing? Oh my god, I'm so dead, I'm so dead, I'm so dead. I miss half of them. I 
I'm out of here. Nay! Uh, the, 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 the lightning bolt from downtown! <laughs> I should try the the deep breath thing. I just forgot the binding halfway through. <laughs> it's just one. It's, that's not a good binding. Actually, it's fine. <laughs> it's, you have to like. Okay, deep breath does a decent amount of damage. Have to click all of these things. Dude, these dragons. They gotta calm down. I wonder if they could maybe make a better indicator. Oh. For... For like when Hover is about to end, you know what I mean? I guess there's no indicator for like the same thing either when you have Stellar Drift. I guess you just have to check your buff. <laughs> But I got—I mean, that's fine. It's like hard to indicate otherwise. I know what they could do, really. <laughs> the teamwork. One more elemental, apparently. I'm gonna overkill them a bit. Got him. What's this dragon doing? Hmm. The new talent trees, yeah, they're nice. Obviously, it depends on the, the tree, though. Oh. A 
attack on a crystal signal. Do you have to do? Oh, I have to press the extra action button. Ah, we're all gonna cast Disintegrate on this guy now. I see him. Mm -hmm, I get it. <sighs> and the game gets more and more cartoonish. Uh, but what's the problem with that? Like, that's just the style, right? Like, it, it, this, the cartoonish kind of style is just what they chose for their game. Like, I don't see why that's a bad thing. If you don't like it, then that sucks, because you just don't like it, right? But there's a lot of people that like it. So I don't see what's, what the problem is with it. I would even say that the cartoonish style is pretty popular. I mean, if you look at stuff like League of Legends or any Riot game, like all Riot games are cartoonish, right? And it works out just fine. And WoW is, has been cartoonish and people like it, right? I don't know. If you don't like it, then obviously that sucks for you, I guess, but... <laughs> but I personally like it. Okay, yeah, let's see. Uh, mm, let's glide. Am I gonna make it? Because it's a bit upstairs. Can I maybe glide through the water? Let's try. Oh, that's the wrong direction, oops. Oh no! Woo! Okay, I made it, I made it. I was expecting it to be less and not more. Why though? I know. I, I didn't expect there to be less cartoon. I don't know why there would be. Because again, th that is literally the style they chose and people like it, right? So, mm, no reason to make it less cartoonish if people like it. Naltharian! Dude, I don't know anything about the dragon lore. Abyssian and Rathian. Thanks for 21, Orange is out. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so Raffian and Abyssin are helping out, I guess. I do not know who I do not know who Raffian is. I know the name. Apparently it's the Black Prince. <laughs> Says right here. It's the Black Prince, okay? Duh. What 
the stream binders, Master. Healing done to allies is increased by some while their health percentage is lower than your own. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, I got a bunch of spells. I get the blessing. I got the landslide. That's the frontal thing, right? The root. Shift five? No, shift G? Ah, oh, fuck. Control five? Yeah, whatever, I guess. Pyre. Q? Well, oh, that's interrupt. Shift Q. Hey, my sword isn't ready. Why is there an FPS in the middle of my screen? How do I remove that again? Any tips? Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Jack. I'm an egg. So is Raffian the the one with the long hair that stands in like the the time thing? Like the guy from the time thing? Whatever it's called, I forgot. In Tanaris? Is it Tanaris? The thing where you buy Nogginfogger. He's the son of whom? Son of Deathwing? Is that, is that true? Or did he make that up? <laughs> defend the vault. I will of course defend the vault. That was a nice flame breath. Wait, it didn't go off. Did you see that? Huh. I wonder if that had something to do with like an animation starting or something? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Well, there goes my two minute cooldown. Unfortunate, I guess. Probably should report that. I don't know if it had something to do with the quest or not. I don't know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely did not miss Rathion. But I'm glad I remember who he was. Oh, what's this again? Wait, do you have a talent now? Like, sometimes I get an empowered spell. It looks like. But I think that- isn't that part of a talent? Or is it just trying to tell me to use my essences? I'm not sure. Thanks for 19 months, Twisty. What's up? Oh, we need to find Rathion. There we go. Oh no, Rathion, what happened? We meet again, champion. Oh, you're a little bit of an idiot, Rathion, yeah? I thought you were like super strong and stuff, and then... I'll leave you alone for, for two minutes, and you are basically kill yourself, yeah? Is there I don't know about that. First, next integrate pyro charge blast cost no essence. Ah, okay, I see him. I see it. What is this? Oh, sorry. Hey, Amrish, thanks for 27 months. What's up? What's up? And these dragons are pretty weak if I have to save them constantly. Jesus. I just love so much. I just love Hover. Dude, Hover is literally the best ability ever. It just feels like Starfall or Solid Drift, rather. Except cooler. Nostormu? I do know that name. I think that's a boss we fought at some point or something. Or he helped us, or I don't know. Something like that. Oh, you're following me! Or? Speak with the storm. Well, oh, he's upstairs. Oh! 
It's the big dragon. <laughs> oh wait, isn't that Stormo the person that gave me the the staff in Firelands? Or is that, fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> Who's the Stormo again? Oh, I forgot. So you have to warn Azeroth because some dragon got released? Keepers of time. Okay, listen guys. The thing is, I will just never know the lore. So don't even tr don't even bother. He can explain to me who knows Dormu is and I will have forgotten about it tomorrow. So don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, well that was a pretty fast intro thing. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, I mean, that was fun. Ish. I wish I could have used Sora a bit more. <laughs> we meet again, Sapien. Okay, now we can play the new dungeons. So the only thing we can test right now is the two new dungeons, this zone that I just tested, and the, like the shaman talents, right? That's like the, what's new. Correct? What? Yeah, okay, cool. Anyone hungry? Can I get food buff? I guess this only helps you. Or no. I still have a lot to learn. Good question, Jack. I do not know. I mean, here's the thing, yeah? People always make fun of me not knowing the lore, but it's just like that kind of information, it's just like it enters my brain and then it leaves my brain again because I couldn't care less about it. <laughs> so it's like, what can I do? It just is what it is, you know? It is what it is. <laughs> I sometimes watch lore videos and they're somewhat interesting. But they're only interesting because they make it sound interesting. It's, it has a lot more to do with the actual content creators than the lore itself, I feel like. I'm just not a person that likes experiencing lore in, in video games. It's a meme. I also don't like Final Fantasy lore, so... Well, not that I didn't like it. Well, yeah. I just don't like lore in video games. 
books and yeah i much rather watch a movie or read a book <laughs> anyway we're back one second and then we're gonna do the new dungeons okay one sec
Damn, it's hot. Jesus. All right, so how does this work? Do you just queue up for the dungeons, yeah? Do you do it like this or dungeon finder? I guess dungeon finder. Lore isn't real? Yeah, I agree, it's not real. <laughs> Man, I honestly think that Moonkin is still just gonna be... Like, it's just still gonna feel shit in dungeons. There's just no abilities that... Oh, the group finder icon is down here now. That's cute. Like, our class just still works the same way. But we'll see, I guess. Wait, I need a damage meter. Let's see if we can download add-ons for beta. Or alpha, I guess. <laughs> I wonder if I should replace my front yard with rocks or something. <laughs> Okay, let's download details. So if I reload, it works, right? Hey, Emily, what's up? How are you? Actually, maybe it doesn't work by just reloading because it's a new add-on that I installed, right? If it's an add-on I've never had before, I need to actually restart, right? Ed hops. Yeah, the mini map seems really cool. I like it. Insecure, yeah. Oh wait, it didn't work? Oh shit. Huh? Where's the add-on button? It's gone. What the hell? Question mark? Can you not actually use add-ons? Add-ons are enabled? Well, then why does it not work? Or did you mean disabled? My vision is actually a lot better now, even on like the PC. I think it's because my eyes aren't that dry right now. The drier my eyes are, the less I see you. So addons are completely disabled, no damage meters. How am I supposed to know how good my class is then? Well, actually it's not even about the damage, it's more about how it feels. So we'll, we'll see you, we'll see you. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense, honestly, because 
people are gonna complain about balance when that's the the last thing that Blizzard cares about right now. Like balance is irrelevant at the moment, right? It's about how your class plays. So having a damage meter is probably gonna be a bit counterproductive. You can still lock, like you still have workout locks, so you can check after, but not that it's really relevant, right? But I know for a fact that uh, Moonkin still feels shit on AoE because nothing changed. <laughs> With Starfall, we still have the same ability that doesn't stack. So <laughs> we'll see how it feels. <laughs> yeah, I can't check out. <laughs> yeah, the people dunked on the UI update, really? I mean, people, I think the biggest complaint I heard about the UI update is that they should have done this a long time ago. That's like the only thing that I've heard that, I mean, it's true, but at the same time, what is this light coming out of my character? Is this a bug? What is that? It looks like the animation when I'm, when you're flying as a, like dragon flying or whatever it's called, when you're diving down, it does this animation. That's what it looks like, right? It has to be a bug. Right? Hmm. What is it called? Dragon flying? No, what is it called? The the new flying. Oh, dragon riding. Might be helpful to compare your different builds against each other to point out which talents need love at least. Well, yeah, but that, like, they don't care about that right now, right? Like, right now, it really doesn't matter if a talent is undertuned. It just matters if the talent itself works, and if it, like, feels good to use, if it interacts with your class properly. Like, the damage itself, or the value of it, is not really relevant, because that's something you can always change really easily later right like if a spell does not enough damage compared to another spell you buff the spell right like it's that simple it's just a number thing and that's not something they do now like right now they're not gonna adjust numbers because right now they just try to implement all the abilities and the talents and make sure everything works so it's more about like the thing that is the most important right now is the position of the talents, how it feels to get the talents, right? Like, for example, with Moonkin, there's a bunch of issues with the position of the trees. Like, I think, I think some of it just doesn't make sense, really. And that's, like, the most important thing that we should be giving feedback on, right? If something is a bit under tuned, that's a different story. That doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly, country count, yeah. But yeah, I think the whole Moonkin tree... Like... I don't want to say the whole Moonkin tree, but like the lower part of the Moonkin tree... Is... Like there's just... Like it's just not good. I just don't think it makes sense, a lot of it. 
Because I kind of think they wanted to split the trees to have like AoE on one side and single target on the other side, kind of. Or at least some other classes have that. And Munkin doesn't really have that. Like Munkin has like some AoE left, some AoE right, some single target left, some single target right. And it's just really awkward. Like for a big example is, for example, um, Own It's Clear Vision and Time Worn Dreambinder. Because those two abilities are very heavily focused on single target. Because, I mean, it does work with Starfall as well, but it's just incredibly useless for Starfall in comparison. But then the only way to get here is by taking two Starfall talents. So it's like, that just makes no sense, right? And then the same goes here with uh, Syzygy. It's like more of an AoE talent. But the AoE, the other AoE talents are like here. So it's really weird that you have to uh, split your tree like this, kind of. TGP is um, in August. Mid-August? End of August? Hey, Vampy, what's up? JB has a spot. Oh, no. Hang on. It's now playing. Evoker? Oh, yeah. Click Shaman. So we have Maris, Guardian. Now Evoker. Munkin and Shaman. Let's go. Thanks for three months, Death Knife. Thank you so much. Same on Enhancement Shaman, the bottom talents are side-swapped, and under Lava Lash talents there are the Storm Strike talents, and so on with the other side. Yeah, like, it is a bit weird, because, like, I do understand why you want variety in the talent tree, because it's a bit awkward if you have, like, a super clear path, you know what I mean? Because then it's just boring. Like, if you only go this straight line on single target and only go the other straight line on AoE, then it seems a bit boring. But I think there has to be, like, a way, because, for example, Munkin has left, right, middle, right? So I think if you have three paths, because Munkin, for example, has middle path, this path, this path, right? If you have three paths, I think you can definitely put heavy AoE on one side, heavy single target on the other side, and then the middle is like an in-between thing where it can like branch out if you want to, right? Because obviously there's fights that are not pure single target and not pure AoE, there's like in-between fights where you could just like move to the, to the middle, right? I think so at least, because having certain talents that are really heavily single target be all the way in the AoE side, that seems just, like, how, why would anyone ever skill those two talents? Like, it's just, like, just a weird thing. Yeah, I need rage frames, Wyatt. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah. 
Can you do it horizontal as well? I guess you can't, right? I wish you could make them horizontal instead of vertical. You can. Oh yeah, true, you can move them like this, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, there we go. Let's go. Okay, so where's my cast bar? Um, so awkward to to play with that. Also, how do you remove the action bar thing? Like this is really annoying. Is there any way you can change this? Like the outline, you know? I guess not. Like, I just don't understand why the icon themselves are so small. Also, how can you remove the side stuff? I thought you could remove that somewhere. I removed this yesterday and now I can't see it anymore. Oh, it's just bucked. Ah, I see. Yeah. But you could remove these. Like yesterday, I found a setting that you can remove the. Like the, these uh, decorations or whatever. Oh, there we go. Okay, nice. So it just bugs. Okay, I see him. Yeah, I do wish there was an option to just completely remove the border doll, right? Like, I think that would be cool. Because even if the icon is the full icon, I still wish there it could be borderless. I don't like borders. But maybe it's not as noticeable when the icons actually fit the borders. Okay, what is this lure? LFG list Lua. Application viewer update ap applicants. I guess it has something to do with the LFG tool or something. People getting invited to the group. Yeah, I don't think you can move the... I thought he couldn't move the, the cast bar. Like you can either you can only move it underneath your player frame and then it's bucks like then it's in a bad spot like it just covered half 
Yeah, because the Casper looks really cool. I'm a big fan of it, but I wish it would be like a bit customizable, right? Like, like making it bigger, uh, removing the name if you don't want to see it, or something. Because right now the Casper is the same, like size as the name of the spell that you're casting. And I'm not sure, like, if you make it bigger, does the bottom also get bigger? Bigger Because I would want the bar to be bigger, but the name itself shouldn't be bigger. So I wonder if you... Is that something that you implement? Maybe, hopefully. In the end, you can always use add-ons, right? But the less add-ons that I need to use, the better. Yeah, and I guess, a, like, a number as well? Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. Like, having the option to add a number. Because right now you don't see how long you're casting for, yeah. I'm not gonna give any feedback on the UI, because the UI is not really implemented properly. Like, it clearly says, uh, work in progress and stuff, like, right, so... I don't think the UI is something that... They need much feedback on there, it's not done implementing it properly. No, you cannot move any cast bars right now. There's no settings for the cast bars. Other than attaching your own cast bar to the player frame. Which seems to be a bit bugged because the player frame itself is still the old one instead of the new one. Because they are going to change the player frame as well. To look much better than what it looks now. Um, so I think that's why attaching it to your player frame doesn't work at the moment. Because they made it to look good with a new version of the player frame. Yeah, I agree, Ryota, I agree. Hey, Kuro, thank you so much for 19 months, appreciate that. Hello, hello. What talents are you playing? I don't know, I just randomly picked some, honestly. I was, like, I didn't really think about the Druid talents at all. And for the Moonkin talents, I just... I just picked some stuff. Like, I picked Pulsar, and Soul the Forest, and Stellar Drift. There's a lot more I kind of want to try, but you just can't. Like, it's... yeah. I wish I could try Blessing of a Loon as well. But you just can't go Pulsar and Blessing and Soul of the Forest. Like, it's a bit... Now, Convoke is just not a good spell, guys. Convoke is just not good. Convoke is especially not good in dungeons. I like... I think Pulsar is really good for dungeons because that's one of the only things that actually does buff our AoE damage. Because there are actually very few things that really, really buff our AoE damage. Like, there's Incarn, there's Pulsar, and then Soul of the Forest, and Stellar Drift. And most of the other things actually don't buff our AoE damage that much. It's more like Astral Power Generation, but they're, like, you just can't do anything with Astral Power Generation, because Starfall doesn't stack. So, yeah... It's a bit weird. I mean, technically, Pulsar works really well with Honest Intuition, but Honest Intuition is pretty bad in on single tar uh, on AOE because 
when you cast Starfall, you have a chance of getting a free Star Search. But what does a Star Search give you when there's 20 targets? Right? Like, it's not a good free spell to get. And if you cast Star Search, you get a free Starfall. But what's the point of having a free Starfall if it doesn't stack? It's like... It's just like really weird. <laughs> Thanks for 18 months, yeah, Blue, what's up? Yeah, if Starfall would stack, Onus would be a lot better. It would feel the same way as it did in Legion again, right? In Legion, Starfall... In Legion, oh, um, Onus intuition felt really good. To get the free Starfall, free Star Search. But obviously now it feels a lot worse because Starfall doesn't suck. Starser gives... It nullifies the Stellar Drift cooldown? Hmm... I didn't know that. Does it actually? If it, nul if it nullifies the cooldown, that is not bad then. But like, what do I drop? Like, the question is, what do I drop? Like, how could I possibly get... Onit and Pulsar? I would have to get rid of Soul of the Forest. And then my Starfire does no damage. You know what I mean? Like, like that's the only thing I could drop. And without Soul of the Forest, I just don't do any damage, right? Orbit Breaker is really bad. I don't think Orbit Breaker would ever be taken. Well, first of all, they need to buff Orbit Breaker because it's, it's just doesn't proc right now, ever. The thing that a, a lot of people, I guess, don't understand about Orbit Breaker is that, like, a lot of people think that Full Moon does a lot of damage, but it just does not. Like, People think that full moon does a lot of damage because it's a huge animation of like a big moon dropping onto your targets and it seems good, but it's just not. Like it doesn't do a lot of damage at all. Because the way the way it um splashes damage, it it uh like the way it scales, it's not that it does the same damage to everything, it just splits the damage. So it kind of does similar damage to a few targets than it does to a lot of targets. It doesn't scale. So if you have a full moon that hits 10 targets, it does no damage. It's mainly about astral power generation, because whenever you, you proc a full moon, you get 40 astral power. So that is pretty good, right? Getting 40 astral power once in a while, that is good. But the problem is, what do you do with astral power on AoE? Because Seraphil doesn't stack. So let's say you get 40 astral power, because of full moon procs, then what? Like, you already have Seraphil up, what you do, right? <laughs> so it's just pretty pointless to get a full moon proc if you can't do anything with astral power. I think it would be, it's probably a lot better on like fewer targets. Like if you're raiding and you do a fight with like a bunch of ads once in a while. Like let's say maybe a boss like uh, Lords of Dread, where you have two targets. Then a full moon gives you astral power and then you can cast more star surges and whatever and it would be good. Um, but that's it. Like, it's not an AoE talent, it's more of a, like, single target. May maybe not single target, but, like, like, more like a council fight thing? Because you do need to have a bunch of dots up for it to actually proc. Um, and you need to be able to do something with the astral power that you gain from it. So, yeah. It's a pretty niche talent, I would say. 
And it's also way too weak right now. They would have to buff it, and it's still on each talent, even if they buff it. No, I don't think they, they ever address balance through its weakness in plus no. And it's not really about the weakness in M+, plus, it's more about the fact that our AoE feels incredibly unsatisfying. They never address that issue, because... I mean, honestly, the Moonkins have been complaining about Starfall not stacking since the start of Shadowlands, right? Like, we kept saying that it doesn't feel good if Starfall doesn't stack, because we don't have anything else to press. Oh, I have to queue. Oh, I'm Alliance. Can we not just go to the entrance? Where, where's the dungeon? <laughs> Does anyone know where the dungeon is? You can't walk to it. Why did they create horde characters? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why can't I not queue up as horde and alliance? Hey, THG, by the way, what's up? I think it's pretty stupid. Uh, hordes. <sighs> Alright, cool. Did I press through it? I did. It. <laughs> I asked pretty dumb. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, need some spells, some talents. Shit, I forgot what I went with the last time. Something like this. I didn't expect with this. This is what I went with, right? Wait, I actually do have another. Sp oh, I'm just missing one point. Whatever. Okay, so this is Gia. Gia, shit. Did I have this one, shit, Gia? R E three four Q Shift four Okay, bear form, cat form, 
recruit defensive region taunt moon flare Soothe and Rebirth. Cow. Think where it gets? I'm missing bark skin. Okay. I guess I could, uh, I could save my talents or whatever, but it's really easy to just uh, get all the stuff real quick. I can only save the interface, ah. Uh. Moonfire is here. I mean, Mo Moonfire and Moonkin form? Oh yeah, true. I might need that. Okay, let's see how this feels like. Yeah, Lunar Eclipse is so long now! Jesus! I like the way they display the Starfall, the Cell Drift cooldown here. Or the Starfall cooldown, I guess. It displays friends of region though like i just like why would it display that here that just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever hello johnny thank you so much for 57 months what's up you were good did you manage to find your way back home I did not tell Chad about your t-shirt. <laughs> you can go ahead and tell them, Johnny. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, jo Johnny. <laughs> so here's the thing, yeah. So... Johnny got uh, a gift from a boyfriend, and he told me about this like before we got there and stuff. And it would have been a good joke if he didn't find the absolute worst moment to reveal his gift to me. Because what happened was, on Friday, I lost my phone at the end of the night. And I was like looking for my phone, and everything was fucked up, and I was like, okay, this sucks. And then we got back into the hotel. And then this guy brings out the shirt that was the gift for my boyfriend. Where it was like a picture of me where I was drunk from like a while ago. And it's at it's like party time or whatever. And he reveals the shirt when I just literally just had lost my phone. And I'm like, 
sad and stuff. I was like, oh, this is fucked up. And then this guy, it's like, to my boyfriend, he's like, come with me, come with me, I'll get for you. And then they come out of their goddamn room with like the shirt on. And they're like, and I was like, dude, <laughs> read the room. <laughs> Hey, Kalana, what's up? <laughs> oh shit, okay, let's see this dungeon. I did not find the phone, though. All right, let's see. It looks cool so far. Do these guys have frontals or something? It looks like that's a frontal. Oh my god, I'm not generating any astral power. Jeez. What were these called? Wardens. So the Wardens only have a frontal, I guess it looks like. This dungeon looks really nice. I like it. <laughs> okay, then we have Spine Crushers and a Mage. Okay, we pulled the Mage as well. I you should focus that guy. Solar beam, let's go. I'll taunt. I'm being fixated by something. I do not have a target. This is just damage. Let's fix it. I require a target. So plunderers and mages again? So what do the plunderers do? We definitely have this orb thing. Can you knock these guys? Let's see. Oh. You can only you knock the plunderers, but you cannot knock the mage, looks like. Then we have ore elementals. What did these do? Did they like explode when they die or something? That would make sense. Bank Crusher, Plunder, and a Mage. Gonna focus the Mage. Taunting myself. I do not have a target. It's hard to test your class if the mobs are dying so fast. Okay, we have some RP going on. So that means for M plus, you do want to stealth up and start the RP early, I guess. Oh, this guy looks really cool. Seems to be like a front on the tank or something. And then we have this. What is my Star Lord? Oh. 
Why does my Starlord only stack up to two? Did you see that? Let's get a front leg on. Oh, is it generally just two? Oh, it's just up to three, huh? I'm so confused. My Starlord only stacks to, to two. When it's supposed to stack to three. Or am I just really stupid? Okay, one Starlord, two Starlords. Two Starlords. And it says haste increased by 0%. <laughs> well, I guess Starlord is bugged. Well, that's a bit unfortunate, I guess. Yeah, the boss seems fun. Ish. Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot fly. Phoenixes here. Hunter. Oh, they jump on a player. Ooh, and leave a bleed behind. Oh, that's not good. this about okay overseer lahar so this is a oh frontal that goes apart afterwards Yeah, my server definitely only stacks up to two, and it doesn't give me haste. So that's a bit messed up. I require a target. Trainee. So the hunters are the ones that ambush, right? So like jump on a player with a bleed. Trainee, I don't know what those are doing. This evoker animation is a bit obnoxious. I think they should not make it so visible for everyone that it's not them, like, for other players, I guess. Right? What do you think? Because it looks really nice, but I don't want to see it. At least not as much as I'm seeing it right now. This guy's a bone toss. Oh, this guy, are they like alerting others? These hunters? I just used my cooldowns and this is a boss, I guess. Oops. Dragon strike. Oh, this guy jumps and he can dodge it. Then grounding spear. Oh. Look for a way to break the chain. 
Did he just uh, knock me? How do you break the chain? Oh, the boss needs to charge through it. I see. Yeah. Okay, then he has to fix it onto the tank as well, it looks like. Front on the tank. So this one you can jump out of, out of the dragon strike. Oh, what happened? Huh? What just happened to me? <laughs> I don't know, actually. Chain the boss. I think you're standing strolls. So these bone tenders, they alert others when you pull them. I do not have a target. Where are we going? Do we have do we have to go back? We have to go all the way around. I'm good, Save. How are you? Wherever to go. Oh yeah, up here I guess. None of these guys have stealth detection. That's good to know. Huh. My map doesn't work anymore. How do you get to the boss? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I guess you have to go through this. Hmm. Like, we need to get to this boss. The only way through it is through this lava. But, um...
Well, where is the third boss? I mean, I only see three bosses on the map, right? Where would the third boss be? Wait, so we turned around for no reason. We were actually in the correct spot earlier. And they turned around? Is that what happened? Because we were here already. Ah, oh, shit. Did we just pull half the world? Oh, shit. I pulled stuff too. Oh, no. I must get closer. Uh oh. Torch. There's some mobs from the back in a second. These guys do like a circle on people. Oh, this guy ambushed me again or something. Yeah, let's see what this Iron Torch commander does. It is just this damage. Lego and battery, and that's just an swirlies. I need to target something first. These elementals look really cool. And there's definitely some stuff that is not avoidable so far, but I mean, not that much. It's like a bunch of circles and whatever. And usually they make sure to tune that so it's not actually gonna one shot you. Well, most of the time, not all the time, oh yeah. Because this here is unavoidable. And this one seems to just be pulsing AoE? Which... I do think that's gonna be a bit messed up. Every time something is pulsing AoE... You're just not having a good time. Let's see if we can outrange it. Doesn't look like it. Thanks for advanced Tara, what's up? I do not have a target. Evoca seems fun so far. Looks pretty good. We just lost it. Okay. I require a target. <laughs> Guess we're pulling stuff. Make the bloodlust worth it. Oh.
Knight of the Forge. That's just a lot of AoE. Holy shit, what's this volcanic axe? Oh, my gosh. oh it Oh my god, like now there actually does seem to be a lot of unavoidable damage. Jesus. Like before this point of the dungeon it seemed fine. But now there's a lot of unavoidable damage, it seems like. In this area of the dungeon. Jeez. That's gonna be interesting, I guess. Oh, I got an off head. Without a main head. I mean, it's not avoidable, yeah? Like, I was targeted by that spell, and then I had a bleed afterwards. Or dot. Pretty sure, certain that was not avoidable. And then when the boss was slamming, like, the forge, that would not, was also not avoidable. And then the elementals were pulsing AoE damage in the whole group. Which was not outrangeable. But I mean, it's a boss, right? So it makes sense. But there's unavoidable damage. Wait, what? Am I dead? Jesus, why is there so many things to jump down? Do I look like an evoker? I could flap, but it's not my bars. I don't think I actually have flap. Wait. Wait, what happens to flap in dragonflies? Do we just have a baseline now, or...? Wait, they didn't remove flap, right? Right? I mean, I guess it could still be a tome. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Thanks for 16 months, Fury Eyes. What's up? Uh... Thank you, thank you. Pick up gold. What's that mean? Burning ember? Okay, this guy fixed it. Let's see if we can see it. Oh yeah, you can see it. I don't know what just happened, but I pressed an item. Damage inflicted every three seconds applies hardened gold upon expiration. So this guy applies some dots or something. Okay, damage to damage absorb shields within eight yards of the impact. It's already gone now, though. Okay. And it's really hard to to test this stuff when the difficulty is so low. <laughs> I guess. Ooh, what does this guy do? Oh, can he use these orbs on other things as well? I mean, no, because it only works in Absorb Shields, right? Okay, so this guy has some sort of wing buffet or something. I don't fucking know. Still being something, something. I need to target something first.
Okay, well, the dungeon seems, uh, seems pretty nice. I like it. It's, it seemed fun. It, like, the, the size of it also seems pretty good. Man, you just linked locks and I, do I have to type all of this? I'm typing it. I can't believe I'm typing a whole URL. Okay, did less damage in the tank. Which, to be fair, was to be expected. <laughs> Let's see. Starfall did my. The, see, Starfall. The most damage in Star Search, Starfire, Sunfire. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. My Sunfire did the same amount of damage as my Starfire? That's a bit weird, though. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess I'm also just dying too fast for my Starfire to properly do damage. Like, I just apply my dots and then the mobs are dead when I have enough astral power to cast Starfall. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, the locks don't matter, guys. Listen, like, boom can be low tank. Yeah, that, that does matter. Like, I know it's funnier, but it doesn't really matter how much damage you do. Because it's not like, it's not that they have balanced anything yet. Like, they're just implementing the spells and the damage will be balanced afterwards. It's alpha, right? Like, clearly they don't care about balancing at the moment. But it's not even that, like, it's more of, like, the fact that the classes feel good to play. It's like you have nothing to press. It's the same issue that we always have since Shadowlands. <laughs> the fact that we can't press anything because Starfall has a cooldown. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that the class is fine, because the class is bad. But the bigger problem is the way it plays. Not necessarily the amount of damage the spells do, right? Because if, if my Wrath does 500 damage or 5,000 damage, like that's something that's, that's just a number, they can change that. Right, so the actual damage numbers don't really matter. It's more like everything else. Like the fact that um, we pull a trash pack and it takes me an hour to even start doing damage. Because I have no astral power. <laughs> and then on top of that, my Starfall just is back. So I have nothing to do. Okay. Alright, new dungeon. Older man, let's see him. Um... Remember these types of mobs. <laughs> All right. So what do they? Geomancers. They have some casts, I guess. Chain lightning and stone spike. Also, have a talent that doesn't work. Star Lord seems to be giving me zero haste, zero percent haste. Which uh, might have partially something to do with the damage being low. 
I mean, it doesn't really, like, they can fix that up first, so. It's not that big of a deal, but. It definitely feels weird because you would have more haste. And of course, haste feels nice to have. Oh my god, what is my camera angle in here? Oof. Trash game, buggy mess, why even play it? I hope you're joking, yeah, this is alpha. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> yeah. okay, so these mobs are a bit annoying because they don't move. But now my Star Lord stack to three. Like, most of the time before, it didn't. Like, it would only stack to... to two. I require a target. What the hell is going on in this... in this room? Nice, we get some loot. Huge. I don't know which eclipse I was in. Was I in lunar eclipse? Yeah, apparently so. It's so weird to not have uh, add-ons. Like, I hate the way that... It doesn't display anywhere what eclipse I was in. So I don't know, like, am I supposed to go to lunar eclipse or solar eclipse? Like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so these guys seem to be throwing a lot of rocks. The rocks are dodgeable, so that's good. They also hurt. I need to target something first. <laughs> Awa Jesus. Okay, so this dungeon definitely looks like the I require it. Like it's the exact same as as Ulderman, right? Like it literally is Ulderman. Yeah. I didn't expect that. Like I thought it would be some like I don't know. Like I thought they would have changed it a lot. But so far it looks the exact same, right? Oh, and there also seem to be a lot of bosses. Looks like there's uh, one, two, three, four, five bosses. I don't like five boss dungeons. I wish every instance only had like three or four. So these maps are a bit spread out. Can you like line of sight them or something? Oh, the totem has to be killed. Uh huh. I'll rest you, my friend. I get it now, I get it. None of these things seem to be line of sight, which is nice. There's another totem over there. Oh, okay, that seems to be something you have to dodge, I guess. Oh, this guy's bloodless. Okay, okay. Okay, now where do we go? Oh, I see, okay. There's some naked dwarfs. 
Check it by, that seems to be a tank thing. Increased vulnerability to being stunned? What's that mean? Oh, it's the evoker talent, right? Or is it not? Maybe not. Thanks, Center. Good morning. Okay, this guy just gave me a bleed. I'm not sure if I was, um, if he was supposed to be the tank. Or if it's like a random person he gives it to. Maybe it's like Chop in theater. Or it's like the closest person or something. Jagged Bites. Who got it this time? Oh, I think he might be casting this when the tank is not close. Yeah, I think the, the tank has to be close to this custodian guy. Maybe. Another boss? Target it for a resonating orb. Okay, what does that mean? Oh. Sorry, I walked into it. I want to see what happens. Empowerment? Damage and increase, can I dispel this? Okay, this is not suitable apparently. Whoa, okay. Guess I die? Avoid the stomp. Do you avoid it at all? Yes, you don't. Oh, you can move the. You can move the boss into the orbs and stun him. Okay, that makes sense. Is that all? Like this boss doesn't seem to be doing that much, right? Like you just spawn the orbs and then he does like a stomp thing? Hmm. Damage is not irrelevant when bliss fails repeatedly at balancing out damage fast enough. Numbers you see now will be close to what they will be in the end. You understand that we don't even have all classes on Alpha yet, right? Like, like you need to just think logically about balancing. Like, the way balancing works is that the damage only matters in correlation to another, right? Because if one class does a hundred KDPS, that does tell that tells you nothing, right? I guess like good is it bad? I don't know. It only matters in correlation to others. Because if you, do a, if you do 100k and another class does 200k DPS, well then 100k is bad. Obviously. If you do 100k and the other classes do 50k, then 100k is good. Right? So obviously you can only balance classes properly if you have all the classes. And all the... Like all of it works. Like all the classes need to be implemented. And all the, uh, the abilities and talents need to be implemented. And right now that is not the case. <laughs> so why would you balance things if you don't even have everything? Like that just makes no sense. It's 
more important that all the abilities work, you know? Because that's... Because it's, it's only alpha, it's not even beta yet, right? So the most important thing right now is that everything works. Like abilities work, talents work, talent positions, and so on. That's what they focus on right now. The numbers are not something that they care about right now. Because if they fix... Like, imagine they would actually balance the numbers now. Imagine they would start balancing things now. Well, then later on, they're gonna have to balance again, because later on, maybe talents get shuffled around, maybe abilities get changed, you know? And then what, you wanna just balance again? Like, it just makes no sense to waste death time to balance things when the base of everything is not even properly working yet. It just makes no sense. Like, think about it, uh, like imagine you're um, renovating your living room. And you put in the, f the walls or whatever, like the walls are being done, but the floors aren't being done yet. Would you clean the whole fucking living room whenever they implement something? No, obviously not, because it's just gonna get dirty again when they do the, when they implement the other thing, right? It's a bit of a bad analogy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so obviously you wait until they implement everything and then you make sure it looks pretty afterwards. Because balancing is always just like an end thing. Like it's the, it's the thing you do at the very end, right? It's basically like cleaning. Or decorating. I mean, combat. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, this seems like a weird way of skipping <laughs> this part. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh, this was just the skip. I get it now, okay. So you didn't actually need to activate this. It's just a skip for when people die, because I guess you always spawn at the entrance? Okay, I get it. I need to target something first. <laughs> My god. I guess sometimes people just don't uh, understand the difference between balancing and, like, design. Because it is very important to talk about class design right now. Like, if there's something with your class that you think is bad, or it should be changed, or the talents are bad, or whatever, then it would totally make sense to talk about that, and they should fix that, right? But balancing is literally just like numbers. And the numbers are just not relevant right now at all. I guess we have to kill these guys. Am I dying? No! I require a target. I require a target. Pass activate keepers. And what? Okay. <laughs> Were you I am I supposed to like move this somewhere? Aris is just doing that much damage. <laughs> Press bear for him? I mean, I didn't assume this would just kill me. I don't go bear for him randomly. <laughs> I 
I thought I would do no damage, like all the other mechanics. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if the dungeon journal works, actually. I didn't check it at all. Where's the dungeon <laughs> journal? No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, there. Emberon. Steering club hits all players in front of Emberon. Pushing flames continues until a bell keepers are defeated. Okay. Place a random enemy with unstable embers. Inflicts fire damage to enemies within seven yards and the target upon expiring. This is what I died to. So this is just debility, I guess. I mean, just if it does so much damage on normal mode, well, I don't know. I mean, item level is probably really. Actually, we are scaled now. We get scaled to three hundred item level. Maybe that has to be looked at. Four M plus. <laughs> That might be a little bit of an issue. We'll see. <laughs> the other druid made sure to go into bear form. <laughs> That's the fucking tank! <laughs> of course he's in bear form. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> oh man. I do not have a No. I require a target. Yeah, look at Maris. <laughs> what a nice player. Just always go bear for him. He's so nice to the healers. <laughs> yeah, that's just a really big swirly. That's his blessing. Granting timers increased damage done to allies and afflicting holy damage. Uh -huh. I do not have a target. Could have at least used dark packs. <laughs> True, my bad, my bad. <laughs> well, we have two evokers and I didn't get rebuffed. Wait, why am I standing here? Hello? What the I fuck? What was that ability? It just stuns you? I hope it was an interruptible cast, because. Otherwise, this is a bit messed up. Okay, so this dungeon so far seems a lot worse than the other dungeon. I'm just like, the mechanics and stuff, and the way it looks. And also, like, I'm not the biggest fan of dungeons that are like, really convoluted. I'm not sure if this is just like a me thing. But I personally, like, I don't have anything against open dungeons. I, I like open dungeons, where you can, like, pick and choose kind of whatever you go. But I think it can be an open dungeon and still be, like, somewhat, like, clear. Like, if you think of a dungeon like, um, what is it called? Um, the other side? I think the dungeon is... Like, somewhat open in a sense that uh, you, 
there's a lot of free like trash that you can pick and choose what to play. Well, there's other dungeons where there's almost no extra trash and you just have to play everything. And I personally really like it when you can choose which trash you play and which you don't. And I hate it when you're just kind of like have the set path and you have to do this, you know? And so far, this dungeon seems very convoluted in a sense that, I don't know, you're just going path, like you're going down these corridors and these tight areas and it's just like one way and one way only and then there's a mob at the end and it's like, yeah. Also the mobs themselves seem kind of meh so far. I'm not sure. And it seems very big, like, there's just so much stuff. Haste reduce! I'm sorry, what is this debuff and why does it exist? I don't like it. Dude, what is this haste reduction? There's nothing I hate more than things that uh, reduce my damage then. That I can't... Is it when I'm casting? I need to target something first. Whatever it is, I don't like it. <laughs> when the moths die? That's so bad though. Why would that be the case? Okay, so now we fight the dragon, Chrono Lord. Deus. And, okay, so there's now an orb thing. Sand breath, that seems like a frontal. Maybe you have to use this to get slowed or something? The sand? Wing buffet, okay. Trinity orb. Sand breath. Trinity orb. Does this mob not have more abilities? Divine time flow, okay. I don't know what that means. I don't have a diva for anything. Huh? What happened? So confused. <laughs> what just happened? Hmm. So I guess this boss uh, like about Oh, haste increase. So So if you walk into the the pools in this space, you get more haste, okay? Okay. Uh, reverse flow of time, restoring his own temporal energy while inflicting a cane damage to players every one second. Turn the orbs and zones revert to temporal orbs and zones. Temporal orb. While time is being reverted, a temporal orb will float upwards, back towards its point of creation. And while time is being reversed, a temporal zone will funnel lost time back into play, increasing their haste. Okay. Okay. It's so like kind of meh. I guess. I mean... Sure. Okay, let's look at the locks. 
Let's see how bad it was. Well, we got beaten by a tank again. <laughs> but that's okay, you know? It could be worse. This time my Starfire did a bit more damage. Still very shitty damage, but... Slightly more. I'm not sure what uh, we're discussing right now. I see there's an argument about Mechagon right now in like the other side. Oh, we were talking about... Yeah, yeah, I see. I mean, I think the other side was a bad example because I think the other side is still pretty linear because you have to get to the end of each wing to kill the bosses. Like, I, I think the other side was a bad example to take. When I say open dungeons, I mean more that you... You, like, kind of take the path that you want and then you, you still manage to get all the enemy forces and you manage to kill all the bosses. I do like those kind of dungeons most of the time. I enjoy them more than others, but not always. Sometimes there are linear dungeons that I like. I think it also just really heavily depends on the actual dungeons. Like for example, I actually really liked King's Rest. A lot of people hated King's Rest. Uh, there were some things I didn't like about King's Rest. The fact that they really like cut, cut you off. Like, I didn't mind King's Rest being a more, like, linear dungeon, but I did hate the fact that they l put literal doors before, like, you know, like, you had to kill the trash before the door opens, basically. Like, I hated that. Because I, I want to have more choice as a player. Like, if I want to pull the trash in front of me to the trash I'm playing now, then... I want to do that, right? I don't want you to forcefully stop me from doing that. I don't want there to be a door that only opens once I finish this single mob or whatever. Because that's just really boring. That's why I also really dislike Spires of Ascension as well. I really hate Spires because of the same reason that you have these platforms and that's the only thing you can play. Like, you only play everything that is on the platform and that's it, right? There's no other way. And I... Yeah, I don't know. Like, it just seems very restrictive, and I don't like that. I think the Mist Maze is... The Mist Maze would feel a lot worse if you <laughs> wouldn't be able to pull things through the wall. Like, the fact that you can pull things through the wall makes the mist maze bearable. If you wouldn't be able to pull things through the wall, then the maze would be uh, horrible, in my opinion. Just because, again, it's so restrictive. And you just pull this trash bag, and then you wait, and then you pull the other trash bag. It's like, ugh. Ivashar was a pretty good dungeon as well. I think Ivashar was one of the most open dungeons because you can really do whatever you want. Like, you'd literally skip the first boss and do another boss first and then come back, right? You had so much freedom in what you can do or what you want to do. And I think that was cool. Mm -hmm. 
Same with something like a Taldasar, right? And also pretty free in where you can go and what you can do. And that's, I guess, what I meant with the other side as well. Because in the other side, you can choose which wing you do first, right? So you have the freedom in that. But once you are in the wing, you are more, like, it's more linear, right? So yeah, the other side is like, yeah. Oh, look, it's rice and... Uh, we can... I guess... Yeah, I guess you're right. Like, freedom usually confuses players more compared to it being linear, but... I mean, really? Like, is it that big of a deal? I'm not sure about that. Okay, let's try something different. I, <laughs> to honestly don't know what to try. It's just all bad. <laughs> I can't think of anything that would actually be really good. I think I'm gonna get rid of Star Lord because Star Lord doesn't work. I'm gonna keep shooting stars because apparently it did 8.46% of my damage. I mean, maybe Circle of Life and Death. I don't fucking. I don't know. I mean, maybe we go. I don't know. Balance of all things? Circle of life and death? Convoke? I just don't know. I mean, Twin Moons would also be somewhat nice. Dude, let's just try Circle of Life and Death. But what other thing do we go with? Let's go. Ah, oh, shit, I need one more point. I want, I want OI. Wait, does this do the same thing no matter how many points you put into it? It does, right? Like, look, it says 25% and next rank 25%. Huh? Guess we'll go with that then. You think it's supposed to be one rank? Maybe. Yeah, uh, huh? Maybe not because Umbral Infusion is also two ranks. Maybe it's just supposed to be like 15% and then 25% or something. Yeah, um, maybe, race. Because shooting stars actually did a lot of damage. So maybe shooting, maybe, maybe solstice and the circle of life and death or something? Should I try that? Just play a dot build. So just my dots do damage. I mean, that would be kind of fun to try. But then Syzygy doesn't work, which sucks. But then Starfall is still, like, by far the most damage, so I guess Onus makes sense with Solid Drift. Solstice is so... F I also don't like where Solstice is, honestly. Like, I don't... 
I don't like the fact that I have to take Star Lord to get to precise alignment and solstice. Because Star Lord is very much a single target talent. That's not AoE at all. But Solstice is a lot more AoE than. I mean, not to say that it is an AoE talent, but it's good for a single target and AoE, so. I don't like this. And also, Syzygy is also an AoE talent. So why do I have to take Star-Lord to get to those, like, talents? It's really weird. Not a fan. Okay, so this dungeon is a lot nicer. I like this dungeon a lot. Like, Ultaman was like, eh. But maybe it was like my first impression. I'm gonna play Ultaman again and see if there's... It was also a bit confusing, honestly, to start. And this, this dungeon is a lot more clear in what the hell is happening. I guess the only issue in this dungeon is that there's not a lot of uh, AoE. Which, I guess, not really an issue. It's just... Oh... Wait, I don't see my own as proc anywhere. It's just a buff. Or did it show up on my bar? Resource bar? I didn't see it at least. Surely I'm doing a lot more damage now. Surely, right? I need to target something first. I mean, I think the biggest problem right now is also the fact that I just don't have any astral power. Feels like. So, yes, I have OI. But what is OI good for if you can't actually cast astral power spells? I can just cast so little. I, I can barely keep my starfall up. I do not have those tackles. Who's got PI? <laughs> nice. <laughs> now I can blast. And that's I keep trying to uh, thanks for two months but you appreciate that thank you thank you thank you Yeah, generating very little astral power. I mean, I didn't really take any astral power generators. I mean, technically, OI is a ge generator. And shooting stars is. 
No, they did not catch shooting stars. Yeah, oh, I definitely feel bad. I require a tablet. Like, I just don't have an- like, I, I'm not casting- I'm not generating enough astral power to spend the astral power to get OI procs, you know? I mean, everything I tested so far felt bad, so... It's not that the OI specifically feels bad, it just feels equally bad compared to everything else. cast a million starfires to even get my starfall up, you know? Like, I just don't have astral power. I do not have a target. Oh. I need to target something first. Someone's pumping too much right now? Yes, yeah, definitely not me. <laughs> it's probably Ryzen. Oh, this is a thing you can actually dodge. Someone, someone plans to bleed off of me? You can't touch the chain. If you touch the chain, you get stunned. Ah, that's why I got stunned earlier. to go back. Does the fix it also break the chain? Maybe it does.
<laughs> Thank you so much for getting yourself to stream elements. Appreciate it. Yeah, the chains, uh, you break the chains by baiting the bosses jump through the chains, basically. As far as understood. Man, I think evokers are gonna be really good in, in dungeons, like, really good. Maybe not so good in raids. But I think, like, the whole kit is gonna make for dungeons, because the 25 yard range thing is irrelevant for M+, plus most of the time. And most of the time you don't have to stand on, like, full range, right? So it's not really a big deal that they have a shorter range. And they have so many M+, plus talents. Like, bleed dispel as a damage dealer. Enrage dispel. A lot of, like, mobility stuff as well. They have a lot of AoE abilities too. I'm not sure how good they're gonna be, but they have them. <laughs> And then also the damage reduction that they have as well, I guess. Yeah, obviously, I mean, in the end, it will. When it comes to Implast, it will always depend on who does the most damage, right? Like, it's as simple as that. So, if Evoker does do top damage, well, then it also won't be meta in a sense. Of course, you can always play whatever you want in Implast, but there will always be classes that are better than others. And no, obviously, we don't know if Evoker is gonna be that. Purely depends on numbers. I am out of range. I am out of range. Sucks. I just feel so bad to play. I don't know. I mean, it, I do have to admit it's also like the start of the expansion, and usually things feel worse a bit because you have like less haste and less stats and whatever, and like everything feels super slow. And this is like 
we're killing everything really quickly, so that's that has always been a weakness for Munkin, right? Ah, oh, I get it. It's not a it's not a cross. It's a fucking like diagonal thing out of your character. <laughs> I thought it was a cross. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the wolf thing is a talent. It's called Power of Goldrin. I don't know how much damage it does. I'm not sure if it's good. Oh, you can stand still if it's new. Oh, I didn't know that. Aha, uh -huh, that makes sense, I guess. So, like, the impact point does not have a swirly underneath? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Thanks for two years, Arutha. What's up, what's up? No, there's no talent that, put, that makes the Starfall put Moonfire and Sunfire in all targets. That would be really OP. I would love it, though. Yeah, but that's not a thing. I need to target something first. What is Furor again? What is that? Sorry, I was distracted. Where are we going? Last tree, bottom left. Oh, wait. What does Furrer do, though? What do they do with that? Human weave and spend surge to starfall. What source full start now? Excuse me, what? That seems so wrong. You tell me you just spent twenty seconds in in human form? Why? But there's no way that's worth it, right? Except unless there's actual downtime where you like walking. I do not have a target. And only for four seconds, isn't it twenty seconds? Fifteen seconds. You have to be outside of Munkin form for fifteen seconds. That's a lot of seconds. In my book. Yes, yeah, so you have to be you have to be in human form for 15 seconds just to get like three free star surges. Like that just like I don't see how that's worth it. That can't be worth it, right? Like that's just so weird. <laughs> I 
You do the spamming in no form and then go to Moonkin. Oh, I get it now. So you spam Star Search outside of Moonkin form. Okay, I see. I think that makes a lot more sense. Because you obviously have astral power still when you leave Moonkin form as a Moonkin. So you can just cast a bunch of Star Surges outside of Moonkin form. Yeah, that makes sense. I assume they're going to fix that because that's messed up. That's like... I assume they're gonna make it not work in human form. So I don't think that's the intention behind it. Like the intention behind it is that you switch out of your main form for 15 seconds and then switch back into it and you get free stuff, right? But getting free star surges in caster form is not what you're supposed to get in caster form. In caster form you're supposed to get free heals, right? And not free star surges, I guess. So that's uh, for sure going to be changed, I guess. Well, I don't want to say for sure, but it would make sense if they change it, I think. Oh my god, I beat the tank, guys. Let's go. Barely, though. Barely. <laughs> ah, this time I Moonfire and my Sunfire was second in damage. Power of Goldrin only did 100k. 1.8% of my damage. Yeah, I mean, I could try the four thing, but, like, I don't think that's intended, right? So is there a point in trying it? I can do it for fun, but... I could try a full dot build. I think that might be fun. But the problem is, um... I can't go Adaptive Swarm. It's just so bad. Thanks for three months, Benny. Appreciate that. Thank you soon. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, let, let's try the, 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 the thing. The dot thing. So I would have to go Solstice. Which sucks because I have to go Precise Alignment and everything, right? Circle Twin Moons. Circle of Love and Death. I can remove this. I go Solstice. What else do I get rid of? I guess I don't need Stellar Inspiration. Fury of the Skies? Convoke? I mean, I guess we don't have any points left anyway. Unless we don't go Stellar Drift. We could not go Stellar Drift. But... <laughs> but we there's no way I have enough astral power to keep casting starfall. There, there's just no way, right? Because I'm applying dots a lot, which means I'm not gonna generate a lot of stuff. I mean, orbit break is just really bad. Oh, they changed it. Fifteenth shooting star instead of thirtieth. They actually, they actually buffed it. Okay, let's remove Stellar for now. Uh, but no extension on Starfall? Uh, on Dots? <laughs> here, wait, let's see. I mean, I have to put points here anyway, right? I can't... How the hell do I get down there? Should I go River Loon? I 
think I go worry of a loon. Now we go with this and then this and then this. But I need this as well. Fuck. <laughs> that is just. Do we just not go twin woods? <laughs> I don't know. This is too complicated. Oh, we need twin moons, right? <laughs> I just don't have enough points. I can't go a circle and orbit breaker. Unless I don't go twin moons. Even without twin moons, I can't get to orbit breaker. I guess I just can't have circle and orbit breaker. I, I can't remove anything up here because I need the points, right? The only points I can remove is the points down here. See, I need one more point up here. Now I can go down. I guess I can put one in Circle of Life and Death. Because right now it's backed anyway, it seems like. Okay, fine, let's do this. This is so bad. <laughs> Whatever, I like it. <laughs> we need to bind uh, this spell somewhere. Five it is. Level to 65 to get more points. The leveling stone is disabled. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm gonna add rate frames. Good point. Hello? Okay, why doesn't this work? Okay, now I'm confused. Uh-oh. Okay. Weird. Yeah, the thing with the four, uh, that is interesting. Because if you're 15 seconds in Munkin form, then you will get free spells in caster form, right? That's how it works. And obviously, even if we're in caster form, we still have astral power as a Munkin. So you can just spend... Like, for, for four seconds, you can cast spells forever. Well, I mean, stars are in starfall, right? Which I guess then in return counts towards... Stuff like Pulsar. But I don't understand what Onits has to do with it, though. Why do you play OI? Because that's counterproductive in a sense, right? Because you get free spells during Furor anyway. So if you get a free spell during Furor... It's like... It doesn't matter because it's already free, right? No, it doesn't work like that, Rice. I mean, you can read it, right? When you shift into a form you haven't been in for 15 seconds, abilities cost no mana, energy, rage, or astral power. So if you would want to have free spells in Moonkin form, you would have to be in caster form for 15 seconds. So obviously it doesn't work that way. Unless you stay in caster form for 15 seconds and switch to Moonkin form for 15 seconds and then switch in caster form for 15 seconds. But uh, <clears throat> obviously it's going to be a really big damage loss to stay in caster form for 15 seconds, so it makes... Like, you don't do it the other way around, basically. 
But yeah, I also think this is not... Like, I don't think this is... They're gonna leave it this way. Because, um... This Furor talent is not supposed to be, like, a big damage... It's not supposed to be, like, a baseline damage thing that they do, right? It's supposed to be more of a, like, hybrid-y thing. Like, it's supposed to be for Rastodruids and Plus, or it's supposed to be for... Like, I don't know, if, if you... If you're a Moonkin and you want to tank something once in a while, then you can spam Iron for or whatnot. But it's not supposed to be like a, a thing that you do as a damage dealer, it's like a main thing, right? So I'm pretty sure they're gonna fix the thing with the caster form, because that's not the intended way of it. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, I think it's more supposed to be for, like, Guardian and the rest of Druids. I mean, it's even good for damage dealers as well, for Feral and Guardian. Um, if, like, you have to do a lot of hybrid stuff, like for PvP, for example, right? If you are a Feral Druid and you want to off-heal a lot, then you can just always cast heals for free in caster form, right? I think for stuff like that, it's really nice. But it's definitely not supposed to be, like, a main like, damage increase, that you're supposed to do it as, like, your main rotation, you know? Like, surely that's not the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm not gonna test it just because I think it's just not the way it's supposed to work, so it's kind of, like... Okay, I'm gonna be back two minutes. We can check the clip, yeah. I mean, maybe it's also just bugged, you know? The reduced cost is bugged right now, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. Stack Pulsar. <laughs> it works. No fucking shot, bro. It works. Oh, he just keeps the the, the buff. Alright. <laughs> it works. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, it's bucked as in. So you switch into a form, and you gain furor, and then you keep it, even if you switch back into the form. So basically, as you can see, uh, you see Moonkin form now. He switches out of Moonkin form into caster form, and he gains Furor. Oh no, he gained it again, actually. Okay, it's bucked. It's bucked, yeah. So he, he switched into caster form, got Furor, and then he switched into Moonkin form, and he got Furor again. Yeah, the buff refreshes, which shouldn't work that way, obviously. Like... Unless, how long is it supposed to last? Four seconds. Yeah, it's bugged. It's 100% bugged, right? Because he's not supposed to get four when he switches into Moonkin form. Because he only switched out of Moonkin form for like two seconds. And you need to be out of Moonkin form for 15 seconds to get it. So it's just bugged. Yeah, exactly, Rice. Yeah, there's, there's just something wrong with the spell. I mean, technically it still could be useful. Because right now it's obviously bugged, the way it worked for, for Goop here. But the initial thing was not bugged. Like, when you switch into caster form, then it makes sense that your star surge is free, right? It doesn't cost any astral power. That does make sense. That's how the spell works. I guess they just didn't think about that. So I do think they're gonna change it eventually, but yeah. Yeah, the human weave is like a... 
I don't think that's... Yeah, I think they're gonna fix it because in the end we don't want to do that anyway, right? I mean, which kind of Moonkin player wants to do human weave? Like, I think that's... That's a bit much, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, one second guys, we're back and then we're gonna do some more dungeons, I guess? One sec. All right. This incarnation count is a new. Yeah, may I mean maybe. <laughs> Definitely doesn't work properly right now. What the heck is human human weave? Well, right now uh, the furor talent seems to be bugged. Yeah, I guess it's gonna add some haste breakpoints when it comes to GCD. Right? Because if it lasts a certain amount of seconds, if you have a lot of haste, you might fit in another GCD. But yeah, I mean, there's no way they want this to happen, so I'm sure they're gonna fix it. I think the talent is really weird anyway. Because there's a really big flaw with the talent, and it's the astral power thing. Because every spec, every druid spec, has rage, energy, and mana. But only Moonkin has astral power. So it doesn't really work with the Moonkin spells if you're not a Moonkin, right? Because the way Star Surge works for Rasta Druid is that it has a cooldown. It doesn't cost astral power because you don't have astral power. So it's just as a cooldown and costs mana. So you can't really use for for Moonkin spells unless you're a Moonkin. And I think that's a little bit of a flaw in design, right? Like they should maybe change it so that maybe Star Search doesn't have a cooldown instead of not costing Astra power. And then it would also fix the problem that Moonkin has with the cheese. Right? So instead of saying abilities cost no mana, energy, rage, or astral power, they should say 
abilities cost no mana, energy, or rage, and Star Surge doesn't have a cooldown anymore. That's what it should say. Because then, if you're a Feral, a Guardian, or a Rested Druid, you can spam Star Surge whenever you have Furor. And if you're a Moonkin, your Star Surge doesn't have a cooldown anyway, so you cannot abuse it in human form, right? I think that would fix the talent. If they change it that way. Also, I don't know what they did with Starlord, but obviously it doesn't work. If Sierra haste. Also, not only did it give Sierra haste, it also only stacked up to two at some point. I don't know what happened there, but... <laughs> that was a full moon. Why do my nameplates sometimes disappear? I don't like that one bit. I'm sure that's a setting somewhere. Always show, there we go. I'm good, Magic, how are you? Dots just have no duration. I guess... I guess that talent was more impactful than I thought. No, wait, I already have it! What? Did they, like, nerf dot duration? Or maybe it's bugged. Maybe it doesn't extend? Wait, let's see. Uh, 11, 10. Oh, it does extend. I don't know. Fourteen point three seconds. Oh, it's because of circle and life and death, right? That's why. Like, that obviously also reduces the dot duration, right? Yeah, that's why. Because they do the damage faster, but then they obviously drop quicker as well. I mean, the reason I only have one point in circle is because it's bugged right now. Like, the next rank gives me nothing. It's the same with rank 1 versus rank 2. Also, how does Pulsar work? Like, I don't understand what the display means. Oh, it just shows me the amount of spells I casted? 
just four. I guess that is what that is what it shows. Seven eight. So if you cast Starfall, it counts as two spells. And if you cast Star Search, it counts as one. If you mouse over it, you still get the value. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's easier to understand this way, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I guess so. It's just one stack for 30 astral power. It's a bit weird, though. I mean, I guess? I, f I feel like it's almost more confusing this way. Or what do you think? Instead of showing the actual number of the astral power spent. I'm not the new race, I must send the Lari Munkin. What's up? Think it'll drag through Munkin. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah, I guess you just use a weak art to track it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It doesn't really matter if you just use a weak art anyway. I walked through my talents. Well, my talents are not like a proper build. I'm just testing out stuff. Yeah. Like I don't have a real reason behind what I'm playing. <laughs> I know, I'm just- I'm not very happy about the Moonkin tree, yeah? I think it's a bit, um... Questionable. To say it in a nice way. Yeah, I mean... Maybe it hasn't- Maybe it doesn't have necessarily something to do with the tree itself, but rather the fact that um, our starfall is still scuffed. And that automatically makes the tree feel worse. Also, do think our astral power generation is bad. I could try a build that like goes for mainly astral power stuff. Maybe that feels better. Especially because whenever we do dungeons, Things die really fast. Hmm. I mean, I could try that. The thing is, I just don't have enough points, right? I don't have a lot of points to spend, so... I mean, if I only care about astral power generation, then what would I even go? Thanks for the six months, Sammy. What's up? Since so she doesn't work. It's not implemented. Okay, let's see. So, we obviously need this. Nature's balance is astral power generation. Technically, force of nature and warrior of Luna are astral power generation. This you don't need. You also need this, and you also don't need this. Shooting stars gives me astral power. I hate the position of Star-Lord. Like, I hate that it's here. Because I want to go here. But I can only do that with this. Sucks a little. I mean, I kind of don't want to skill any of this, actually. I don't want Star-Lord, I don't want Power of Goldrin, and I also don't... I don't want this either. 
technically. But I mean, I'm gonna have to get through something. Thanks to 18 months, SDK, what's up? Oh, uh, alright, let's just go with- Well, actually, let's look at what we want. Umbral Infusion, I guess, would be nice. And this is Astral Power Generation, so that's nice. Convoke gives me Astral Power. Orbit Breaker is Astral Power. Onus is Astral Power. Time One Dream Binder as well. There's a lot of generators like down here, but I can't get more. Like I can't get all of them. I can maybe get one. <laughs> hmm. I just don't see how this is good though. I can see it being good, but only in combination with Primordial Mechanic Pulsar. But Pulsar is so expensive. I have to commit so many points. And this is also really expensive. Hmm. Yeah, you can't really get both. Yeah, I mean, if I had more points, it would be less scuffed, right? If I was higher level. Yeah, definitely slightly scuffed. Yeah, that's the thing, you can't do that. You can't go Fear Balloon and Orbit Breaker. Like, there, you just don't have enough points. No, we know that you get more points, because I'm only level 60, and you obviously can level to 70 in Dragonflight. You just can't level right now. Because, uh, like, the zones aren't enabled. So technically, you would have more points. Yeah, I also, I also think a lot of the talents down here are not that powerful. I don't think Orbit... It's weird that Astral Power Generators are considered like the most powerful thing. Especially because they, they don't scale very well with AoE. Right? I haven't looked at like all the other um, class trees. But it looks like a lot of the class trees have really powerful spells down here. Uh, well, a lot of the spells that we have are like more of an astral power generator thing, which, yeah, it's nice, but it doesn't do anything for AOE, right? Because I, I mean, obviously, Surfer doesn't stack, so it's just really weird. I don't know. I still want to try the the dot build though. What did I do last time? Oh, I removed this, right? And that? And then I went here. One point in this. One point in this. Yeah. Kind of want to try this in dungeons, just to see what happens. Hey, Cannon, what's up? No, you don't get 10 more points. The way the point system works is that when you level up, you get one point here. Then the next level, you get one point here. Next level, one point here. You know, like it alternates. It is hot. I'm definitely not sweating or anything. 
It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think you're you're correct with that statement, Wow Nature. Yeah. Like, it's incredibly hard or even impossible to get a certain combination of talents, which I guess there, it will always be impossible to get a certain combination of talents, but I think for Moonkin it specifically feels bad, especially because of... Um, they fixed it a little bit now because we'd only have two points in Stellar Inspiration and Umbo Intensity, but it's still um, like a decent amount of points to get to places, right? But we'll see ya. Pretty one degrees in the UK yesterday, oof. Yeah, I also didn't really, like... I also really dislike the talents as a whole, I agree with you. They're just two incredibly underwhelming talents that... No one really liked in the first place. And now, like, they are the main connector to the rest of the tree. At least to the rest of the middle of the tree, right? Which definitely seems a bit... Like, they're in a very, very important position for what they do. I wouldn't really know what else to put there. Yeah, I don't know. Bring back two piece. I mean, I personally really like two piece because it was so nice for Astral Power Generation. But I think two piece also created a lot of issues. So I understand why they don't want to bring it back. Like, it was mostly, like, a targeting issue, because it was just, like... Fear of a Loon is a spell that's attached to a target that you cannot, um, not have happen. So if you enter Lunar Eclipse, it will proc. And you can't stop it. Which does have its problems, right? Like, there was issues where it would break the sea. There was issues where... Uh, if you don't have a target while you trigger it, then where does it proc on, you know? Like, is it, like, gonna not proc at all, or is there a random target that it procs on? Like, I don't know, like, there was definitely some weird bugs and issues with it. And maybe they just didn't like that. Yeah, right, stuff like that, yeah. People's best talents change dramatically when new tier set bonus comes out. Can't get too antsy about it this early. Well, I, I think the reason why Moonkins complain a lot right now is not necessarily... Um, well, like the, the, the biggest problem with Moonkin is the fact that uh, our AoE feels really clunky because Starfall doesn't stack. And... We had this issue for the whole of Shadowlands already. Like, it actually has nothing to do with the talent tree. It already did in second Shadowlands, and it felt as clunky then as it does now. Um, in, like, AoE situations. But the problem is that this, this tree kind of emphasizes that issue because uh, Starfall has a lot of problems. The, like, Starfall does not stack, and that creates multiple issues. Number one, um, it doesn't... Like, we cannot use our astral power, our main, like, resource, right? So, a lot of the talents here in this talent tree interact with our astral power, with our resource. Um, so, if you want to go, if you want to go with an AoE spec, then a lot of the talents are kind of useless in a sense, because you can't do anything with the astral, astral power on AoE. So, a lot of the talents feel like, ugh, you know, it feels good for single target, because Astral Power is really good for single target. 
But for AoE, Astro Power is bad. And additionally, Starfall does not scale with haste at all. Uh, so there's a lot of there's some talents that give you haste. Like for example, Star Lord. <laughs> and Starfall doesn't scale with it. So it's like <laughs> you know. So I, I think the main issue that people are complaining about right now is not necessarily directly related to the talent tree, but rather the fact that Starfall doesn't stack. So it just creates this weird, weird issue where the whole tree just feels bad. Like, the talent tree feels bad for AoE. Because, yeah, because of all the things I just mentioned, right? <laughs> Hello, Aker. What's up? How are you doing? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, in DFA, Starfall felt really bad, but not because... Um, not because it didn't stack, but because it was really bad. In comparison to Star Search. So it had an it had a different issue back then. Star Search was just much more valuable than Starfall, so I never pressed it. Don't even think Starfall necessarily needs to stack. Just give it the devouring plague treatment, make it hasted, refresh the duration and recast, and add the damage of the last one to the new cast. Yeah, like, there technically is no reason for Starfall to stack because um, it's a buff on you. So it doesn't really matter if you have two up at the same time, or four, or five, or one, right? It does matter that um, you don't have another spell. Like, basically, Starfall could technically not stack, and they could just leave it the way it is, if we would have another possibility to use our astral power for other, for something else that does also AoE damage, right? I think that is that is the main problem. Because the only group. AoE spender that we have that uses our resource is Starfall. And Starfall doesn't stack. And once you have Starfall up already, you can't do anything else with your astral power. But, um, oh. But if you would have another spell, that also does AoE damage, that also costs Astro Power, then that would fix it, right? Like, for example, they could make our Star Surge do splash damage or something. Because then we press Starfall, and then whenever Starfall is already up, we press Star Surge, and then Star Surge splashes, right? And that would fix the problem. Or we could have a different spell that is a spender. Like, for example, Fear of a Loon. Technically, they could make Fury Balloon, instead of it being an Astro Power generator, it could cost Astro Power. So, if you spec Fury Balloon, you can spend your Astro Power on something that is not Starfall. And then it would also have to do more damage, of course, because right now it generates Astro Power, so it does, it does less damage because it gives you other resources already. So if it would cost Astro Power instead, it could just do more damage to compensate. Bring back Hurricane? Oh no, definitely don't bring back Hurricane. <laughs> Hurricane is a very bad spell. <laughs> Alright, let's test this uh, Spender build. Let's see how that works. Well, hello. Hello. Mm. Why is everyone playing Guardian Druid? Is that the only tank available or something? No, I mean, I did like three dungeons on my DK. So I just wanted to try Guardian now, so. Oh, okay, it's okay. The, it's the only one that's gotten new talents, right? DK. Only tank? Yeah. Oh, I guess the, no, DK, I forgot. Yeah, DK was. What if Starfall, Star Search extended the duration of Starfall? I mean, yeah. DQ got a lot of cool shit, though. Ish. Uh, I don't think that would. Wait, is this yeah, a did you, uh, I don't think that did helps you do, this uh, year because. Older Man yet, Nagura? Yeah, it, it's the dungeon, I guess. Yeah, I fucking hate that place. <laughs> yes, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's a dungeon, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a dungeon <laughs> I hope you don't get in season one. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, and plus not available right now. It's only normal mode, basically. Yeah. All right, let's see how this I goes. I need a big pool instead. I'm ready. Buff me up. Oh. Evokers, thank you. Doesn't look like a big pool. Too much going with these frontals. What happened to my dots? Oh my god, my dots don't stay up long. Is someone logging? Yep. Yeah, I think uh, Jeb is. Can you do like a bigger pull? I'm so ready. Can yeah. you do like a bigger yeah. pull? You fucking <laughs> coward. <laughs> Okay, I'm just dotting, guys. I'm just dotting. Only dots. We're playing dot build right now. This is just bad. Where are we going? Oh, I have a chain? I'll grab it, dude. On guard. Go for it. <laughs> Alright, pull for me. I can't go too far. Oh, did that work? <laughs> okay, it didn't work. Well, Yeah, something like that, Trudon, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I keep trying to loot. It's it's too much of a habit. Alright, Star we Search try, could uh, technically do something extra if Star Fox is already Nexus up. Here, right? And it shouldn't be because extending the problem with extending Starfall is the fact that Starfall has an inherent problem and it's the fact that the radius is so yeah, big. He's gonna stack up, bro. That the damage I'll that it backer. does That's your job. cannot be too high. Well, I need this guy to come back here. Otherwise, the I, I, I is obviously early. incredibly no! good Bro, Jeb, you're for trolling, things man. that are spread out. <laughs> He's uh. <laughs> so it automatically is the not so good actually does for so things much that are stacked up. Ridiculous. Right. And the only way to kind of solve that is by giving us something else that does stacked damage. You know, in addition to the starfall so being to, an uh, thing, uh, right? like a yeah. spread out thing. It's a massive so, pool right here. that was actually a really good idea with Star Search, I'm proccing, shooting Star Search, something on the close by targets, because then we, it would solve exactly that issue that we have with the with Starfall being too big of a radius for it to be balanceable properly. But yeah, like oh, basically that? it could Something? be anything. Oh, it's my like you could say, hey, if your Starfall is up and you cast Star Surge, it does splash damage. Or if your oh, Starfall is up when you cast up. Star Surge, then yeah. it makes shooting stars proc around the area. Or, the day only move like stuff like that. It even Starfall yeah. itself could even have splash damage, right? I'm pulling for you a bit. Yeah, I got the chain, dude. I'm ready to send it. You know, I'm you could say, it, um, these guys. I hate these mobs, dude. They don't fucking stack. Starfall does like a small AOE around the target that it hits or something. But that's more of a balancing issue, not the issue that we have with this. Uh, Swipe player. is bugged, bro. It doesn't go off when you press it. What? <laughs> yeah, these to You have to lost them, I guess. You wanna pull a boss? Go for it. Nah, let's kill this guy and then, because he does pull. Yeah, get him, dude. <laughs> How did this guy hit me? Could have dodged that, I guess. I need help. Yo, hit the spear. Do you, do you, do you want to try a double? Like we save for one more uh, chain and then try and send him? Oh, yeah, him. I got it. Alright, let's get two. Okay. Wait, one uh, fucking boss come here to stack the chains? Yeah, you guys have to go across the boss. Across the boss with the chain. Uh, I'm trying. Get the <laughs> chain in here. This is the random guy. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for 51, Wide Widow. What's up? Oh. Oh, 
Why am I not Echoing fucking critting? Echoing stars, what's that again? Do they scale my, oh my god, they scaled my stats. Oh, Wait, yeah, I see what it? you're saying. So mm -hmm. I can press? Split between all enemies. And increase and crit. Yeah, like I like 55. that, Ulsar. Because Power mm. of Goldrin is very single target, right? So if you could have a choice between either Goldrin or it interacting... This fucking... Yeah, I like that. Potion was giving me Ooh, 900 something idea. crit in org, and now it's giving me 42. Oh, that would be so fun as well. Like, you could have Power of Goldrin, which is a single target proc, but then you could also have it be, like, a second choice where Power of Goldrin okay, is an AOE. Okay, that's a fucking distance. Because we can't... No, or no, no, we see, need to go around, like, right? multiple, yeah, like, wolves... We can't get through this door. ...doing AOE damage? Yeah, or, like, an back, AOE the, effect or something, you know? Ooh, I like that. I'll give you a roar. So if Starfall is up and you cast Star Search, then Power of Goldrin always procs? And it does AoE damage right. on impact. What, what do I refresh That'd for be the cool, I think. Druid? With my ability. Like movement ability. Wait, what? When I refresh, like movement, movement abilities, what do you get? Um, I think sprint. Or is it roar? I don't know. Oh, roar. I mean, roar is not bad. I think There's it's no probably Sprint, for... because Roar is a talent, yeah. 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 Can we chain this? No. <laughs> yeah, it would be so fun to see, like, a, a Goldrin, like, just, like, a million of them shoot out. So you can I move him if I'm there? No. He just does not move, period. This guy seems to be evading. Yeah, I think he will snap, though. Hmm. He did last time. <laughs> this dungeon seems kind of fun, but I think... Hard to do a UE pulls here? Might be annoying eventually. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we can like line them though and stuff. I wanna see if I can walk past this guy without pulling. Nope. I'm a very heavy sleeper, I guess. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm pretty sure if a bear walked past me when I was asleep, I'd fucking notice. <laughs> <laughs> How are you so sure? I'm not, but I said I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Thanks for two you months, uh, Forge Druid. I do not no. <laughs> Which is probably why it would wake me the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Shit, I don't even have astral power for this hole. Dies too fast. Yeah, I popped the incarn there, so. I am out of range. Hey, that hurt. I have to put moon fires, but I don't want to. I'm playing a dot build, I have to press moon fire. Is that all, Jeb? Yep. Dude, I kind of want to not play this guy just to prove a point on the overall after the dungeon, you know. Wait, do you actually get points in the dungeon? No. How many talent points do you have? Like 60 or 65? I think you're missing... Like, if you were 70, I think you would have like 6 or 5 more. Yeah, but... Because people were playing with the first alpha build, and you were 65 then, right? But you or did remove them? I don't think you can get 65 now, can you? No. Oh. No. All right, Jeff, let's try this again. It's a lot of damage.
Guys, the Jesus, I think I can avoid that though for sure. Maybe I need to. Um, I mean, I can charge back to him. Oh my god, dude. What is that? <laughs> Jeb is dead. Okay, does Debuff actually persist through death? Yeah. That's interesting, huh. actually. What debuff? Overwhelming rage. It's my de it's my file. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Health inflicted, it's fine. Mm. Well, Pan, jump up on the edge real quick. Or somebody like jump up, up in the up edge here. Yeah. Can't. Can't get around that pat. Okay, never mind. Oh, you mean like this one? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Target. Broken class. <laughs> Man, I'm already annoyed. Like, the, all these evokers are just gonna carry me around everywhere without asking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope there's a glyph or something that can make yeah, them not silencing. do it. <laughs> it's really sound to work. They're gonna snap dude, watch. Right. It's lit. God oh, damn it, he just evaded my fucking <laughs> Surely they snap, right? And now I reset. Maybe Van Bo, yeah, maybe. Oh, big pull you down? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, big, big, big. level 70 in this dungeon, but you cannot use the points. It just doesn't work. Yeah, dude, this is it. Oh, here we go. Dude, uh, my dot build is not good for this pull. I don't think my dots are doing very much. Wait, this was 8.41 p.m. Or, wait, whatever. Whatever the log's gonna say, 41 something, right? We gotta check this pull. Yeah. I really wanted it. I didn't have, like, my two major cooldowns either. I think I slapped that pull. Did that pop Incarn? I popped Incarn and I'm sure I did no damage at all. Yeah. <laughs> is that red thing, is that your strap or speed? Me, uh... Well, you, you only have it just a deepest. Okay. I'm not even sure I should cast it without the proc. I, I agree, Clash. I really like the visuals. The dungeons, so the dungeon itself also re seems really nice. And That'd I really cool. love the evoker animations. They seem so cool. Some of the animations are a bit too much, though, I think. At least for me to see as a non-evoker, right? I think it's okay that they see it, but I don't think I have to see all of their animations. Especially, like, the red uh, AoE. That one seems a bit much. <laughs> I agree, Sleeping Lionhearts. Yeah, I agree. I think Onet still has an issue in itself, though, because Starfall doesn't right, stack. So, if, like, no matter what, because you, you can fix our AOE without needing Starfall to stack, I think. But I think Onet's intuition will always have an issue if Starfall doesn't stack. Oh, shit, I just lost. We have a hunter. Because if you spam, um, oh, <laughs> he's gonna be at the bottom, dude, for sure. Star Search, you will get free Starfall procs, right? And yeah, the fact that it doesn't stack is a bit uh, meh. Did you check the debuff? Did he take increased damage for like a brief moment there? I don't think he did. I need a weaker for this flask. 
No enemies or no friendly allies within 10 yards. Yeah, the problem with Onet's intuition though is that like it just... Like for it to feel good, you would have to generate more astral power, I think. Wow, look at that. Holy like, shit. I just don't think we Holy generate enough tech. astral power for Onet's to actually be good. Because Onet's is only a 20% chance per star search or per starfall. And I think the amount of star it's searches and starfalls we cast is pretty low. So even if you get a free cast once in a while, it just feels like... It just doesn't happen right, often enough. Home on Especially the, it doesn't happen often yeah, enough gym, to bro. counteract the, the stellar drift. Um, sure, he's gonna lost, right? Cooldown. And it, like I played it earlier and it felt like... No shot. I managed to counteract the stellar drift cooldown like twice in the whole dungeon or I'm something? not popping my CDs yet, I'll tell you that. Wait, why not? Yeah, it takes increased damage when you throw the gold on him. Like when you break the shield, he gets fucked up. All right, I like it. It's that gonna I'm happen when to uh, when speeds in 15 seconds. The boss is dead at that point. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Trust. I'm doing infinite damage. Oh shit! I press you gotta the right pick up the gold and then throw the gold on the boss to break the shield. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. One, all right. Okay, well that well, felt kind of bad to hold for it. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I got a crafting reagent. Let's go. <laughs> nice. Before I actually find gaining a sleep. Yo, send a log jib. We have to see this. Okay. I want to see my uptime on flask. What? <laughs> what is this shrinking? Oh, did I even flask? Uh, let's see, what... Where would the new shit in here be? Oh, I guess I can just go down, okay, 10... 952, 958... I really wonder about big pull-up, where you had in kind. Mm -hmm. I didn't have pull-up, yeah, yeah. I think I beat you. <laughs> Wait, I need, I need the locks? Where does the I'll new see. dungeon start? Wait, do I have to zone out of the dungeon for it to update? Maybe. Ah, shit. Someone link the locks? Hang on one sec. Um, I think maybe I did this wrong. I'll just re-upload everything and see what I get. I was I was not flashed by the way, Speed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't have flash because I was always in the middle. I tried to angle my... Breath. So I think the other fast is this fast is useless, like 10 yard. Yeah. I'm gonna swap to different one. What the fuck are the new. Alright, let's so see how this dot build works. Hey, Bishi, what's up? Uh, one of the dungeons computer. seems really nice, and the other one doesn't mm. seem very nice. The older man one is kind of meh. Logs, 1059. Wait. Oh, dude, I didn't have logging enabled. No, no. Because I swapped. Again. I forgot I logged out of the character and back onto it. Oh, I know. We don't have logs. I guess we're going to have to play the dot build one more time then. All right, is JVC ready, mate? Yeah, I get the PVC in. PVC. No beak. Is there something I should change? I don't think so, right? I think the keyboard is breaking. Did he ditch us? Yeah, I think we keep this. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't know what else to go with. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a drink real quick. Right I right. don't know how often Armor right. Breaker procced. A decent amount. It wasn't that bad. Oh yeah, the trinket. I could try that real quick. Let's see what it does. Critical strike increased by oh, 600. Here, here comes the gentleman. So I guess it's just some random buff. 
Oh my god, is it gonna be like... Quantum device or something? Actually, I think it's just gonna take the abilities that you get from the boss, right? Because on the boss, you get like three different gifts. And I think it's just gonna be one of those three, right? I think that would make sense. Oh, wait. What's this in the Larry ratio? <laughs> I honestly forgot. Oh. Is that it? Yo, Jeb, are you Have back? A chance to get crit? One of us. One of thank us. you so much for gifting us up to Corgi. Appreciate that, Anonymous. And thank you so much for the Prime sub, Unknown Gun Nut. Appreciate it. Hey, welcome to the game. Thank you, thank you. Oh, the passive frog. Oh, yeah, this is annoying. I'm just gonna keep the one that I have. It is what it is. I don't have flask or enchants or anything. I'm not sure if the other people have that, but I don't. I'm sure how important it is. Oh. Throw a crack in the chest again and a certain rod which would increase your... Ah. So the next time I use this trinket it's gonna give me verse? Or does this change all the time? I guess... I'm gonna go FK when I come back and see okay. if it changed. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna. You should set up a rogue jet. You like, think so? Huh? I want you to play Alba just to prove changed. that people above thirty can actually play it and be successful. You know? Oh yeah. yeah maybe, maybe in season four when we and do I upper Terra, I can break back out my rogue gameplay. Yeah, but that's assassination, not outlaw, bro. Yeah, but if you can play Sin, you can play outlaw. And I just me haste. Okay, cool. So you only want to use it when you have this technically, but that's too complicated. So I'm just gonna use it whenever. All right, all right, all right. All right, Jeff, are we logging or are you too old? <laughs> we enabled it. All right, good, nice. All right, we got the logs. Okay, this time I'm gonna dot more. The problem, the problem that I feel like I'm having is when I dot too much, then I just can't press starfall. <laughs> and that's a little bit of an issue. I also need to enter eclipse as well to get the damage bonus. Because if I'm not inside Eclipse, it's really bad, obviously. We need big pools. Oh, yeah. We need to shout these, bro. Yeah, shout <laughs> actually. Like chaining or dead fucking kill us? It was killing these. I mean, we could chain, I guess. No. Nah. Go. How big is this frontal? Let's see. Yeah, I avoided it here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess we need to line them. Oh, shit. Ah! <laughs> Try to get them in, dude. This is a moon can dream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Monkey's lost some damage here. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, actually. <laughs> Yo, get to PVC on Facebook or Discord. Well, I sent him the link, he's not joining, dude. Oh, he's AFK. Wait, is he act Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, this will oh, be yeah. an easy win for me. <laughs> yeah, this could be a long, long drink for him. I'm making GPC. Okay, dotting everything, dotting, dotting. Need to enter Eclipse though. I 
I didn't even realize, bro. Damn, nothing so much. But they just keep running out. Was it, where's the boss again? It was down here. Yeah, the this area is really annoying because nothing is grouped up. We can, we can uh, line up, dude. We could try. That item is still recharging. Yeah, we got a big chain. Wait, what's the range of thrash on uh, live? Do you know? No idea. Because with uh, I have two times that increase the range and it's 14 yards. Yeah, it's hmm. kind of sick. I think Nagura has tanked as a bear. <laughs> I have no idea. From time to time. Let's see, can we? Can I line this guy down? Or does he not care? If everyone lines, is he gone? Coming? Surely he has to come, right? He's channeling something. Oh, he's buffing a mob, yeah. Look like he's oh, coming. Okay. How the fuck is he? Oh, I don't think we're actually lining him. Yeah, I think Nagura is in there. Oh, oh yeah, he's coming now. Yeah, yeah, he comes first. It's like really awkward to line here, though. Yeah. I require a target. Can't believe we didn't pull the boss. Okay, try. Let's try saving two uh, two chains. Yeah. And then we break both at the same time. And see if that works. Oh, I got crit fuck. Yeah, okay. This is bleed. Okay, it's on the Gura. See, I managed to only get more. two stacks. I got this chain. So weird. Okay, go on her chain, and then I'll break. Get the, get the other one in as well. Like, move the chain to the boss. Move the crush him, yeah. Climb I thought it's done. Does it stack? No, it, no, it doesn't break until this one is over, right? After this one is always gonna break again. Yeah. I think. The fuck? Hmm. If I'm moving out and moving back in. I can't move the boss. There we go. <laughs> but how long is one amp? Is it like, uh,. Right now as well. Okay, you can chain it, look. But he doesn't have a debuff now. Oh, he does, he does, he does. He does, he does. It is 8 seconds. Oh, I should have used my so, tool mask. I also have damage increase. Fuck. I guess you want to do 2 in a row anyway, right? Because 8 seconds is not enough to like, yeah, yeah. do a big burn. But if you have 16 seconds, you get a lot more useful CDs, so... Oh, what is this trinket? Huh. Hmm. Oh, oh shit, I pulled. Wait, PVC is still AFK. Bro, he's inting our key. <laughs> Can't believe JP's just inting our key. He's just making macros. <laughs> is he actually? <laughs> no fucking way. I just opened the stream. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> JP's just sitting there making macros? Well, there's nothing else here. Man, I hate these mobs, dude. They're great. Keep them spread out. I mean, this this is for sure just gonna be like pull them and line angle. It has to be. This is too annoying. This is skipping these mobs. 
or these monsters. Yeah, but you could just like run with them and just line around the corner, right? I require a target. No fucking ways making macros, dude. That's Start so hard. Start in Legionist. He's perma tubbing between live and also <laughs> making macros. Yeah, I have to be able to skip this. Huh? Okay. This guy doesn't give a shit. Oh, wait, Lapa, Lapa, come back, come back. Can you stand next to this mob when I cast Slurring Fang? Do I heal you because there's no more enemy targets? No, no more. Do you what? Yeah, we did the other dungeon. We're not a fan, though. <laughs> oh, this is it, this is it. Moms are dying way too fast. I do not have a target. <laughs> this is just so unfortunate. Big funnel, dude. Uh, I require a. Hey, heal. Jeff, wake up. What? Wake up. Bro, you think... How do you think this pack's dying? <laughs> well, I am dying. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I'm glad JB is doing damage. While I'm healing myself. Can I blame Paladin from Season 1 for this? <laughs> Healers just want to do damage now. Circle. What am I doing? I'm just sitting here casting dots. <sighs> this is just so weird. Also, my wrath has such a long cast time. Alright, those macros better be fucking good. <laughs> Bet. I don't have cooldowns for this boss, unfortunately. Yeah. What is this might of the forge? Does it fuck us up? Yes. Oh, it does. That one is just AoE, I think. Is this fucking Painsmith or what? Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Oh my god, man. <laughs> oh god. Cast? God damn it. This mop is not dying. Thanks for three months, Hilda. What's up? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I might have not been looking. <laughs> that thing does a lot of damage, huh? Apparently so much does. Damage. Yeah. <laughs> he took like, way. How much damage she did not too? It, it is like 70% of my health. Bro, can I cast res while I'm moving? Wait, it hit what? me Why twice. That's, that's normal dungeon. Why dungeon. doesn't Hover not let me mass res while moving? In this current target, 
I guess it's like a tank thing. Seems, uh, uh, yeah, interesting. Oh yeah, it's gonna be hard. Wait, does Volcanic Axe, does it take a... Uh... No, it's not this end. She's a lot of damage. Oh, we're going the other direction this time. Yeah, we're trying uh, different stuff, bro. Oh. Spice it up, you know? Amazing. <laughs> eh, people are just gonna be picking me up the whole time without oh, no. asking me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I trust you, yeah? I don't you trust my uh, random healers and pugs. Yeah, whenever you use that spell, like, there needs to pop up, like, a, a button on your screen, like, do you allow this person to, like, bring you here? <laughs> you give consent. <laughs> also, I mean, healers probably know how to use this ability, right? But imagine a damage healer using this on another damage healer. Yo, Jeff, can you do this, this you guys? Do what? <laughs> Hey you Shadow, thank to... you so much for 15 months. What's up? <laughs> Poor yeah. phone, I know. I actually am curious stuff. what uh I noticed that all the Why mods in here are all giants, now. And I wonder if that's gonna fuck up CCs. It's so typical that I lost my phone. Oh yeah. Good point. Like, if anyone would lose my phone, it's I'll obviously. Just kill me. These guys. <laughs> fuck this. But oh well. We have cooldowns, we need to pull everything. Oh shit. <laughs> yes! Yo, big pull. So last the lamics are really bad oh. cooldown, yeah. Oh, shit. That is very Why do I never have a cooldown here? Poor planning. One heal! Alright, I definitely top VPS on this pack. No shot. Yeah. It was definitely not I me. It, I think it was Jeb, Shay. I think it was Jeb. <laughs> Dude, we're actually gonna finish this dungeon before he's even back. <laughs> oh man. Did they before this dungeon build is like really good or something? Uh, or the dot build, I mean? And we just blast new damage. I know it's not actually true. Is there potential but more? One, one can dream, right? Well, grab that, grab that. I'm gonna tag it in a second. All right. No, he, Jeb, heal me, dude. I'm fucking dead. <laughs> I'm waiting for us You're to not getting shit. heals, bro. None of us are. It's fine, I'm showing. Like, full more, bro. <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> dude, I'm, dude I'm, holding, I'm holding all the shit that's gonna heal you up till we pull everything. <laughs> okay. He's uh, he's got full DPS brain, bro. Ash and Hollow got the best of him. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta come back. Circle. Mount sprints are gone, but there's new stuff, dude. Is this circle like really broken? I think. It, no, I think it's average damage ish. But when you get proc, it swipes and more. Okay. You get proc by spending your uh, resource. Oh, we don't have cooldowns for this guy. <laughs> There's no shot is still doing macros, man. Holy fuck. Dude, you can't play it unless you're 21 nah, years CA old. Nah, CA is a really bad cooldown. Like, it's really bad. It's even bad in, in uh, Shadowlands, yeah? Like, it's a horrible city. Considering that it's literally three minutes. Like... <laughs> Is that it's really bad? It would be an okay cooldown if it was two minutes. And even then it wouldn't be very good. For a two minute cooldown I would say it's acceptable. That's a moon bait. <laughs> that was actually me. <laughs> uh. So this frontal, can he dodge it if it's on you or is it just I think so, yeah. Okay. I think he, he casts it and then you like he doesn't follow your position, so you ah, move now. I see. Mm. Ooh, ow! That wave does not work. I'm trying to dodge this. Mm. 
Yeah, I'm just pressing so many dots. Oh, I ran into him. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you're wiping, I guess? Jeb. Is there any way to get rid of those stacks, yes? It's gonna no. be a problem, right? Dude, ah, Austin... come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> so, off healing while doing damage on the Evoker DPS spec is insane. Hmm. I keep doing the same on healing everyone for 20k. <laughs> Hello, Faramon, what's up? I just released. Fuck you, you back. Oh, I'm lagging. What? Dude, I pressed disengage, I swear. What happened to my disengage? Okay, <laughs> Is I'm stream so lagging too? Everything's lagging. Thank you so much for getting us up to Faramon. How is my stream not lagging, but everything else lagging? I'm lagging. Yeah, he's ready for, uh... one thing hmm. for Weird. I guess my upload is fine, but my download's fucked? So my He isn't moving. He's like that. Thank you so much, Anonymous. Don't get far on Zayline, what's up? What is happening? That's still in my call for me on Dude, what is going on? These are words, I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm lagging everywhere. Well, everywhere except on stream, apparently. So that means my download's fucked. Right? What's going on? What? Aww. Can I go offline? <laughs> they actually sound really nice. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you downloading, though? Man, this whole downloading porn thing has to stop. You do understand it's 2022. No one's downloading porn. Nobody. <laughs> Like, oh, are you downloading porn? Are you lagging? <laughs> no! No one's downloading porn. In 2022. <laughs> that is honestly such a boomer <laughs> joke. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Dude, at some point you're gonna make this joke and no one's even gonna understand what you mean. You know? <laughs> like in 10 years you're gonna be like, oh, what are you downloading? And <laughs> all the young people are gonna be like, nothing? What do you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna be right back one second and hopefully I can fix the internet thing. So give me a sec. It is unbearable. It's unbearable. Is it? Can I get it unbearable? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it tells me I have five combo points all the time. I have no idea. 
wand. Oh, you can fix that, by the way, the components. Alright, you better be jogging, Lib. Oh, one more? I'm down. Yeah. Dude, off healing while doing damage is just straight up nuts. No, I, I don't think it does anything outside of the shield, by the way. Because I just tried. Yeah. But did you okay. keep it after the shield? <gasps> Avoidance! What? You got the you want this? God damn it! Uh, you wasted all your good luck? Yeah. Yo, Jeb, send a log. Alright, one sec. Yo, you can... Well, I you don't can think I was it. logging. No, no uh, Jeb, I mean, Jeb was. Jeb, Jeb, Jeb was. He better have okay. been. James, you can fix the comb points though. If you if you unselect the deeper stratagem and select again, it should be fixed. But I don't even have deeper stratagem on. Oh. <laughs> I'm playing single, oh, single deeper stratagem. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what? Whoa. All right. I don't know. Uh, yeah, don't. Uh... I think one in main tree should be. Speed, I think you're going to be upset with this. Look at the overall. Oh. Yo, JPC is not doing too hot. There's no way, right? Speed was top. By on on overall, by like 500k or by 500 DPS. But I didn't know about living flames. I was ignoring my uh, living uh, leaping flames rather. I was ignoring my living flame. Oh yeah, that's the whole combo: is you fire breath into into, yeah. into a living flame. Yeah. Okay, where are the locks? Wait, so where's oh, this uh, <laughs> this big incarn pool? We gotta find it. Oh no! <laughs> it was uh, we wait. We killed Chargath and we killed Forge Master, and it should be the shit after, right? Um. Oh god, I'm fucking lost. It's only one minute pool. No, I think it's twenty four seconds. Oh. Dude, it oh, was. The one where, dude, it was actually was much better. Because. The one than the other where ones. the healer topped by fucking double the <laughs> the DPS of the I second mean, highest. I mean, I did get out the BS by JB, but that doesn't matter. Wait, where's the pool? Which one is it? I think it. If it's the twenty-four second one, then it's the. Stop it! Let's go. <laughs> let's see. Damage done. What do we deal damage to? This is only damage to lava bears. There was, hey, there was more than one mob type in that pool, wasn't there? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's kind of got a missing lag. I gave you that There's no way I would have done four K DPS. JPC was making macros apparently, so he was AFK. Um. Oh, here's one where we were all doing twenty plus K DPS. Which on one the is that? 25 second pull, the spine crusher. My, these glasses don't have prescription. It, it must have been that, yeah. They're blue light filter glasses. Damn, you're fucking destroying that. Spine crusher. Hold up, which one? The 25 second pull. Oh, yeah, I see. I can't look yeah. in, though. Uh, Fire Breath's bugged at the moment. Mm. It's doing way too much damage for. Well, actually, my dust yeah, didn't see, even I do didn't that much damage. Slim at all. It was mainly Starfall, because. So 200k damage. I think yeah. it was because no, this, this um, Circle of Life and Death also buffed Starfall, right, I'm gonna right? stop here though. I'm gonna I'm pretty sure. get some food and raid. Alright. Right. GG's. GG's. I'm GGs. down to play tomorrow though. Yeah, I'll be is, it, is it just gonna be like a do fucking Notharis all over again? All day every day? Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> Lime. Cause yeah, man, don't worry. Man, that place is not a vibe. Just keep drawing Maybe we glasses. we can figure out how to snap shit in old man or something. <laughs> Damn, you're already great prepping for MDI, huh? I just want to make it interesting. Full Moon did more yeah. damage than Starfire. Well, I guess it didn't did press Starfire a lot. Yeah. Alright, well, it was fun. Thank you what for coming for one boss, James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? I mean, you guys can still play. <laughs> I'm, I need to go raid as well. You oh, know, okay. So. Alright. <clears throat> well, have fun. See you guys later. See you yeah, later. GG's. Peace out. Peace. Okay, is my character just bricked?
Or, <laughs> like, am I gonna be able to log on? <laughs> Hmm, question mark. Alta 4. Maybe if I log on a different character. I mean, I, I never minded to... Uh, New Moon talent, like as a talent. I never thought it was like exceptionally interesting, but I didn't mind like having it. I guess my internet is still shit. I don't know. Hmm. Speed test. Two hundred fifty MBS download. Hmm. I think that should be good enough to log into WoW. <laughs> Two hundred thirty-two Momodormo. What's up? Uh, it's weird. Can I log on to live servers? I do have to open my vault. I think I have a vault. Did I play M Plus on Wednesday? Last Wednesday? Huh, this does work. So this is something with Alpha. Well, let's open a vault and then uh, we'll try Alpha again. Okay, so I'm not lagging on live. So I guess because I was lagging or because the disconnect, uh, because the lag disconnected me, I can't log in again. Like maybe there's some bug going on. Thanks for a month. Wants it? What's up? Shit. That is the wrong item. Oh man, I don't think I can use a mastery crit ring. Uh, also can't really use this properly though. I mean, it's better than the one I have. But just stats, right? Hmm. Put a socket or something. What are they called again? Attendant. Let's go with a socket, I think. It is clear you it deserve would be my pleasure to assist. Okay, I think we put it on the avoidance ones. Because I, I think avoidance is better than any other braces I could get. And they have really good stats as well. Do you have a socket? A mastery one. What the fuck are you doing in retail? <laughs> good question. Wait, where do you buy suck? Oh, I think I, I think I know. 
Oh, uh, good luck with your vault, Bichu. Good luck, good luck. Hope your vault is better than mine. Oh wait, I might even have a druid vault. Cause I was doing some bosses on my druid. Oh my god, why can I not click on this? Oh, because it's hordes. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Alright, let's check this one as well. I think we're not raiding tomorrow. I think we're raiding Monday this week. <laughs> Prediction for Dragonflight in terms of balancing? And <laughs> like... I don't think <laughs> I don't think um, that is something you can predict, you know. In the end, balancing always just depends on numbers, and we don't know. Why, welcome, Tyler Moonkin. We don't know how they're gonna balance the numbers. Speed. I mean, sure. I guess. Wait, can I turn feed into different ones with the points? You can, right? What did I turn into? I'm checking. Thanks for Prime Sub Burritos. Also, do you keep tertiary stats? Yeah, right? Okay, let's check then. Maybe something better than this. Versa Mastery? Hmm. I mean, it's probably better than high versatility, low haste. Hmm. I can't believe I'm still wearing a 252 neck. <laughs> I do have to change that. It's crit mastery. Ugh. Yikes. How much crit? <laughs> oh. Oh, high crit. And yeah, then I'd rather have these. Yeah, that's messed up. Okay, we're logging back on Alpha, if it works. Did the times of the new raid run through Max is doing with the Alpha footage? Oh wait, there was a run through of the new raid? What the hell? Oh, just a visual walkthrough. Mm, okay. Let's look at it anyway, if it's loading. Man, I think there's something wrong with my internet. Like something very specific. Because I cannot look at this bot. And I can't log into alpha, but I can log into retail. Like, there's something very weird going on. I think. Hmm. 
Well, no, it's not a problem with alpha because I can also not look at a bot right now. I mean, it must be some weird internet specific thing. Hey, never knew. What's up? Huh. Well, that's weird. Yeah, I can't look at any bots. Can I watch YouTube videos? Hello. Yes, I can. Maybe my PC is dying. If only it would have plugged in a new one that stands behind me. <laughs> Max bent you and then you got banned from Elf. <laughs> that is the other explanation, yes. <laughs> What the hell? Yeah, maybe relaunching Chrome. Let me try a different browser. <laughs> Do I have a different browser? Edge. Microsoft Edge. There we go. Yeah. It's in light mode. Wait, there's a Discord link. Huh? Yeah, it doesn't work on Microsoft Edge either. Yeah, there's a very specific internet issue I have right now. Uh, showing you oh, a walkthrough of the raid, this is... No? <laughs> okay, somehow it worked. Okay, Microsoft Edge it is. It loads really slowly though, I think. Like, incredibly slowly. not on the wow tools thing i don't exactly know where this is but i know that uh that it it actually has all of the assets like it's it's already like totally complete we had kind of the wrong idea from wow tools okay wait uh let me move this over um oops Okay. Sorry, no, it's very bright. So let's uh let's go ahead and look at it. So you enter the raid right here. You walk in, you see this like giant like thing. Maybe it's gonna be some NPCs enough? here. Probably the person you're gonna talk to to do like the quest quest skip, I guess. Uh looking back at the entrance, that's like kind of where you zone in. Okay. Uh, and then just as we saw with the other video, you're gonna like fly all the way through up and through here. Don't know if it's gonna be a dragon riding thing or if it's gonna be a like flight path kind of, okay, kind that looks of thing. Okay, pretty cool. But you're gonna come down and land right here. And this is uh that this is the first boss room up here. The first guy you'll fight. Wait, this is the first boss room. Uh, and then oh. over through here, like obviously you're gonna have some trash here. A couple of doors, maybe trash comes out of it. Not sure right now. It doesn't look like it matters too much. This is the first boss room. First boss oh, is like pretty one. basic. Okay. There's a couple of things going on, but like the main one is like during an intermission, like some. Okay, wait a second. Question: Why does he have this info, or where did he get this from? Dungeon journal. The the raid bosses are in a dungeon journal. Like in on Alpha? Oh they are. Okay. And how did he get this video of the actual dungeon itself? Or the raid itself? Uh fire goes across the room. There's just like a couple of fire mechanics, but it is a boss that it appears like you hit the full time. I think there's some ads top of my head. Uh, I'm not like super 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 sure about that actually i should probably just open this and just like give myself a refresher before looking at it okay just so i can give you the most information also possible. someone like not like a lot though snuck like, less their than way two into minutes it per boss. like it wasn't supposed to be accessible 
Uh, collapsing, just, like, flow. Managed to get in there? Oh yeah, these are like you have or to. Was it a okay, leak? so like he puts like this fire around the room or something, and you can't allow the ads to actually touch them, and I think you can remove them, or they get removed by the intermission. I think is like kind of the idea for the fight. Uh, but it's just like a regular ass first boss, decently sized room. That is one of the later wing bosses. Uh, later in the raid, I'll kind of explain. It's the, actually like, uh, 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 maybe I should have drew it. It's pretty promising that they have the bosses decide already though, right? Because I'm pretty certain the last time we got Alpha for Shadowlands, we didn't actually have a dungeon journal or something for the new raids. For like, until we tested the bosses later on. Right? I mean, I don't, I don't know for sure. But like, this is really early Alpha, right? And I think in Shadowlands Alpha, we didn't, didn't have info on the raid or anything. So, <clears throat> I guess it's promising that they have the stuff already. So I will I'll actually do that real quick. It'll take me two seconds. Fire guy. <laughs> Taros. Or no, I think Taros is down this way. Yeah. You can choose Taros or Ice Spider Guy. And then also up here, it's it's very similar to Castle Nathria and uh, Sepulchre Pathing. Uh, so when you go to the left, you fight Council. The Microsoft budget seems to have helped, wow. And uh, you do understand that right it actually council, happened yet, yeah. You do one other boss. I don't remember exactly the name. Oh, do you actually just go Microsoft straight to Dathia and that's it? actually... We'll, do we'll, anything. Yes, you do. You do. Just yet. So, Council into Dathia. And then after both of these are done, minor you detail. then do... <laughs> er, let's see. Then you do Kurog sure, yeah, after detail. these are dead. Then you have uh, Brood Keeper as the second to last boss. And, and thank you, you so have, much, Microsoft. Uh, if this expansion is going to be a success, it's all going to be because of Bill. And then Bill. how those fit together as it goes thank this. Thank you, Bill. Linear Brood Keeper. Down here, you have two choices. You can do both of these immediately, <laughs> and then after they're both dead, you can do to Kurog, and then as soon as Kurog is dead, you go to Broodkeeper, and then you go to the last guy. That is the, the, One, the two, three, I don't four, know exactly five, six, which way he's going to go first, but that, that thing eight? you just saw above here, that is the Dathia platform, and you go there by, like, routing through the left. <laughs> if Dragonfly is a success, I'll start using Bing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it's not loading anymore. No. Oh. Hello, Mr. Internet. What's your problem? Uh, up that middle path that looks... Mm -hmm. I mean, I also kind of log into the game, which also sucks. Connecting. Hmm. Super epic right there. That is where the last two bosses are, but they most likely won't... This big stone door up here, it won't be available until those things are done. So he's going to go to the left side first. Uh, so this... Well, I guess we're going to pause this video so it can load. Because uh, we live in 2010. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I do think the lack of systems helped them in a sense, but then, like, how much really? Like, how, how death-intensive were the systems? Because you have to compare the systems to the, to the talent trees, right? And I have a feeling that the talent trees were actually more... Like, I think... It, took, it takes them longer to create the talent trees than it took them to create the whole soulbind system for all covenants. Because if you think about it, the soulbinds, they are all, like, they are for everyone. Like, they're the same for everyone. So yes, they had to create, like, all the soulbind traits and all that stuff, but all the soulbinds are the same for everyone. The only specific thing that you have for each spec is the covenant ability, 
and the conduits. And let's be honest here, the conduits are all kind of like boring and like, come on, like they weren't anything special, right? So yeah, they had to design the covenants, but it wasn't actually that much work, really. I mean, I don't want to say it wasn't a lot of work. I'm sure it was a lot of work. But in comparison to the talent trees, I don't think it was more work. It was probably less, even. I would say. Because the talents, they have to create for each individual spec. So that's 38, right? They have to create 38 individual talent trees. Talents are all still all things we already have, though. Not for every class, right? Some, some specs got additional things, like new spells and everything. Um, it is true that some of them got re like reused, but that doesn't really matter because um, you still have to like put them into a tree, which is a lot of work too. Like you have to understand where to put them, which talents are you gonna use, and so on, right? Mm -mm. And there's an entirely new class as well, right? Uh, Drakthir and Evoker, which probably took them a long time to create as well. So I don't know. Like I, I do think it's. Not necessarily less work for them, just because there's no borrowed power system. And you always have to think about the fact as well that because we don't have a borrowed power system, they probably need to come up with more content outside of it. Because the borrowed power system kept people entertained, in a sense. It's like you chase after things all the time. And now without a borrowed power system, they have to come up with other stuff to keep people entertained, like outside of power, right? So I assume they try to create more things outside of the power systems, like this whole system that they came up with, like the, the professions that they are um, looking a lot more into, right? So the professions they have to think about, all of this new stuff with that, um, with professions related things. And then they also have this whole like renown system for factions which is something that also is basically a borrowed power system without borrowed power, right? Like, I think there's just a, there's still, like, a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't think they put less time and effort into this expansion compared to the other ones. I think it's literally, like, the same for them. It's just focusing on different things, right? Because um, in the end, it's all about budget, right? And I don't think they had less budget for Dragonflight than they had for Shadowlands. So in the end, it's going to be the same amount of work for them, just focused on different stuff. This is the council fight. Uh, you're going to have four different bosses here. They all interact with each other. Basically, the idea of the fight, uh, two of them are tanked. I believe it is the fire mob and the earth mob. Uh, and then the council uh... fight? Ooh. Oh, come on. <laughs> Dude, what? I let it load for so long. What is this? Do you hear the, the music, by the way? Like, there's a concert or something outside. It seems like. There's people playing, like, trumpets and um, stuff. I can't think of any other words. <laughs> Only trumpets. No, it's not the trumpet player that lives in this apartment building. It's an actual, like, whole thing. <laughs> well, actually, maybe it's the same trumpet player and he's playing with them. I mean, that's also possible. <laughs> the neighbor brought his bed. <laughs> nah, it's just my internet. My internet's fucked. There's something wrong with it. Oh, this is just unfortunate, isn't it? Can't play alpha. Can't react to con Well, we could react to a YouTube video, actually, because YouTube works. So give me a YouTube video to watch. <laughs> Anything alpha related. Sorry, Max, but maybe if you upload it to YouTube, then I can watch it. Let's see him. <clears throat> Drak 
the year evokers are broken because there's so many people who made uh, evoker clickbait videos i love it and all of them are popping off uh, frost and lightning mob uh for council kind of like big thank you so much for gifting a three month start to word or thank you so much to thousand <laughs> what the hell thank you Okay, you want to watch an evoker video or something? Corral has a lot of views. Or we can watch the Asmogold video. Looks like he's just in character creation. Oh wait, didn't Max make a video about... They asked for my... Oh, that's I don't what know we're going to watch. Heard me talk about, like, how this is a very long video, though. A few of you guys have done. We're like, only going to watch it until discussions. Uh, Alpha works actually, again. Actually, I think only Growl has, but, like, I think. Is this loud enough? It seems now. really quiet. But Evoker's, like, very, very different. Thanks for 19 months, Reelings. What's up? It's kind of hard to separate the class tree from the actual class because you're just getting. Okay, that's good time. and so bad, bad news, Reelings. It sucks that you can't watch as much anymore. Just like we normally do, but I think before we do that. We Congrats on your promotion. That's awesome. I'm a boss lady now. Let's go. Before we get into the actual talents and talk about decision That's making, amazing. Congrats. That's awesome to hear. They have, uh, their power level I'm also ready for like Dragon that. Time. Obviously balancing like how they're currently tuned versus There's a new like, Morgan Day interview? Everything is tuned to a normal level with the class. Oh, I should watch that then. Who did the interview? Who did the interview? Was it just like a no, like no one? Hello, everyone, internet. Welcome uh, to a very special video show was it episode. Uh, we have Morgan Day, uh, associate. What is your title, um, Morgan? These days, I, I, you oh, okay, so five different ones on Google. I'm sorry. Yeah, my title is Associate Game Director. Associate Game Director. Yeah, I thought that was the best one that I managed to find. So I will <laughs> mention it just in case, you know, the worst Is it loud enough? It's fun. Like, you know, it'd be really awkward. But uh, Associate Game Director of World of Warcraft and this time of alphas and new things and excitement. Um, and he's going to be answering okay. all of our questions today. Uh, so thank you so much for being here, Morgan. I've got to say, um, whenever there's any new content drop at all, and these interviews start, you are always out. I really like like the way Morgan Day does interviews. I feel like he's he just seems kind of chill, you know? And like sometimes he will say a thing where people take out their pitchforks and whatever. And I hope people don't turn him into like a super politically, like perfectly correct person that always like watches out how exactly they're gonna talk about certain things to not promise anything because I, I feel like ian um definitely turned into a person a bit because i mean I, I can't blame him right because if you do interviews and people constantly like nitpick every single word that you say it's like you promised us this or you said that you know and then eventually you're just gonna be very careful to what you're gonna say right and I think Morgan Day is not at that point yet. <laughs> like, I think Morgan Day definitely sometimes says a thing or two where uh, you're like, okay, maybe people are gonna like talk about what he just said later on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and I think it's cool because I don't think like the, the Warcraft community can be like incredibly fucking toxic and people don't think logically sometimes and they will just like take every single word someone said and like word for word like say you said that you know and i think that sucks because it, it makes those kind of people 
have to worry so much about what they say. And that creates this kind of problem that we have in WoW where uh, we feel like there's not a lot of transparency. Like, we feel like they don't talk enough to us. Well, and can you blame them when every time they do talk to us, we do this whole thing where we, you know, nitpick everything? At that point, it's, like, really exhausting to, to have any kind of interviews or whatnot, right? So that's why I think... That's why I always, like, really hate it when people, like, look at an interview and, you know, say, oh, this guy said this, right? And the same thing happened with a Morgan Day interview, in fact, um, about Sir Earth Mortis. Because Morgan Day was saying in an interview that the catalyst or the creation catalyst in Sir Earth Mortis is not related to player power. He said that in an interview and people thought that he meant that Sereth Mortis as a whole is not going to be related to, to player power. But he didn't actually say that in the interview. People just assumed that he meant that. Um, so people were like taking the interview and completely misinterpreting it. And then they were blaming Morgan Day and said he was lying. Like, he basically said, Morgan Day was lying in the interview. He said there was no borrowed power. When he, in fact, just said there was no borrowed power in the catalyst, which was true, right? So, it's like, we don't want to discourage these kind of people to talk to us and, like, don't make it all, like, a lawyer speech or whatever. So... Up there on the front lines, <laughs> uh, doing just so many interviews. Yours is the face I, I see more than any, so thank you for your service. Uh, You're welcome. I, I go where I'm pointed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two days after Dragon Riding was announced, people said, What the hell, Bliss? You said it, I'd have flying from the start. Yeah, because when they announced Dragonfly, they had this whole like video, and they specifically said that Dragon Flying is not normal flying. But people somehow completely like forgot about that part or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm always happy. To, I'm always happy to hang out and talk. That's awesome. Thank you. So I've been playing. Um, me and Evie have been playing the the alpha mm -hmm. for the last couple of days. Uh, sort of adventuring through the Azur span and uh, playing with Drakthir and dragon riding. Uh, dragon riding, at the moment. Yeah, people only hear what they want to hear. Literally one of the best yeah. things that's ever happened to the game it's even in this kind of early form it's an absolute I triumph really like i dragon think it's going to kind of revolutionize kind really of minute nice. to minute gameplay in, in dragonflight it, it's it's that good um yeah it's it's super fun i always like to you know kind of think about how much it changes just your questing experience right like so much of questing and leveling in world of warcraft is like all right well i'm gonna aim towards the quest marker <laughs> yeah, and hit money. auto run and just kind of go versus dragon riding a huge part of our goal was to really kind of lean into like the joy of motion and create movement around world of warcraft so much so much more engaging you know and with dragon isles the zones themselves are gigantic i'm sure you've seen there i think it's one of the largest um expansion continents that we've ever released and as you run around the zones you can really get a sense of that so rather than like kind of running in a straight line towards my quest objective it's so much more interesting being like oh there's a big hill over there let me like veer off this path and jump off the hill and see if i can get some speed uh, so it really changes the way that you just kind of interact with the world yeah uh, i've heard big wigs. something to be enjoyed like part of the, the fun part of the loop as opposed to something whatever. to kind of like avoid or get out of the way which I think with, is amazing. I um the iteration we've seen of dragonflight at the moment uh i guess is sort of halfway through the leveling experience when we start in as a span it's like the third zone and, and so by the time we finish we've got uh three abilities um uh sort of movement abilities with the drakes and we've got three vigor charges um what is that UI going to look like by the end of the first patch of Dragonflight? As we go into sort of 9.1, what state are the Drake are really abilities and, and, and efficiency of movement? Oh man, gonna, that gonna sucks like? a little, I guess. Yeah, so there will I, absolutely be... The thing about... like, I personally like Lightning and Thunder a lot. Uh, because it feels so much more chill when you're in size. <laughs> I s <laughs> My Here's the thing, right? If I could choose the weather all the time, like I could literally just like change the weather, then I would make it warm when I leave the house because I want to go around with like short sleeves and like 
chill. Not too hot though, just warm, you know? And then when I, inside my house, I want it to be like cold outside, like snowy. Like it's snowing, there's snow everywhere, it's like minus 20 degrees or whatever, you know? Because when you're inside the house, it is so much nicer when it's cold outside. And then you have like candles and you have like a, a warm water bottle and like a blanket, you know? But whenever I do leave the house, I do want it to be warm. Like, could you imagine how cool that would be? It's like whenever you're inside a building, it's just like snowy outside. And whenever you leave, it's just like warm. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, hey, Tango, what's up? Thank you so much for 20 months. Oh, how are you doing? <laughs> No, but an, an AC is not the same thing. Like, I want it to be cold outside so it feels cozy inside. It's the same as when it's thunder and rain outside. It just feels cozy inside, you know? Because you know it's really bad outside. So it feels better that you're inside. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> it's about, like, it has to actually be cold outside. AC is not the same. <laughs> Kind of like a progression of what your dragon riding looks like like you mentioned you you are currently looking at it in the azure span and you'll actually be introduced to it in the very first zone the forbidden reach pretty early on as well um and as you're questing it won't change too much at, through the level up experience it's really at the max level where you'll you'll get to um, be introduced to some customization options like a talent tree essentially like a specialization tree of what you want to yep. do um, and yeah there will be lots of options in there that are still being iterated on but not only will you get new abilities like you mentioned you kind of have the three right now it is a mental almost state, one, like, yes. ability that's literally just like do a barrel roll like just just let that me doesn't like, work, never do did. a barrel roll um, but there's a lot of fun ones one of my favorites that we're experimenting with that's an available option is the ability to kind of like it's almost like a bronze dragon themed ability where you can kind of warp back to a starting point where you push the button, you move around, and then you can warp back. Um, oh. So lots of fun uh, okay. options that there, cool. as well as things like, you know, giving you additional vigor, increasing re vigor regeneration rates, um, things like that. And for people who aren't aware, you know, vigor is kind of the resource as you're traveling around on your dragon riding mount um, that you can use to use abilities. Um, and there's a lot of really fun mastery there also where like, um, you know, if you get to a certain speed, like all these effects turn on and the sound changes and you actually start to regenerate your vigor while you're in the air, which the is super cool. is immense. And like, yeah. I really like how so much of the questing, uh, you'll do a big kind of quest chain or whatever, and it will always leave you at the top of somewhere really, really high up. And they're like, yeah, okay, we'll meet you at the other side of the map. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah. And you launch I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. <laughs> Not um, a coincidence. <laughs> so to clarify, um, the, the kind of setup as it is now in this first build, I've made choices to, to have it like it is in the alpha now. Is that what you're saying? Sort of I've chosen well, those abilities and... Um, well, I mean, obviously this is always subject to change, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that through level up, everyone will have the same experience with their dragon riding. And then at max level, some additional options start to open up. Um, okay. And we really wanted to lean into like the mastery element of this, right? Like the joy of movement, feeling like there's some mastery to moving around the world. Um, and also like introducing activities. I'm not sure if you even saw them, but there's some like time trial type things that you might Such run into as you're as you're Such leveling up time trial. um and of course we're talking about like well what if we could do like races like i can race other players and have some That's fun stuff nice. there and show off my customization options so um really want to open that system Ooh, up you know you what you could level. do with this that's really really cool um and i like i say i think it's you could <laughs> you could do shit what's the game called where you have the cars and you play football well soccer european football Non-American football. Rocket League! You can play Rocket League with the dragons. <laughs> yes! An amazing feature, uh, and I'm really excited to see sort of how much further it goes. But even now, sort of halfway through leveling, it's kind of changed the game, and it is that kind of just joy in, in game from one place to the other. I'm not so, going to have the soccer congrats. versus football. Um, thank you. <laughs> Basically, it's just awesome. any chance Again, we can name our dragons. Call it whatever the fuck you want, and I'm calling oh, it whatever the fuck I want. Cool. Okay. Now shut the really fuck cool. up. And there's like how to. Uh, a personal kind of ownership over these drakes, which I really, really like. Uh, and they currently don't have names, like the artifacts did in, in Legion or something, and that, that was really cool. 
Uh, that is a great idea. I don't. You're a I don't know. Uh, I can see the quest now, like how to name your dragon or whatever. Like, it just kind of writes itself. But <laughs> I'm not sure if that's an option. That's a really cool idea. <laughs> not the toxic um, one. I will make sure to take that to the team. Like, you know, we're still in early, um, early alpha. Like, we're not even out to the public yet, which you know is hopefully soon TM. So there's definitely a ton of feedback that we're looking to get, and that feedback we're really looking to inform a lot of the, deci the decisions that we make and kind of some of the tree of okay do we want to focus on this part of the dragon riding or this part and that feedback would really help that so if there's a lot of people that want to name their dragon let us know uh does that mean that dragon progress is account i do want to name my dragon in terms of uh, vigor and level ups and things like that uh yeah you know with our kind of alt uh philosophy that's changed a lot over the course of the last okay they definitely have to make like come on they have to do a train your dragon thing. Like, there's no way they cannot do that, right? That kind of the thing they had in Final Fantasy XIV, where you have your, what is it called? Chocobo uh, thing? Where you, like, get one and, like, you know. I think they need something like that for the dragons, too, right? It's like you find an axe somewhere, and then you can hatch it. We need to bring it somewhere, I need to do some quests, and you need to bring it stuff every day, and then it hatches, and then it's like a small, tiny dragon, and then you teach it things and stuff, and then you give it a name, and then you just like, you know, it's like your own dragon. They have to do that. A couple years, I'm so sure cute. a lot of people have seen with 915. We really I would kind of grow took, my a, own took a huge step thing. back and kind of revisited what our philosophies there were in terms of all things and things that were for specific characters. Um, you know, we you, we got Did to apply those philosophies you, in you know, well, most they have update, to do it again because now we can actually use the and dragon and ride the dragon. There's a whole so that's lot different. more kind of catch up and early, early alt um, friendly mechanics out the gate. So we definitely have talked about that across all of our systems in Dragonflight and which portions of them will be something that will be account wide versus character specific <laughs> um for for dragon flight or sorry for dragon riding in particular um you know because it's a mount mounts are very much so account wide so a lot of the customization options in terms of the look are very much something that we've talked about being uh rewarded for your account there and for the actual abilities themselves you know that's something that we're still discussing um and flying around the dragon isles obviously um there's been talk of a, uh, a new kind of expanded draw distance uh, on the Dragon Isles, is that in place right now? And will it be just the Dragon Isles, or, or will it be kind of rolled out across the game? Yeah, so that's something you know that that we mentioned where these zones are so humongous and vast and you know computers uh are constantly getting more and more powerful so we always want to kind of lean into the technology there uh, currently that's something that is controlled on a per zone basis so with uh the launch of dragon flight and the dragon isles that's something that we'll have on the dragon isles zones in particular and we're gonna we're gonna start there and experiment with that and see how that goes and then you know certainly we're open to expanding that to other zones in the future like it would you know always be fun to sit and Dalaran and see how far you can see, you know, sitting on top of the Broken Isles. I will not be satisfied until I'm sitting in Stormwind and I can see the sword in Silithus. That's when I've just gone far enough. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> um, okay, and, and the Drat Fear as well. Uh, Wait, I didn't understand that. What did he um, mean? As, like, I don't understand what he means. Well, the new draw, draw distance. Oh, like how far you can see. Wind, ah, and I can see the I sword see, in see, Silithus. See. Yeah, okay, I, I see where he's going with that. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cute. Um, okay, and, and the Drat Fear as well, uh, something that we've been um, sort of looking at and, and playing with. Um, the sort of minute-to-minute -minute questing gameplay with Drat Fear is really interesting. It's got a very kind of thrusting sort of moveset and kind of front-loaded abilities without much kind of ramp up, so it's really fun for questing. Um, obviously, it's quite hard to test it in any kind of group environment at the moment. Um, so... As a designer, a uh, group of designers, where do you see uh, the Evokers kind of niche being in group content, both as a DPS and a healer? What, what will they excel at? What kind of situation would they do well in, do you think? Yeah, so, you know, very early on when we we're talking about the Drakthir, um, you know, just thinking about the fantasy of a dragon and what that would mean. Um, we were always kind of thinking about, you know, in movies or any kind of fantasy, you always see, like, you know, before a dragon takes off, they don't, like, 
instantly kind of zip off like a superhero. They have this like um, kind of big motion where they duck down and then build the strength and then take off. Yeah, that so it's looks really, really powerful. Cool. So we wanted to lean into that Big fan. from a um, gameplay perspective Me too. as well. So we introduced Sega. this new Me too, mechanic, um, this kind of empowered you just seem so excited about things, where you right? can hold down a button. Like, I, I, think, uh, I think Morgan Day definitely seems like very passionate. I mean, that could just be... Like, I don't know if this is true, right? Maybe Morgan Day fucking hates World of Warcraft. <laughs> and he's just like, that's just the way he speaks about stuff, you know? <laughs> but it seems like he's really excited, right? And I like that. Because <laughs> there's other people who are super passionate about things and super excited about things, and you just don't see it in their body language at all. It's like some people just talk differently, right? <laughs> but I do think uh, it seems that way, at least, that he's really excited about stuff. The way he, and like, your abilities have multiple stuff, stages. So, nice. <laughs> um, so that will essentially sure really lean into like, <laughs> no, potential burst elements, like a bursting AoE for genuine. the damage yeah. dealing um, uh, devastation spec. Or for preservation, they're really good at clump and also those big heals that kind of pay, pay off that planning. Um, but also, you know, the thing that we wanted That's to true. lean into really with the draft there was this idea their of creations and the stuff, hybridity and, ideas, and nice. um, kind of group stuff. utility and helping out their friends. Um, there's a lot of really cool abilities that I'm sure you've seen in their um, their core class talent tree. Um, you know, some of my favorites, just to pick a few, are like, you know, they have an ability called like a pressing roar um, that when you use it on a pack, uh, increases the duration of crowd control on everything in the pack. So like, you can really set up some interesting combos um, as well as really help your, your party out with um, different kind of buffs. Like another really fun one is, um, uh, I think it's called Time Spiral, um, where it actually lets everyone in your group use their like cooldown, their ab uh, mobility cooldown, even if it's on cooldown. So like if you're you just blinked as a mage and you have a drag there in the group, they can time spiral and then you can blink again. So a whole lot of like mm -hmm. kind of helping your group out with that group utility. Yeah, I like um, that. That's a really things cool. Things along those lines was a major focus. The only ours. thing I already said this before, but I think like I'm not. Sure, they said something about. Okay, so, like, I'm gonna have to, like, roll back a little bit, like, just bigger picture. Um, I think there's a bunch of abilities in World of Warcraft that cannot be implemented properly into the game because it's visually problematic to see if you don't have weak or us. And that is, like, a very interesting problem because almost everyone plays with weak or us, right? But at the same time, you don't want to create, like, abilities and stuff that you need a weak or a for, Especially if it's, like, class-related. If it's boss-related, that's a different kind of story, right? But if it's class-related, like, if your own class's ability is not really visible without a weak aura, then that is a problem. And they are aware of that, but we as players never really consider that issue very much, right? Because everyone knows, oh, you can just make a weak aura for this, right? So, like, no one thinks of it as a problem, but they definitely have to think about that as a problem, right? Um, so I think they talked about this when they announced the UI rework. Actually, I'm not sure if it was during their UI rework or if it was with, during the Ian interview with Asmongold. But he basically said that they want to improve their, like, the resource bar or something. Um, so you can customize it more to see, like, buffs or debuffs or something like that. So basically have weaker us, but as like a baseline UI element. Because if they would do that, if they would implement it with the resource bar as like a baseline UI element, then they don't have to worry about that so much anymore. Like they don't have to worry about creating mechanics and abilities that are easily visible without weaker us because you have in built in weaker us at that point, right? And then if they would do that additionally, they could even like um, they could even say, okay, weak or us are not allowed anymore because we have built in weak or us, and then they, they can really restrict them then, right? Because the problem with weak or us right now is that you can do everything with them, and they have a really hard time restricting it. But if they make their own weak or us, then they can do restrict whatever they want, right? And that would solve some of the issues as well that we have with weak or us, where people think that add-ons are too powerful, right? And then additionally, uh, <laughs> because... Um, we were just talking about um, the, the like buff that he, that Morgan Day mentioned that um, Drakthir have or Evokers have. 
uh, where whenever they use the ability, it's very similar to some symbol of hope, where um, if you're if the evoker uses the spell, then you can use your movement ability and it will not go on cooldown, or you can use it even if it is on cooldown, like a mage blink, right? And the problem that I saw in game is that it's really hard to know when that is active, right? Like, uh, same thing with Symbol of Hope as well, I think. Like, sometimes there's these kind of group buffs that are really crucial to know that they're going on right now. Um, but if you don't have a super easy-to-see visual, then it's kind of hard to, to make it work. Obviously, everyone's going to make a weaker for it, right? But what if you don't have the weaker us, right? What if you don't want to use weaker us? Then that's messed up. Similar example is Bloodlust. Bloodlust is a group-wide buff that is really important to know that it's going on. Um, but Bloodlust has a really big visual, right? Every player becomes bigger, and you have like this really big icon over your head. But if a priest uses Symbol of Hope, you would kind of like to use your defensives to make sure it gets reset right? But Symbol of Hope doesn't have like a really big visual on your character. So if you don't have a weak aura that tells you that a priest is using Symbol of Hope, then you don't see it that well. And same goes, in my opinion, with that mechanic that the evokers have. If the evoker uses that ability that lets you reset your movement cooldowns, it's hard to see, really. And if you miss the window, then you don't get like, the, the reduction properly, right? Which, at least you can't optimize it perfectly, which I think is a little bit of an issue, which hopefully gets resolved with whatever they're planning with the whole resource bar thing. I, I also think, earlier I said that I think most people are using weak graphs, and I'm not sure if that is true. I do think that a lot of people are using weak graphs, but I'm not sure if, like, if the majority is. It's really hard to tell, really. Like, those kind of questions are really hard to, to know. I think almost all raiders are using Weakeras for sure. I don't think anyone that is not doing uh, high-end content is using Weakeras though, right? Like, I think Weakeras are a very specific thing for raiding and for... Um, like higher and plus, right? I think someone who only farms transmogs is not going to use weaker us. Like what? What for? Right? And I guess weaker us also started happening a lot more in PvP now. So a lot of PvP players are also using weaker us nowadays. But yeah, anyone who is not in any sort of like high end scene, anyone who's not raiding or and plusing or high end PvPing, they probably don't use it. But then at the same time, I, I, I ask myself how much of the player base is not doing any of those things properly. Like, I'm not sure how, how large the amount of players is that is not doing any of that content. I, I couldn't tell you a number. I would probably say like t between t 10 and 20% maybe? Is not doing any of that stuff? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, that's just like a completely like random guess. Because I would say the majority of the players is definitely doing some of the stuff, right? Because it's a big part of the game. So 10 to 20% seems like about right, but... Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, cause I've, been, I've been writing a list of all those types of abilities for another video, obviously. And um, mm -hmm. it's not... A support class like a you think 80 percent of the flavor is not using weak grass no way no, no 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 it can't be that high i don't think so like that's way too high 80 percent. i think that's too high i think 80 percent is just too high You're only looking at a person. No, I'm not only. No, 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 no. Like I obviously consider everyone that is playing the game, but don't you think that almost every person that rates uses weaker us? Like n not like an LFR raider, and maybe also not a normal mode raider, but I think most people that are raiding are probably using weaker us now. 
like reading in a like as like you know like a proper part of their gaming experience or wow experience only mythic no fucking way <laughs> you're telling me heroic graders and stuff don't use weaker ups like that's i don't think that's true DVM is enough, you don't need to... No, I'm not saying that you need weaker as for raiding. Well, it doesn't matter, like, okay. Weaker as is, I mean, weaker is like all of your UI, yeah? Like, weaker basically is your whole UI. But anyway, let's let's take a different add-on then. Let's take details or, or like, big wigs. Like, I personally took weaker as an example because I think weaker as is the most important add-on. Uh, cause you can literally make big wigs out of weak grass. So I took weak grass as an example, but, uh, you can also like talk about, um, big wigs, I guess. Like, which raider doesn't have a raid mod or like details or something? Like it has to be like basically almost everyone, almost all the raiders, right? I think so at least. But yeah, I, I guess weak is a bit more specific. Yeah, maybe some people only use, like, DBM or whatever. Or big wigs and whatnot. And don't necessarily use weaker S. I guess we can look at the downloads. It would be an interesting... Okay. I do kind of want to check um, the downloads. Let's see. It says here... It says... Does it not say here? How many people, like, used that on? Okay, so DBM is 381 million... Y'all. Mm, details is 111. Dude, that's interesting as well. Like, DBM is 381 million and details only 111. Like, that's that's a big difference. Weakers is more than details. 122. I guess it's because some people use different damage meters. I guess some people use, like, recount or whatever. <laughs> Or Skada, or I don't know. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Huh. Okay, so it's... Radar Ayo. 2 to 3 million Radar Ayo? Huh. Okay, that's, that's a lot more than I thought. I thought there was no way more people have Radar Ayo. Oh, I, I mean... I guess... I guess a lot more people play in Plus than... I mean... I, that is a lot. Three to three million. Hmm. But yeah, I guess it makes sense that DBM is like the highest. Oh yeah, Recon is 115 million. And 111 is details. So Weakeress is like the, the... The third most downloaded add-on. No, the fourth. Number one is boss mods. Number two is um, damage meters. Number three is radar. And number four is weaker us. I'm very confused about the radar arrow thing. Like that seems that seems like way too much. I wonder if that number is inflated somehow. For some reason. Oh, I see. Okay, I guess it makes sense because radar AO needs to be updated like a lot. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the radar arrow is just like very inflated. Ah, uh, I see. Because weaker as you only download one single time. Right? And then you update it like every blue moon. I guess same with DBM as well. While radar you have to update all the time. And same with details, you like barely ever have to upload it. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I mean, I did kind of think it would be this way. Like, it makes sense that DBM is like the most. And then damage meters and then weaker as. That, that makes some, sense. But it's not not a support class. <laughs> you you know? noticed that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So I've been, I've been writing a list of all those types of abilities for another video, obviously, and mm -hmm. um, it's not a support class, like a bard or something, but it's not not a support class. <laughs>
<laughs> you noticed that, huh? It's every yeah, yeah, person, I, I not cartoon. Get one, as a discipline free you you get a pocket drag theater to feed me mana. Like, um, the actual the software, through. right? And also sort of exploring um, the Azure span. La- download we think we found times uh, two for each tune. dungeon entrances. One in the Tuscar village on the south coast and, and one up by the Azure... Uh, what's it called? The Azure archives. Um, is there anything you can tell us about those dungeons? Because we actually don't know anything about any of the dungeons. So Are these far. the dungeons um, that we tested? Any kind of fun bosses that you can tell us about, or sort of moments in those dungeons that you've been working on? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so uh, you did. <laughs> there are two. There are two dungeons. Um, not not too dissimilar from what we've seen in, in past yeah, I think expansions. Different where there's dungeons. a level of dungeon that is associated with each zone. The one that you're going to come across in the Azure Span uh, is Brackenhide Hollow. Um, okay. I'm slight spoilery. I don't know how much you're going to talk about with the zones and the questing through it, but um, you know the gnolls and the gnolls have come across this decay magic, and they're really kind of leveraging that as a weapon against our allies, and that's one of the things that we're really going to dig into in the zone. So that will be something that through the quest, through the level of experience, you'll be introduced to Brackenhide Hollow with the gnolls in there. Um, that's a really really epic dungeon. That is, um, you know, we have different. Lots of variety with the, the dungeons, plus and just have of, around 40k um, average you know, downloads. The layout well, and plus we girls we are them, not right? There's the more traditional like, that important dungeon and... that's like whole oh, room. Like I don't have a lot of them plus we girls. Uh, Brackenhide Hollow is one that's I think the we girls that are more meant is like explore it in the outdoor or personal some stuff, of it in the outdoor like personal we girls for your own like class. So it's very very open and like waiting we girls. In a Wrath of Majara, that was like, holy moly, this zone is really big, and like there's lots of raider, options in terms raiding, of how you want to uh, kind of traverse like through the space. Or so um, that will See, be plus the level of dungeon that, uh, uh, And then the second dungeon useful, that you really. kind of stumbled upon is the Azure Vaults. I mean, yeah, um, I'm not which, saying like that they don't exist. The zone, there's definitely the weakness for skills in the blast, dragons, but I'm, a, I'm saying that it's not as popular so as like raiding weakness. on there, and the Azure Vaults are a part of this zone. So you know, sometimes, sometime around max level, you'll yeah, get exactly. A you can use little wicks or something. Anab- uh, you know, check out what's going on in there. Uh, so that's, <laughs> All right. That will be the a exclamation mark key sweeper has seventy six k. That you open up later. Awesome, awesome. Um, any kind of word on what sort of bosses we might find in that Azure one? Uh, the bosses in there. Well, it will have. Uh, a dragon, I believe. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. What? I know, right? There's dragons in, in Dragonflight. Uh, I don't remember exactly all the bosses off the top of my head, but um, that one is a more kind of traditional um, dungeon feeling one that is really, really epic. It's super vertical. Um, you're kind of traversing down as you go and fight uh, all of these um, really epic enemies. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, honestly, I'm so excited to get back to like fighting dragons. You know, when I first many moons ago started working on world of warcraft when people asked me what i did i would always say like i make dragons it's super fun and i was like oh, it's been years since like i got to you know fight dragons <laughs> so i'm just so excited to get to get back to that it's true just uh, just questing around there it was noticeable and amazing yes yeah, say, they yeah the my ghost i was thinking the same thing because there's a couple of kind of set pieces or what have you where you kind of face off with various people and every time i was just like that's, that's so cool that's a drag hey that's a dragon that's awesome um in uh, relation to story and it's funny you should mention spoilers with the uh with the novels actually um i have i wasn't going to and i it's something i managed to avoid quite a lot in the in the shadowlands alpha um but uh i couldn't not do every single quest in that zone that's currently available because i enjoy dragon riding so much man i didn't and, and that i kind of didn't like get to see that zone that tell me you're talking about spoiled now for the, for the oh, entire me? story of the zone um and i know that is a, it's becoming more of a common criticism of alpha and ptr and and data mining in general yeah is there any kind of feeling in the team that you might want to kind of i mean it would be pretty extreme but you know I, I know there'd be a lot of support for literally hiding quest text in in uh, the alpha and, and hey, having, you, having the missions completed and things like that or completable, but just wiping the text so there's not sort of story hey, Tracy, That's I the do, extreme I'm end, but is there any kind good, of like actually, yeah. Today I felt like, for that wait, let team? me pause for a second. Um, I had a hard time actually seeing stuff on my screen because of the lights, because whenever I looked at the light, there was like a halo around it. And my screen is literally only a light. So I had hard time, like I had hard hard time uh, reading stuff in chat, for example. And when I was playing WoW, I had a hard time like seeing things. But um, it has gotten a lot better today. I felt like compared to like the previous days, which is good, I guess. <laughs> I 
And other than that, I still have really dry eyes. So I have to use like eye drops the whole time. And whenever I don't use eye drops, my vision gets worse because apparently if you have dry eyes, you see worse, which I didn't know for a long time, but apparently it's true. And I already had dry eyes before uh, the surgery. So yeah, it's, it has gotten worse, which sucks a little, but apparently it's supposed to go back to normal again in like some time, probably a long time, but yeah. But anyway, like I use the eye drops and it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, how this did is you feel the doing the surgery? It was really cool. Okay, I don't think I'm like a. <laughs> I don't think um, I'm a person that you should be asking for their experience because I think that I had a very unusual, um, like response to what happened, because <laughs> I just thought it was really cool. It was definitely a bit, like, unnerving. But then at the same time, I felt it was really cool. Like, I was honestly excited while it was happening. Because I thought it was just so cool that I see everything and my eyes are numb. And they're, like, doing things on my eye. And I see it. And it doesn't hurt. And it was really cool. But I don't think everyone thinks that it's really cool. Like, I think most people are probably not having the same feelings I did, so. <laughs> but it was, it was definitely, like, I personally thought it was really cool. It was very, very interesting. It's really hard to explain as well. Um, and it, it's really fast. Like, even if you are a person that would, like, freak out or something, um, it only takes, like, 10 minutes in total or something. F five minutes, maybe, even. Like, it's really, really fast. Uh, the actual procedure is, like, super short. And then you just have to wait a while for the eye drops to, to work. And that's it. Like, the actual laser only takes, like, 7 seconds or 15 seconds or whatnot. It's really, really quick. So, and immediately afterwards, you already see perfectly. Like, as soon as you're done. It's just like, you know, you sit up and it's, like, perfect. So, it's like, your eyes are obviously irritated, but other than that. <laughs> they don't give... Well, they do give you something uh, to calm you down if you ask for it. Well... Because, like, when I walked in, she was asking me, are you nervous? And I was like, no. And I assume if I would have said yes, then I assume she would have given me, like, something to calm me down. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Yeah, Xanax or something, I don't know. Hey Toad, what's up? Thank you so much for 65 months and tier 3, what's up? How are you? <laughs> they tested the laser in front of me, which freaked me out. Oh, really? Huh, okay, that is interesting. The thing that freaked me out a bit was not nothing that had, act that had anything to do with the procedure, but the fact that they were just like doing this so quickly, like they were just like a Someone comes out of the operation room and then I walk in and then I go out and someone else walks in. It's just like, it's like they did it so quickly. Like there were so many people doing the procedure and it's like super, super fast, you know? And I was like, like I was slightly worried that they're not going to pay enough attention to me because they have to do so much, you know? But uh, yeah, it's like, it's actually really fast. And like, I think a lot of people are worried that there's going to be something going wrong during the procedure. But I think the procedure itself is so, like, streamlined that there's, like, literally nothing that can go wrong, really. Like, it's almost impossible for something to go wrong during the actual procedure. And I think that's what most people are worried about. I think there's a lot higher risk for things to go wrong during the healing process afterwards. Because you can get an infection if you don't use the eye drops properly or if something happens or if you rub your eyes... And that is actually, like, it, it's, you're much more likely to have something go wrong with things that you do wrong, like, afterwards, after care stuff. Or it's also possible that you have, like, some sort of allergic reaction to maybe eye drops, possibly, right? But, yeah, the actual procedure itself is, like, incredibly unlikely for anything to go wrong. So you don't have to really worry about it at all. It's mainly just if you... If you don't listen properly to what the doctor says, if you don't use your eye drops properly, if you rub your eyes all the time, or if you, whatever, you know, stuff like that is like much higher risk. Yeah, exactly. It's very, very automated and it's like very 
like you're not really reliant as much on the actual doctor, which I always think is a good thing <laughs> because the laser is like a computer that just needs the information entered and done, you know, like the, the it's incredibly unlikely that there's something wrong with the laser, right? It's possible that the doctor does something wrong, <laughs> but the doctor doesn't really have to do much anymore because it's also automated. The doctor literally just has to do like one movement and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Like the la also, like people are worried that um, the laser is gonna damage your eye if you move your eyes or whatever. But it's it's incredibly automated. So if you look away, the laser is immediately gonna stop. You know, like if it's like obviously like a very 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 precise laser. So if there's just like a like nano like millimeter nanometer, not nanomillimeter of movement. <laughs> Then the laser immediately like stops whatever it's doing and then just continues when you look exactly like in it again. So even if you look around, nothing's gonna happen, right? Nano yards. <laughs> hey Jackhead, what's up? Alright, let's continue watching this video. Sorry. I keep passing text, them. So sorry. there's not sorry story spoilers. That's the extreme end, but is there any kind of like appetite for that in the team. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those really interesting aspects of working on a live game, right? Like, how many other games do you play just on your weekend or whenever where you go into it and like, oh, people yeah. have been playing this for months and you know, there's Wikipedia pages where it's all out there and there's plenty of guides and it's all kind of solved by the time the game actually launches. So that's absolutely something that um, we've talked a lot about in terms of the mystery and how we want to approach um, not just development on World of Warcraft, but this alpha in particular. Um, so you might have noticed um, there was a recent update with uh, 925 where there was a few surprises in it, right? Um, there was an entire quest line that people had no idea was going to be there with Lordaeron and Kalia and, you know, the introduction of some even character customization, character customizations like with the Dark Ranger. Um, so that's absolutely okay. um, something that we've been building towards and, you know, that you got to see and experience in 925. And we're really looking to um, expand upon that as we move into the future. That's that's definitely a part of development that we feel like oh, there's a lot of about live there. servers. Okay. Um, you know, even just with Sepulchre, the first ones, uh, and, and limiting kind of the rate of the rate testing and the rate availability there. Um, we're talking about, okay, well, like, what did we learn from Sepulchre? Do we want to apply some of that and limit the rate testing um, in our raid even for Dragonflight? So certainly, um, you know, leaning into some more um, secrets in World of Warcraft. I love so that, that. that. joy of kind of discovery is uh, reintroduced in some ways. The, the interesting thing about um, keeping things a secret is the fact that... Like, it, it's such a weird... Um, I think it, it, I, I think keeping things a secret for story and lore makes a lot of sense, I think. Like, I think that is that makes a lot of sense. But keeping things a secret in the raid, like keeping raid bosses a secret and stuff, I think that is, like, less important for, like, the average person. Because, honestly, the experience doesn't really change for an average player. Like, even if you're a raider, to, even to me, like, and I'm a mythic raider, right? But to me, personally... I had the exact same experience in Sepulchre the first ones compared to what I had in Sanctum of Domination in terms of like experiencing the bosses, right? Because it doesn't matter necessarily if you tested the boss on PTR or not, you always kind of like want to watch a guide or something before you get to the boss, or that's what I do at least. And when I reach the bosses that were not tested on PTR, there was already a guide out there anyway, right? So when I reached the boss on Heroic, I already have a guide on YouTube because I play on EU and NA gets everything a day earlier and then they already experience the bosses anyway before I get there and then everyone is going to write their guides and then they upload them and there we go. You have the same experience as you would have if they would have gotten tested on the PTR. 
So I think not testing raid bosses has a very limited amount of like value, I think, um, because most players don't have a different experience from not testing it. It does hype up the raid a bit more, I think. Like I do think it has some um, beneficial um, like, like conclusions as well, in a sense that when a new raid comes out and the bosses have not been tested on PTR, then there might be more like mystery surrounding it and more people might be hyped to actually see the raid and get into the raid and more hyped about the patch in general. Um, so that is like one thing that I can see is a positive thing about it. But generally as a, like a player, as a raider, you experience the same thing. Like it has no difference whatsoever if the bosses got tested or not, I think, personally. It's especially if it's last bosses, right? It would have been a little bit of a different story if the first couple of bosses wouldn't have been tested at all. Like, if they wouldn't have tested any boss, then it's different because um, you go into the raid and you immediately experience a boss that you've never seen before, right? But if it's a later boss, then you don't even reach that boss anyway until a couple of days into the patch. Well, other guilds have already reached it anyway and made the guide, right? Because Rygalon, Lords of Dread, and Jailer, they were the ones not tested. And those bosses um, are not something you instantly reach as a normal raider, right? Like, it takes some time to get there. You start raiding in the evening. People have already reached the boss because they're day raiding, right? So it's like... It's like, yeah, I don't know. And I also think if you're going to make it a secret, like, if you're going to keep the boss a secret and not test them, then the dungeon journal should also not be there. Because, like, if you keep it a secret, you might as well keep everything a secret and not not test them and then still have a dungeon journal, right? Like, either everything or nothing, I feel like. <laughs> My God. Well, the thing with the story, obviously, is like a bonus as well. With the story connected to the raid not being told on the PTR. But I... Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I guess it makes sense that if they, if they want to keep the lore a bigger secret, then they automatically also need to make the bosses a bigger secret as well. Because it's kind of connected, right? Because if they keep all of the quest text hidden and they don't show any cinematics, for example, then and then they test the raid bosses, then it's like, what the fuck? Why is, why is this guy here, you know? Like, it definitely would be a big spoiler. I think, I think it's kind of connected, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. For lore reasons. Yeah. But anyway, let's see what else Morgan Day is saying. This is, this is something we're looking to improve. Unlikely to be something that we see represented in, in this alpha beta cycle, though, I suppose. Well, I, I mean, I think there's a there's a distinction there between level up and max level, right? Sure. Like okay. with max level content, I think there's for sure stuff that we could even with Dragonflight development have um, some surprises for people when, once they hit max level and get through that level up experience. But to your point, you know, the leveling experience is so core and foundational to World of Warcraft. We really want to make sure that danke, people danke, danke. have a great experience as slip. they um, progress. And also there's just, you know, um, fun things that you find when you put hundreds of people in a zone that we might not be able to find as easily when you're just doing it by yourself or with with our team of, of testers um and quite apart from the, the main story quests as well there are so many the zones are so big there's so many side quests kind of dotted around and it it really felt like playing world of warcraft again um sort of in a way that it hasn't maybe for a while sort of very kind of small scale personal stories and just cool stuff with i mean there was loads of tusker and that helped um so but at, at any game <laughs> so i've heard reports and you know there are, there are people that say flat out that based on job listings and kind of other reports and what have you that team two has a specific 
team working on like outdoor world content this is something we keep on hearing Ooh. which we haven't and that content isn't something we've really heard much about for Dragonflight. Is that true, firstly? And if it is, what kind of world content can we expect? Okay, here's the thing I do also want to quickly say. I think if WoW has done anything correctly the past couple of years, it has been like high-end content. Like I think they, they almost always do a really good job creating the raids. Of course, there's like hit and miss or whatever. Like some raids are not so good, some are better or whatever. But most of the raids, they do a really good job creating. And I think similar, like, I think they also do a really good job with M plus most of the time. Like the fact that M plus even got created is cool. The fact that they implemented Mythic Score, the fact that they implemented Rank 1 titles. Like they, they do usually, like for high-end content, I think they usually do a good job. Um... But at the same time, I think that sometimes people complain a lot about high-end content existing even. because Not because I think people are necessarily super hateful towards high-end content, but the fact that they're like misplacing their frustrations um, because the content that they have for themselves is not so good. Like I think it has a lot to do with that. Like someone who is not a high-end raider or a high-end and plus player... Um, they maybe don't have as much enjoyable content for themselves. And then instead of thinking, oh, I want more enjoyable content, they focus their hatred onto the people that have the content that they like. You know, it's like people hate and plus players or hate high end raiders because for whatever reason, they think that Blizzard is only focusing on them because they have good content. But I think the truth is that uh, a lot of the times Blizzard tries to create content for the so-called casual player, but they just don't manage to hit the nail on it, right? I think Mythic Plus was like such an amazing idea by Blizzard, and it was, like if you think about it, and Plus is not something that existed forever, and Plus is something that is this, like, just a random idea that they had. That's usually how WoW works, or any MMO works. Like, whenever they create a new expansion or a new patch or whatever, they always try to come up with these systems, and a lot of them just don't work out. A lot of them are, people don't like. But then once in a while, they create a system that people really like. And, and Plus was one of those things, right? And it's not that they never create systems or things that are interesting for a casual player. It's just that... I feel like they lately, like the past couple of years, they just didn't manage to, to create something that really was liked by a casual player. And that's why people are angry. Understandably, like it, it makes a lot of sense that people are upset about it. But it's just, uh, yeah, like they just had a really hard time finding something that people like to do. Because it's not that it doesn't exist, right? We, ha we have stuff. Like, they tried island expeditions, for example, in BFA, which obviously people didn't enjoy that much. But it's not, like, it's hard to tell if people are going to like something or not. Like, in fact, it's impossible to tell. Like, sometimes they create a system and people just, like, love it. And sometimes they create a system and people hate it. And you don't know this beforehand. Like, it's almost impossible to actually know. Um, so, yeah, they, they create stuff all the time. And come up with new stuff. And some like a lot of the times people just don't like it. And I think um, they definitely, for Dragonflight, I think they definitely try to be even more creative with stuff for like a casual player. Um, and we'll see if it works out, right? I mean, dragon riding, for example, is something that people really seem to be happy about a lot. And that is for sure like casual content, quote unquote. Um, not sure what else they're going to implement, but like the whole profession thing is also like casual content, right? So yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I don't think that they generally never think of a casual player, right? I just think that they just didn't manage to come up with a good system for them that people liked and it just happens, you know? Yeah, Michael said as well. T 
To be fair, to those players, sometimes Blizzard does only focus on making raid content for the highest players. Well, that's just inherently a wrong thing to say already. Like, people, are, a lot of the times people say that raids are only being created for high-end raiders, which is by default just a wrong statement to make because if, like, what is LFR? Do you think LFR is made for high-end players? Do you think normal mode is made for high-end players? Do you think heroic is made for... No, right? Like, the only, the only raid difficulty that is made for high-end players is Mythic. So, if you don't like hero the heroic version of the raid, or if you don't like the normal mode version of the raid, then that is, of course, an issue, but then you have to say that, right? Like, I don't think we should ever live in a situation where people are fighting each other when it comes to content, because the high-end raiders are not the ones creating the content, right? A high-end raider is a player just like you are. And yeah, you like different things, right? But if you don't like the things that are for you enough, then you have to ask Blizzard to, to improve on that, right? I just think sometimes people are like super focused on high-end raiders. It's like, oh, they get everything they want and the rest of us have, like their game is ruined because Blizzard only focuses on them or whatever. And instead of hating on the high-end raiders, you can just say, hey, I'm a normal mode raider, and I don't think normal mode has been good lately, right? And that might be like a very valid point to make, right? Uh, you can be like, okay, normal mode has been kind of bad lately, and like the tuning has been bad, or the mechanics have been bad, or whatever it is that uh, the problem is. Like, I think that's something you specifically have to talk about the issue, and not just say, oh, you should focus less on mythic rating, and focus more normal mode rating. Because you can have both at the same time, you know? You can have a good mythic raid and a good normal mode raid. You don't have to, like, take away something to make yours better. You know what I mean? Thank you so much for 11 months, Elisa. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> can't wait to have a boss that implements dragon riding and wipe 100 times because people can't do basic physics. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. That's dude, they fun. probably are gonna do that, aren't they? Dude, they are gonna do a dragon riding boss. That's that has to be a bad boss, though. There's no way that's a good boss. Or I mean, maybe I don't know. Thanks for prime sub, uh, Cyphered. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying, Tidy. Like. I think I honestly agree with um, people that have been complaining about raiding a lot lately because it is true that the raiding experience for a more casual player is definitely not as interesting as the raiding experience is in different games. Because as a player who has been raiding a lot, I don't care how normal mode is, I care how mythic is, right? But I do think that um, if you do like a raid in Final Fantasy XIV or in Lost Ark or something, you go into the raid and you have like a pretty good experience without knowing too much, right? You can go into a Final Fantasy XIV raid and you can kind of experience a boss blind. And yeah, you might wipe here or there, but um, it's like a cool experience, I think. And I think in WoW, um, that doesn't really happen. I think in World of Warcraft, if you go into a raid as a casual player into a normal mode raid, there's so many things that happen that are almost impossible for you to um, understand without like watching a guide first or watching a guide afterwards or looking through the dungeon journal properly and reading everything perfectly and like figuring out a, a strategy. Like it's not as enjoyable to experience a wow raid in like a casual way compared to how it is in other like games, I think. Because sometimes, like in Final Fantasy XIV, I, I did raid, right? And I, when I walked into a raid and I tried to understand the bosses like blind, I think it was um, more intuitive. Like things are much more clear, right? You, you look at the floor and there's like a cone and you stood in it and you died. It's like, oh, I stood in a cone, you know, like it makes sense. But then on bosses in WoW, there's some of them are so complicated that it's incredibly hard to understand by just like experiencing it. Like even just the first boss, in Sepulchre, like Guardian or whatever, 
like that boss is really hard to understand because there's just so much shit going on at the same time right you have like a million ads that are spawning from all over the place and then there's a core that you have to put into the boss and then uh, you have to like an arrow on your head and you have to move like you know what i mean like there's just so many mechanics that are like kind of hard to 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 understand without like watching a guide first or without reading the journal properly and then it's also not very satisfying to to play the fight properly then i think like even if you eventually understand the first boss in sepulcher i don't think it feels very good like it's not that you execute a bunch of mechanics properly it just has to do with understanding and once you understand it you understand it you're not like oh this is an amazing fight i figured it out you know it's just like eh, you know and I think that is a little bit of the issue with normal than and stuff. Yeah, that is well too fast in there, yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely understand why people complain. Cause uh I only started thinking about this lately when Asmongold did Sepulchre the first ones and he said he didn't like it, right? Well, a lot of other people really liked Sepulchre. And then I was thinking, like, I was thinking about this, and I was like, how, like, why doesn't he like it, though? Like, does he just generally not like WoW anymore? Like, what the hell is going on? And then I was, like, really thinking about, like, this, like, casual experience and rating compared to other games. And I think it is, like, very, very true. That's... Because when I started playing Lost Ark, for example, I immediately had fun when I tried out, like, a Guardian raid, or I tried out, like these uh, abyss dungeons or whatever they're called like i did those for the first time and actually immediately enjoyed them because they were hard enough for me uh, to not feel like i'm walking through it you know like it didn't feel like lfr we just walk in and no mechanic matters <laughs> but at the same time it wasn't too hard for me to do it so and that is like a really enjoyable experience when you go in and you just kind of have a feeling of um like accomplishment when you get it done because it's not easy too easy so it's hard enough for you to like think oh i did this you know like i'm i'm, I'm happy like i'm proud of my own like play here right um but it's not too hard for you to wipe like a million times on a boss right without watching a guide and that's why i really enjoyed lost arc rating at least at the start and then 9.2 came out i didn't have time anymore but <laughs> But generally speaking, I thought it was a really cool experience. And the same thing I had in Final Fantasy XIV as well. And then whenever I think about WoW, I think WoW doesn't have that at all. Like, I think with WoW, it's, it's really, like, very different. Where it's a lot more group-focused rather than individual player-focused. And that is honestly a problem with gaming in 2022. Because people, people don't like grouping up with 19 others or whatever and then actually communicate with them properly. That's just not how gaming works nowadays anymore. Not to say that MMOs aren't social games, because, I mean, they are, right? And people like to spend time with others. But if you're kind of forced to enjoy raiding with others, like, if you're just not going to have a good time by yourself, then I think that is a little bit of an issue. Right? Because I think in Lost Ark Final Fantasy XIV, you can totally have a good time by yourself. Like, you can, you can play the boss fight really well and feel good about yourself. And you can understand the fight yourself, and it's fine. While in WoW, I think by yourself, you're not really gonna... Like, yeah, you can improve your own gameplay, but, like, to only, only to an extent. A lot of the mechanics in, on, like, raid bosses are group mechanics. Like, you have to execute it as a whole rather than as a singular player. And that's a problem. That's why I think a lot of people liked Painsmith, um, because Painsmith, uh, Painsmith was a boss where you as an individual player had to execute the boss properly. And I think that is something that people like more than to execute a mechanic as a group properly. It's just not as satisfying. Because yeah, you work together as a group, and it's great, but people would rather just more focus on their own stuff and execute like movement properly and like execute a mechanic properly themselves 
instead of having to rely on everyone and like having to figure it out as a whole, you know, I think. Thank you so much for 26 months, Kara. Appreciate that. Thanks for seven months as well, man eating potato. Thank you, thank you. I like group content, but I wish they'd bring back 10 to 15 man content when it's too many. Yeah, I mean, I like group content too, but like there's group content where you have to execute mechanics as a group and there's group content where you have to execute mechanics as an individual. And I much prefer the individual execution and I think a lot of people do. <laughs> Johnny, sorry, I wasn't drafted. I'm, ta I'm talking about rating now, okay? <laughs> One player fucking up uh, resulting in a wife for everyone is bad. Yes and no. Like, I, I think it's... Like, we're talking about pass-fail mechanics now, right? I think pass-fail mechanics are good. But only if it punishes yourself. If you fail it. And then later on in the fight, it could cost you to wipe. Because, uh, for example, I'm going to talk about Final Fantasy XIV again. In Final Fantasy XIV, there's a lot of pass-fail mechanics for the individual. Like, if you stand in the wrong spot here, you die. If you stand in the wrong spot here, you die. Blah, 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 right? If you don't execute this properly, you die. But you, usually, it's that one person that dies, and not necessarily everyone. It happens, too, that everyone dies, but it's much rarer than, like, individual pass-fail mechanics. And I think individual pass-fail mechanics are, are fine, and in fact, they're good, I think, because um, if someone dies, they can get rest back up, right? And if you don't have a... Even if you don't have a rest anymore, then you can still continue and see more of the fight. And then maybe eventually you die to Enrage. Because some people were dead and you just didn't have the damage. But I think that's that still feels good. Because you managed to see more of the fight. And you as a person, like you knew that you yourself played well. So if you execute a fight perfectly, you survive and you keep going and you can still learn. And even if other people make mistakes, it just it's fine. You just keep going. And yeah, eventually, to kill the boss, everyone needs to play perfectly eventually. But at least the, the try isn't over as soon as one person makes a mistake, right? And that's the difference between pass-fail mechanics that wipe the whole raid and pass fail mechanics that wipe, that kill you as an individual individual person, right? Because if someone makes a mistake and you die, then it has this feeling of, oh my god, like I can't even see more of the fight, I can't practice more, I, I can't get better, I cannot improve my own playstyle if other people constantly kill me, right? Like it's, it's very frustrating. And I think we definitely had way too many of those raid wipe, Past fail mechanics in Spelker specifically, but also before that. And I think, I hope that Blizzard is not too worried about adding more past fail mechanics in the future that affect the individual person, right? Because I think those are fun, right? Because, um, for example, um, Painsmith. I, I'm gonna go back to Paint, Painsmith. Because that boss was mechanically, like, hard in a sense. But you rarely ever... Like, if you made a mistake as a player, you rarely ever, like, killed everyone. Most of the time you just died yourself if you made a mistake, right? Sometimes you managed to kill other people as well. But most of the time it was just like, oh, you messed up. You get hit by the spikes. You get hit by the balls. You die, right? And that's it. And then the other people could still continue to play and whatever. So yeah. Generally raiding in WoW could definitely be a lot better for... For like pug groups and like more casual players. And that includes adding more mechanics that don't require the whole raid to do something specific. Like, I think having more individual responsibility is automatically more enjoyable for, um, more, for more casual players. And I also think, additionally, 
that um, for high-end raiders, it's also more enjoyable. Like, I don't believe that a race will, like Echo or Liquid, I don't think that they would be upset if there aren't any more raid-wide pass-fail mechanics anymore. Like, they don't like them. Especially because they are really good at them anyway, so they probably just don't care. Like, they're just like, I don't care if it's like a raid-wide pass-fail or if it's an individual pass-fail. Like, it's the same thing to them, probably, or like similar thing. So I don't think they're going to be upset if they remove them and create more individual person re responsibility. So I don't think anyone benefits from these raid-wide pass-fail things. But I think everyone benefits from having more individual pass-fail mechanics. And of course you have to scale it down because if you do normal modes, I don't think pass-fail mechanics should necessarily like instantly one-shot you. Again, same thing, Final Fantasy XIV has normal mode and savage. And on savage, you're probably going to die if you stand in a cone. But on normal mode, you probably don't die if you stand in a cone. But you get a debuff that if you get, like you do less damage and you also take more damage. So if you keep getting hit by abilities, you eventually die, right? And I really like that system because it's not instantly punishing, right? So if you get hit by a cone on normal mode, you don't instantly die. But if you get hit more and more often, eventually you do die. So that's why I really like the system in Final Fantasy XIV with the vulnerabilities. I think that makes a lot of sense for lower difficulties. Because for higher difficulties, the vulnerabilities don't really matter as much. Because if you get hit by something or you make a mistake, you probably die anyway, right? So it doesn't matter if you do less damage necessarily or if you, uh, if you take more damage. It's kind of whatever. Except for tanks, maybe. But for normal mode, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because the problem in World of Warcraft as well, in, in lower difficulties, like normal mode, is the fact that um, almost no mechanic actually kills you um, unless you get hit by multiple mechanics like in quick succession. So you don't have time for the healers to like top you. Because sometimes on normal mode, you can literally get hit by, by disability, and then five seconds later, you get hit by the other thing, and then by the other thing. And healers are just always able to top you in between, and then you just never die, right? Which I do think is a bit eh, right? Because eventually, I think you should get punished properly, even if it's normal mode. Because, I mean, normal mode is still a difficulty, and I think if you get hit by every single mechanic, you should probably die, right? <laughs> so, yeah... Anyway, continuing. Um, yeah, certainly. Uh, well, there's always a team working on max level content. Um, but in terms of, you know, our approach with Dragonflight, um, you know, Phyllis... Exactly, uh, James. Exactly. Pass-fail mechanics are good for packs slash casuals because it's easy to diagnose what needs to be fixed. Yes, 100%. I, I think that is also a big reason why I like pass-fail mechanics in, in other games. Because... Um, Sometimes when you're raiding in WoW, sometimes you, as a raid group, are not able to kill a boss, and you don't know necessarily why. Like, it's always, like, a different person makes a mistake there, you're missing some damage here, and, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's always these kind of small issues that um, are really hard to diagnose. Yeah, I agree. But if someone got hit by a mechanic it's really easy to understand what went wrong. It's like, oh, you need to dodge this next time, right? Like, simple. <laughs> well, if you were just not having enough damage, like, let's say you're doing Rigel on Heroic and you want to Enrage, right? And then it's like, okay, what happened? Like, which person didn't do enough damage? Like, what was the issue? Like, someone not using pots or like, you know, like you have to go to Warcraft logs and like analyze what the hell went on. And it's like, I know, it's just much harder to to really see the issue, right? Compared to you stood in a cone and you died. <laughs> really trying to lean into a lot of, <laughs> kind of the lessons number, yeah. learned through Shadowlands, as well as what we've seen in Xerath Mortis, where, you know, there's um, less of a, you know, feeling of I need to log in every day to do these things or I'm going to be behind. We really just want to try to move towards oh, thank the God. ability to have just a wide range of options. And when you log in, you get to do you know, whatever activity that. you might enjoy. Um, and with Dragonflight in particular, I'm sure you have met the, the fun band of Tuskar 
in uh, Azure Stan. So in every zone, there's going to be a faction or a group like the Tuscar that you meet in Azure Stan, um, where they're kind of one of our like uh, like major factions, I guess you could call it. And uh, there will be uh, kind of unique rewards that we're actually going to be displaying in a different way. We're actually planning to lean into, um, you know, with uh, the covenants, there was that renowned track where you could really see the rewards that you're going to get as you progress. So, you know, leaning into the visibility of the, those rewards, but using our kind of end game content um, philosophies with allowing mm -hmm. you to say like, okay, do I want to go work on the Tuscar and maybe get some cool fishing rewards? Do I want to go to the Naran Plains? and do some questing with the centaurs over there to get some other different rewards there. Um, and also trying to lean into the different fantasy of those groups and what activities you might be doing. So uh, the only issue I see with this, um, cause it sounds very interesting, but obviously there's no player power like attached to any of this. And I have a feeling it will, like I wonder if there's enough incentive for people to actually do this properly. And I mean, even if there is not, does it matter? Because I think sometimes, sometimes there's just content that, um, especially like content creators don't really want to do at all, like if there's no player power involved, and then it doesn't get enough attention, and then people think it's bad content when it's really not. Um, just because they don't see anyone else do it, right? It's like, oh, no, no one's doing this, so why should I do it? When in fact they might actually enjoy it, right? Um, so I don't know. Because I personally will definitely not do this unless there's something very interesting, right? Like, I don't know what there could be to be interesting enough for me to do it. <laughs> but I don't know, like... Uh, invent something i guess because <laughs> i'm not gonna do a bunch of side quests and uh, like progress like a renowned system with affection to get like a mount or a transmog or like a pet you know because i personally am not someone who farms pets or transmogs or mounts but i would do side quest stuff if it would be like some more interesting thing definitely shouldn't be borrowed power or any sort of player power in general right but like anything that is like more interesting than that, because I, and I know I know transmog and pets and mounts are interesting enough for a lot of people. Like a lot of people love farming them, um, but I just feel like it, it has gotten so old nowadays. Like, and I'm not sure how many people feel this way, but to me, like a mount and a pet and a transmog is just like oh, you just get it everywhere. It's like. You do this random thing, you get a transmog. You do this thing, you get a mount. You do this thing, you get a pet. Like, they just like, throw it after you. It's like, you log into the game and there's, like, mounts thrown at you and pets, you know? It feels like you can't even escape them even if you wanted to. <laughs> it just doesn't feel very special in any sense, right? And I know it's hard to come up with stuff that is only cosmetic because the game is so old, so it's, like, hard to have something new, right? But, I mean, I wonder if there could be something they could do that would interest players like even stuff like mini games like because i honestly really enjoy certain um like mini games i always really enjoy the puzzles like i like sirith mordis puzzles i like nashatar puzzles i'm a big fan uh and i also always liked certain world quests like certain world quests and stuff were just kind of fun i hated world quests in general because you had to do them like, I always hated world quests because you're forced to do them. But uh, there were certain world quests where I'm just like, oh, this is fun, you know? Like, when, especially in Legion, we had a lot of fun stuff um, that were almost like parkour things that felt like Super Mario. Do you guys remember that? Where you had to, like, walk through th something and then you had to, like, uh, there was, like, a beam and you had to get through that. And it's like, it, it felt kind of cool. Uh, and that kind of stuff I honestly would enjoy doing once in a while. I think. And I also would enjoy these kind of like speed runs with the dragon flying, I think. Dragon riding. I think that would be cool as well. Thanks for the 13 month slicer. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
yeah, like gold saucer, exactly, like stuff like that. I, I would do that. I would 100% do gold saucer, right, in, in WoW. I think just like any sort of like more fun um, outside content, I would probably do things for that, you know? Like I would farm Renown for some faction if it unlocks mini games or a gold saucer or something similar. You know, like I would probably do that. Just like fun and not mandatory stuff. Which I understand it's not that easy to come up with. Like, I get that. <laughs> but, so uh, yeah. I just wish there would... There would be things that I personally... Like, as a player that is not into transmogs and mounts and pets or whatever, I just feel like there's never, like, that much incentive for me to do things. Uh, especially because I also don't like questing. But, I mean, like, I guess I'm difficult to please. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some things I liked in the past like I honestly really enjoyed a, a lot of the solo stuff um, the only reason why I ended up, ended up not liking it anymore is because I was always forced to do it like I think a lot of the stuff that I liked I ended up hating eventually because they forced me to do it like all the time like even Torghast I actually really liked Torghast during Alpha it was a lot of fun I actually loved it and then I instantly started hating it when I had to do it every week. Right? <laughs> Same with um, visions, like B visions uh, corrupt with corruption in BFA. I thought they were a lot of fun at the start. Like I actually really, really enjoyed doing visions. I was like really looking forward to doing them uh, for a couple of weeks, and then eventually I got really bored because I had to do them. And it was annoying because you're forced to do it. <laughs> and I think there's a bunch of these kind of things that they could implement that people maybe like do for fun if they wouldn't constantly like force you to do it. And clearly Morgan Day says that they're um, trying to do it more, which is cool. So yeah, we'll see, I guess. I would be super excited if there was outside rating content that I would actually really enjoy doing. Like just like casual like fun stuff at max level um like you know what Ooh. a tuscar activity even wait, wait wait do you remember in legion when he had the the zombies that he had to like get through the thing oh my god what was it called the wither training i actually really liked wither training like the first couple of times eventually it got really boring and i hated it but at the start i was like yeah that's kind of cool you know like stuff like that I feel like there's so much that always just uh, gets unenjoyable because you have to do it all the time, you know? It's like, ugh. I never liked island expeditions, though. <laughs> Even if I wouldn't have been forced to do them, I wouldn't have liked He is going to be, for the day, might feel very different than, you know, the centaurs in the Honorium Plains. And also never liked Warfront. Start a big hunt. Hey, that's like a big public quest that might happen in that zone, or a public event, rather, that might happen in that zone. So, oh, I definitely don't um, agree with yes, you, you know. Much the goal Who does is to agree you with know, you create know? variety and create options for people to do um you know <laughs> max level content and you know that max level outdoor content is something that evolves every expansion you know i think with the um introduction of world quests and legion is really you know one of the biggest you know leaps yeah, that we've made there. Yep. And with every expansion we try to evolve it more and more and with dragonflight that's no exception with this idea of these major factions and having activities that you'll do with each of them i feel like i just need to confirm at that point you're saying that the Tuscar are the major faction that you level with and get rewards with in the Azur span. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that going to make everyone happy? Everyone loves Tuscar. Expansion ever, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we've had a little look at um, uh, professions. Um, it, kind of overwhelming at this stage on on the alpha, honestly. Sort of the the blacksmithing alchemy is what we've looked at, and it's, it looks incredibly deep and incredibly rich and incredibly. Complex. Okay, I'm not going to pause until this video is over. Look at it. Um, it feels like alchemy and blacksmithing are quite obvious ones that, to add kind of layers of depth to. Um, I, I know a lot of people are interested in how you plan to add the same level of kind of depth and complexity to some of the more neglected professions, maybe like jewel crafting and inscription. Um, yeah, I mean, that's something that we're going to continue to kind of roll out these professions almost in, in waves, right? Like we mentioned, the, this alpha is going to be 
um, a lot different than our previous alphas. I know there's a lot of comparisons right now to like, oh, well, this alpha came out here and Dragonflight came out here and this is what they have. <laughs> but the pace of how we're rolling things out is going to be very different, as well as kind of the philosophy there where um, we'll introduce, you know, new content for a um, short period of time and almost more like raid testing where we put a boss up for testing and then we take it down um, using that kind of same approach here where things are happening more quickly and then we're really making sure to stay focused on specific elements of the alpha um, so you'll definitely see more of these uh, professions that kind of spin up um, dual crafting in particular you know like we mentioned there's a lot of just high level changes that add a lot of depth like the specialization of your profession um, but with dual crafting there's a lot of fun hooks there obviously there's still a lot of depth with gem variety um, you know optional reagents but also um, something that we're playing twitching? with is like leaning into are you saying um, that I'm nervous because like I want to pause idea of like a meta gem like or a gem there's that a medical issue? has a unique kind of if it's, effect if it's the latter, then that's based not true. on Don't worry you know about it. Um, what else might be in your gear um, so there's a lot of hands. fun um, gearing options that we want to open up with professions and really treat professions <laughs> as almost like its own pillar of progression and gearing up the same way that people say like, oh, I gear through mythic class or I gear through raids. We want professions to feel like they can kind of stand on their own in that regard and have an equal amount of depth there. Is like a, a stronger focus on cosmetic stuff something that hmm. you could foresee for professions? Um, well, there is certainly professions specific looks of our gear now, which is something that's new and we're introducing introducing with Dragonflight where um, there are actually three <laughs> new equipment <laughs> slots for your professions. Um, I think there's like a tool and then two accessories. Um, and while you're crafting um, at these workstations, which I think we have a, a blog coming out soon, like I think this week that, that we'll dive a little bit more into these workstations and the gear that you will earn through and use while you're crafting. Um, but when you start, you know, if you're at the blacksmith's uh, anvil and you're making stuff, you actually swap your look. You actually look like mm -hmm. the blacksmith and the gear that you have on in those in those inventory slots. Um, so we definitely think there's like almost a whole new vector of customization uh, as well as identity. Um, you know, one look, of the I'm goals spacing out already. Okay, I can't listen to, to this without pausing for so long. Be able to be more a part of my core identity in World of Warcraft. I right? didn't like, hear the if you last play, like, two minutes of what you know, they Blood said. Blood Elf Paladin, that's your identity. <laughs> and when people ask you what you are, but we want there to be. As I mean, much they're also talking about professions, which say, like, doesn't oh, make it easier. <laughs> and that's what I identify as. And I just sit in Stormwind Ooh, and fashion. I just yeah, <laughs> do a lot of crafting and crafting orders. have them kind of craft more cosmetic things to kind of sell on the auction house. Sort of. Well, certainly. Transmog sets and, and, and things like that, sort of unique ones. Also, we talked about professions uh, and I, um, cosmetics. I can't name any That's specific the examples time. off the top of my head, but certainly that, that is, is like so uh, far from a, what I'm interested um, in. <laughs> door we would not want to close. Like, there's a lot of really cool stuff there, and professions well, can you make will have unique with professions? Um, looks for them as well, where they're getting gear that is kind of unique. To what they can make let's go awesome yeah and th those profession sets look brilliant so that's pretty much our time thank you so much uh, uh for being here and explaining all of that <laughs> oh, to us um, all right. the alpha is incredibly focused at the moment which i like I, I think it's good to have that kind of focused sort of feedback particularly when it comes to kind of talent trees and zones and okay uh, video's over the next thing he's talking about is just what build we're gonna get which we already got so we don't really know that but anyway <laughs> I really like the whole profession thing. I did want to say one thing really quick because I was never interested in WoW professions, actually ever. Because uh, I played since Classic and I was a lot more casual back then and I also didn't care about professions then. Like, I never actually cared about professions. But I started playing, like, some other games and I actually enjoy professions in different MMOs, which I thought was very weird because I thought... I just don't like professions because I, I played WoW for so long and I never liked it. It's like, okay, this is not for me, right? But then I played different games and I randomly just enjoyed professions in other games. So it's like, oh, so I guess it's not me, it's you. <laughs> so it is a WoW issue. <laughs> so now that they're um, making professions more interesting, maybe I'll actually like it. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I still think I won't. Because I think they're not completely changing everything about professions, you know? They're just changing how important professions are going to be, and they're changing some stuff with it, but they're not completely reworking the way you gather th mats and the way you craft things. And I think that's, like, the main issue why I didn't like it so much, and they're not actually changing that. So I still think that professions are not going to be for me, 
Um, but I still like the fact that they're improving on it because I think a lot of people do like professions in WoW. So if they put more effort and time into it and it's going to be more interesting, then good for them, right? I personally don't think I'm ever going to like it. I really hope I don't have to level professions, like forcefully, because then it's just going to be the same issue again where maybe I would actually enjoy professions, but I have to do it and therefore I hate it. So we'll see um, how it's going to be, because it's possible that, that professions are not, like, needed, needed. But, because, for example, right now, it's engineering is kind of required for me, personally, as a player. Because if I play in plus, I need engineer engineering, right? So it is, like, you know, I don't need, like, super high-level engineering, but I need a little bit of engineering. And I guess something similar could happen with professions in uh, Dragonflight, that there's, like, a tiny advantage you get from getting a profession and then I would feel the need to do it. Like even if it's just a small advantage, right? While most of the player base would not care about it. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, I do have to leave. <laughs> Sorry for pausing the video a million times. <laughs> uh, I'll stream tomorrow again, of course. Tomorrow, we're not raiding, so we're going to play more alpha. Hopefully, my internet works again tomorrow, because uh, I don't know what the hell happened. Uh, we might continue watching the max thing as well tomorrow about the raids, because uh, that looked pretty interesting. I just didn't manage to watch it. And um, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out, guys. I will see you tomorrow at around the same time, approximately. And I'll quickly host somebody. Make sure you check out my... Um, make sure you follow my stream if you haven't yet. That would be really nice. And make sure you also check out my socials. I will post some YouTube videos very soon. I've been like kind of AFK on my YouTube. And I'm very sorry. <laughs> but I will start posting um, guides for Season 4 dungeons soon. Like really short guides. To like give you a refresher on how the dungeons work because we're gonna play a lot of old dungeons. People forgot how they worked, and I'm just gonna give you like TLDR guides for those. And then I'm also gonna upload some videos probably about like like Dragonflight stuff, you know, just like my thoughts and talents or whatnot, stuff like that. So yeah, let us host somebody. What is this song? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I don't know who's host. Okay, let's just scroll down. Let's find somebody. Let's see. Do you notice anyone? Has to be an EU stream. Uh, not EU, but like English. Who's this person? Oh, I know this person. So I should be fine. I, just... I know them. They they're playing uh like a plus pug stuff. Okay, we're hosting. Well, that was fast. Yeah, I was watching the stream, um, like, randomly once when I was looking for, like, just random and plus players. So I was, like, lo looking through streams and stuff, and I saw um, this stream, and I was watching it for a decent amount of time. Like, randomly as I was doing other things. On my second screen. And it seems like a pretty cool stream. My name is Gentheon, and welcome to my channel. I'm new to the streaming community and looking forward to bringing you fun and engaging content. Sounds good. So you don't want to. 
for it. Oh shit! I didn't read the rules first. Don't be a dick to other viewers or myself, and it will be cool. Ah oh, shit, then I'm not sure if this is the right place for you guys. I'm not sure if you'll fit into this community. Ah, gonna be a problem. <laughs> anyway, anyway, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day, and goodbye.